pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Praise the Lord, beloved of the Most High God, in the mighty name of King Jesus. I am Sister Lisa, and I am the host of this broadcast this evening with Late Night with Lisa and Friends. And tonight I have again as my guests, we have Brother Cripps, we also have Sister Angel Martin, and we have Brother Ben. Uh, tonight is going to be kind of a potluck, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be as much a surprise for me as it is for you on some of the topics we're going to be discussing tonight. And I also have something at the tail end that's going to be fun. That's going to involve everybody and everybody's going to get to participate in the chat there. Uh, you'll be able to put your answers up and then we can uh, just look at them and review them and everybody else will be able to, to muse and share uh, uh, maybe even why they, they, they made the choices that they made when we get to the last segment. But for now, uh, I wanted to start the evening with prayer because I'm actually away from my home this evening. And this is an unusual situation because I'm actually doing this live stream right through my cell phone. I couldn't get any Internet connection and mm. my phone, which is normally rooted, which would allow me to tether, <laughs> which I could have did the stream from my computer would not let me do it. It got unrooted. And I do not know how because the phone didn't crash. So, you know, the devil is always busy. But I want to thank everyone because I cannot see you right now in the chat. I can't see anything um, because I'm doing this all through my cell phone. I will try to take a peek if I think I can do it without <laughs> destroying the the stream because uh, I know it's it's being run by our illustrious producer, Mr. Ben. But I'm scared I'm going to mess something up and disconnect myself from the stream. But um, anyway, I want to thank everyone. I see Chow, Young Cat, Celine. How you doing, girl? Joyce, you've joined us again. Joyce Humick, Jason, he's in the chat. Uh, don't mess with people too much in, in the chat, Brother Jason. Okay. And we got <laughs> Starling. <laughs> Starling Swallow. Uh, who else That's is Jen. out there? Is that, oh, is that Jen? Hi, yeah. Jen. There you go. Uh, I I need you to call me so I can give you some pointers on how to keep brother uh, Jason uh, straight. You know, this is things I've been picking up on watching him nice. <laughs> the live streams for the last few months. And, we, and, and I'll give you some. <laughs> she sent you an email. <laughs> I gave you some pointers. Yeah. Oh, did she? Okay, cool. Yeah. Do that. Sister. Send me an email. Okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll keep him straight. All of us will collaborate. There and then go. let's see. Renee just we have. In. Sister Renee, thank you for joining us. God bless you, sister. Uh, that's that's my go-to sister there. Uh, thank you, sister, for all your prayers and support. Judith, thank you so much for coming yeah. out this evening. You guys are night owls for sure, because most of these people are out there on the East Coast. Yeah. All right. Uh, I would like to get your feedback. This is the first thing I'm going to put the chat to work in tonight before I introduce my guests. And that is, uh, will you guys let me know? If you like the intro, if you like the intro, uh, then please give me a number one out there in the chat. And if you didn't particularly care for it, give me a number two. I'd just like to get your feedback and see how you guys uh, <laughs> liked or didn't like the intro. I wanted it to be a little edgy, a little cutting edge, because we're talking about stuff that some churches wouldn't touch with a 10-foot pole, and I love it. <laughs> so without any further ado, Brother Cripps, how are you doing tonight? 
I am fantastic. Even though the world's crumbling around us, I am just fine uh, because I am keeping my eyes on Christ and his word. And people Amen. like that we have on the panel that I, uh, I enjoy congregating and collaborating with. And it, it, it keeps me uh, humble and uh, God keeps me filled with humility. And it's a wonderful life. Praise the Lord. That's awesome. And of course, we were in jest with Brother Cripps. I'm sure that his fiance knows exactly how to keep him <laughs> on the straight and narrow, as they say. Right, Brother Cripps? Does. <laughs> <She> does. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. All right. Let me give a shout out to my sister, Angel. How are you doing, sister? Oh, not too bad. Uh, could be better. I'm under siege by uh, houseplant pests. Like, oh man, it's really, really bad. They're having. I'm. All, I have. I have probably. I don't know. A thousand dollars worth of houseplants at least. And um, I, 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 every single one of them has, has got spider mites or mealybugs. All of a sudden, <laughs> it's, it's really a lot of work uh, to Aww. try to keep up with houseplants when you feel. I never. I just started collecting them um, in the past year. Never mm -hmm. really had this problem, and now I'm realizing what I got myself into. Because if this happens, then you have to get all of them off, or just kind of tolerate the idea that you're going to lose like hundreds of dollars worth of plants. So, so I'm wow. a little bit tough uh, frazzled by that. But other than that, I'm just I'm glad to be here, and I'm glad I got my earbud working. Um, and I uh, can't wait to get started tonight and see the intro. That's awesome, sister. Thank you so much. And we're going to say a prayer for your plants that the Lord bless yeah. you. So <laughs> Thank you. Exactly. I do how to the... keep that stuff down. I know. My mother was a plant lover for years. Our house yeah. looked like it was like, um, I don't even know what you want to call What they call those? A jungle? Plants. No, not a jungle. It was okay. a terrarium. Is that what they call them? Yeah. When it's yeah, a bunch yeah. of plants. Thank you. Yeah, a terrarium. And, uh, and and uh, I, I it would be mom. What's that? What's that? She knew all the names and stuff. I, I, I don't think I'll ever be that into it, mother. But oh, I know a I little bit about them because of her. Yeah, yeah, I didn't think I'd be into it either because uh, my mom was into plants too. And, and then I hit thirty, <laughs> and I don't know what happened, but something happened. I'm like obsessed now. So yeah, but um, it's good for you. It's really good to have that. I mean, they're it's really good to have plants in your house, like as many as you can, for the air quality. Um, you know, that is true. A number of plants really do clean the air. And a lot of people don't know that. I, I had yeah. started doing some studies on stuff like that. And I was thoroughly surprised. But let me not forget our illustrious producer, Brother Ben, coming in out of the shadows back there. How are you doing? <laughs> uh, good. It's good to hear with you guys. Um, this is the only place. I, this is my only outlet for. Uh, talking about the things that we do. I don't have anyone else I can talk to. So it's, it's good to be with you guys. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm actually looking at a snake plant right now, which I understand mm. is, is, is the most, it, produ it outputs the most oxygen than any other plant is what I'm It's the best for you because it doesn't put, um, it doesn't put, uh, like, I think it's CO2. There's something that a lot of plants do at night, at least, that makes it to where it's not ideal to have them in your bedroom. But snake plants actually um uh are really are really great to have in your bedroom and they're also like impossible to kill and you yeah i was gonna say I, I water it like I, I there's times where i you know there's months and months where i forget to water it yeah and, uh, it just springs back to life overnight and it, it doesn't grow out of control so I, it's in a very nice plant yes yeah. they're, they have other, that's the that's from a bulletproof plant if you don't know how to take care of plants definitely get a snake plant <laughs> Yeah, we don't have to talk about this. this isn't a topic really, but uh, Renee mentioned something that's very true. She said in the chat, mm. uh, plants respond to kindness and violence. They've been used as a murder witness in court once. They truly are alive. Um, yes, they actually have done studies um, with plants uh, in saying kind things to them and then saying horrible things to them. And the plants that they said nice, kind things to grew and flourished and were uh, full of life. And the ones that they said bad things to uh, were frazzled and, and uh, sad. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't so think, sad. I don't think it was just the words. I don't think, it was, I don't think that probably don't, I suspect it probably wasn't the words at all, but it was the tone of the voice. I've seen it. Yeah. And also music too. Different mm. types of music uh, had different effects. Oh yeah. Mythbusters. Showed that. Yeah. Contra yeah. I saw that. I heard about that. Both words, like you're saying, brother Ben tone, uh, the music and uh, the the one that's getting me now is Brother Cripps. I know that Sister Renee brought that up, but 
Uh, do you know any details about how it was used as a witness in court? No, no, I, I don't know okay. anything about that. The the thing that Renee said as far as witness in court, but uh, now I'm gonna have to research that. That's fascinating. Yeah, yeah, wow. they actually they they actually have done some pretty interesting uh, experiments, and one that I'm sure you guys know about is uh, dealing with vibration and uh, and um, uh, what's the other word? Frequency. De dealing with frequencies and things and uh, playing different kind of music on a speaker and, and putting um, some mm -hmm. kind of substance on it. And it makes uh, patterns. Okay. Makes patterns on, on the uh, face of the, the, the uh, speaker, the surface. Yeah, they'll put like sand on there. Yeah, correct. Yep. Thank you, Ben. Yeah, I couldn't think of the substance they used. I thought it was silica or something, but it, it may have been sand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, which is fascinating to me. So you play something through a speaker, certain types of music, and it and it um, uh, frequencies, and it has different patterns that emerge. And what's interesting, those patterns are common in nature, like a tor a tortoise shell, for example. The patterns on the tortoise shell. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, uh, I thought, oh, but, sorry, Ben. Go ahead. No, I'm just kidding. There's a, there's a number of videos on YouTube where people have done different uh, frequencies, and it it looks like there's it what emerges is a pattern that's rec easily recognizable in nature, or yeah. readily acknowledged. Yeah. If that doesn't make you believe in God, I don't know what is. I love that God has put so many ways to know that He is real within His creation. And well, you know, it's interesting. Sorry. The, what's uh, interesting too is that uh, you know it's vibrational. It's it's sound. Well, what did God do? He spoke creation into existence mm -hmm. i'm wondering if there is more it's true on every level as we say um and so mm -hmm. i'm wondering if there's a dimension of, of, of that to it I, I suspect that there is well te we have what is considered real science and i believe that tesla uh nikolai tesla he actually discovered some of these things and i consider some of his his experiments to be real science as opposed to science falsely so called that we have today mm -hmm. But that's a topic for another time, I suppose. Well, I was reading Sister Renee's uh, comment to further elaborate on that. And she said that the plant was hooked up to a lie detector. And it reacted violently when the murderer either testified or entered the room. Wow. Wow. That is That's crazy. amazing. But wow. you know what? Remember, okay, y'all remember when you used to see those people back in the day before we got woke, okay, to some of this stuff. And they would say things and it was like, doo -doo 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 -doo. you thought you was in the twilight zone. Yeah. And now you're starting to see that a lot of this stuff, pardon the background noise, people, I'm, I'm actually in a car right now, um, is actually real. When people said that food was alive, you were thinking... Now, I'm not talking about a deer running around or, you know, right. a cow. I'm talking about a plant. And they would right. say an apple is alive, has life. And now they have those spectrum things where they can see the, I don't know, for lack of a better term, aura or life force coming from that, that thing. Right. And they'll show you where one that's organic has this beautiful light around it. And then the one that's like GMO, it'll be like jagged and weak. Wow. <laughs> Yeah. I've seen it. And did you know the people who said, you know, you get energy from food? We go, yeah, okay, you get energy from food. Yeah, we kind of figure that. But it's literal because I saw a gentleman take a, I guess you call it this, uh, um, you know how those, the guys that do, like if they were checking out the electrical system in your car, they have those probes and they have the spikes and they can stick it into the cord and they have a positive and negative and it'll, let them know if there's a short or if it's working properly. Well, right, yeah. they took that and stuck the positive end into the apple and they had the negative grounded to see if I have this right. They had the negative grounded, I think, but it was also connected to a light bulb. So when they stuck that into the apple, the apple lit up the light bulb. Wow. <laughs> I, yeah. I had never seen that before. And they showed how uh, certain things had more energy than others based on how they were grown and stuff. It was the most incredible thing. And then here were these people saying this decades ago, and we thought they were a little on the crazy side. It turns out they were right. <laughs> it's incredible. It really is. It's but Brother Cripps. Yeah, you know, it, it it is. It's it it is amazing that these people were right 
what, 20, 30 years before us. And we just thought they were a little strange and out there. And I'm starting to think that some of those people that were standing on the corner that was talking to themselves that we thought were crazy. I wonder if they went crazy because they couldn't get anybody to listen to them. Well, it's true. That is true. The truth is always mocked and scoffed at. And I, I find time and time again, like you said, the things that you, you'd hear about when I was a kid or whatever, that, you know, oh, I'm not going to accept that because the world doesn't accept it. Or everyone thinks that's ridiculous, so I'm not going to even consider it. But those things were very, very true. I'm finding time and time again. Before we move forward, I, I do want to say one thing about what you were saying, uh, Sister Lisa, mm. about the uh, uh, fruits having energy. Biblically speaking, we know that in the future, uh, when we're in the new heavens and, and new earth, we know that there will be trees that we eat from and healing of the nations, the leaves and the fruit of certain trees will, um, uh, obviously the tree of life and the, there's, there's trees mentioned in scripture. And I believe at the beginning, you know, they had all the quote unquote trees in the garden that they could eat from. And I believe that they, they gave energy to Adam and Eve and they were only forbidden to eat from one tree, the uh, knowledge of good and evil. Um, I believe it was like that. And, and, you could say that sin has broken down some of the effects of fruit that God naturally put in into creation. It doesn't have exactly the same effect, but like a lot of things, he didn't remove all the effects, all the positive effects out of nature. There are still things found in nature that are very beneficial to our bodies. I think we all agree on that. Mm. Oh, yeah. Anyway, that's, I just wanted to throw that in there about your comment about the fruit. <laughs> Some people are saying, yeah, nobody listened. I was just wondering, were you one of those people that were on the street corner that everybody thought was crazy? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, man. But, you know, I had somebody contact me and said, you shouldn't talk about flat earth because people are going to think you're crazy. Yes. And I was like, but people already think we're crazy. We're yeah. believers. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. So, Brother Cripps, what did you pick for your topic this evening to intrigue everyone with yeah i wanted to talk about the matrix uh both the movie and the ideas brought about in the movie uh, and how it ties into uh, uh the difference between being a believer and an unbeliever mm, okay i like it okay good now have has everyone on the panel seen the movie the matrix That's i actually a good question i have yes. i've seen all three Okay, great. I remember the first two the best. The, number three is a little bit sketchy for me. Uh, I've seen it twice. I just yeah. don't remember a lot of it. Yeah, it wasn't I, that good, quite frankly. <laughs> I would I would agree. So um, for the sake of the conversation, really the, the, the best one, in my opinion, was the first one. And uh, most of the messages in that uh, uh, can be applied uh, very easily to you know, kind of the topic and, and what I want to discuss with everyone. Um, ben, did you say you'd seen it? I, I saw the first one. Uh, and people it, thought it was the greatest thing since sliced bread. They, they loved it. I, when I saw it, again, I wasn't awake at all. And uh, I just saw it as a, uh, you know, like a teenager, a boy, a teenage boy, you know, dream type of you know he had all the all the you know it, it, it pushed pushed all the buttons to make it a, a hit for teenage boys and basically and i i was one of them but i i, I just kind of saw that well again i wasn't awake i wasn't i didn't pay attention to the dialogue so much i just saw keanu reeves in those ridiculous glasses and trying to be hyper cool and i i thought it was ridiculous i didn't like it at all um now though uh, and i haven't gone back to watch it but i do know that there's a lot of truth in it and for that reason i even recently, it's funny you bring this up because even recently, I, I thought that yeah, I, I should go back and watch that. But um, again, on the That's surface level, I didn't enjoy it. I didn't enjoy it. Well, Ben, you actually helped me out probably without even not even knowing it because uh, you said that when you saw it originally, you weren't awake, and neither was I. So this is this is this is so important. This is the way I actually wanted to start it up. Um, when I saw it, I wasn't quote unquote awake, uh, awake either. But that movie, the first time I saw it, had such an impact. And it wasn't just me. I went and saw it with a friend who's not awake. But that movie impacted both of us so much that after the movie, we sat outside on the, on the uh, front of his Jeep in the driveway and talked about it for like two and a half hours. All the implications. Um, he is a believer, uh, was then and still is. Um, and we were, we were looking at it as 
uh, the difference between a believer and an unbeliever and what a believer understands because he has the word and believes the word and what an unbeliever uh, thinks because they don't believe in God and they don't believe in his word. And the movie, as far as religion, it was kind of an ecumenical type of thing. They had uh, uh, Christianity, they had uh Buddhism, they had Hinduism, they had all these different kind of a mashup of different beliefs from all these different religions. But for someone that only believes that God is real and doesn't believe any of the other, uh, I mean, they exist, but they're, they're not truth. So I didn't have to, you know, uh, I didn't have to uh, sift through these other uh, themes in the movie because I'm only seeing it from one perspective and what their mm. meanings could be for someone that believes as opposed to someone that doesn't believe and how that would affect us uh, if we uh, looked at it as being real. Like, for instance, uh, for those of you who have seen the movie, at one point, uh, Neo, which is the main character, he has a choice to either take the red pill or the blue pill. Now, this is also used in the truth movement, and I had a meme that I kept on my Facebook page for quite some time because I just thought it was so cool when I did wake up. So it's used for that as well. But you could look at that as a, as the same choice that were offered uh, to take the red pill or the blue pill. Either stay in the, the world that Satan has created for us or mm -hmm. take the other pill, which is the truth of God's word. Law and grace, too. Uh, right. I've heard red represents the law and blue represents um, grace. And that um, purple... Uh, which is, I think, wasn't Christ, it was the hook was purple. It was the, um, I've, I've heard this before, that like it's at least, at least they've long thought, uh, whoever has, has long thought that, that those are the symbols. So I think it's very interesting that they use those colors. Yeah. In the, in the yeah. So um, I, I don't know if this is interesting to everyone, but I, uh, that's the, that's the topic that I kind of want to discuss because I, I think they're even 20 years later. So that movie came out in 1999, mm. right before the, uh, back then it was Y2K that everyone was afraid of. Everyone was mm. worried that at, at, uh, midnight, literally at the turn of the century that all the computers were. Uh, not uh, set up properly and that at the stroke right. of midnight, the numbers uh, for all computers in the world uh, would uh, freak out and it would be the end of civilization as we know it. And of course, mm -hmm. for those of you that were alive back then, I know there's a lot of younger people that, uh, that listen to the show and, and all that um, may not even know what I'm talking about. So if you have any interest in uh, learning more about it, you can go on obviously go on and uh, Google Y2K. That's what they called it. Mm. But that's basically what it was. And of course, nothing happened. Nothing happened. Uh, but being not being awake back then, I didn't see it as a false flag. I didn't see it as a way to sell merchandise. I, uh, because back then, when people were afraid of this, there were a lot of people that became preppers. They were getting mm -hmm. prepared and they bought all this merchandise and things to prepare for the uh, uh, electric grid to go down. Um, lots of people built bomb shelters. Lots of people built, built panic rooms uh, to keep people from looting their homes. I mean, it was mm -hmm. crazy, 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 crazy. Mm -hmm. um, interestingly enough, even though I wasn't awake, I did nothing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> because I'm a believer and because the Bible prepares us for what's to come, um, I, I, I'm trusting God that he will take care of me um, even if I, even if I have, even if I die at the hands of evil forces, he has my soul in his hands. Uh, yeah. So I have nothing to fear in this world. I have nothing to fear from the government, you know, arresting me because I, I uh, tell the truth or believe in his word. Um, I don't have to fear that. So everyone's freaking out, everyone, but a lot of people freaking out about Y2K, and I didn't at all. Anyway, that's just kind of setting the stage of what time it was uh, in the world. Um, also, at that time, this was really when Facebook, uh, I don't know, Facebook wasn't around then. It was about to come, but computers uh, were, were becoming way more popular, and there were actually several movies that came out 
uh, around that time. Fight Club was one of them. Um, uh, Office Space was another one. And in these movies, there was lots of stuff about people becoming consumers, people being too wrapped up in consumerism and the ind individuality of people starting to decline. And in some ways that was prophetic because that's where we are today with uh, social media where people are more interested in having followers and getting likes and uh, likes and what's the hearts from Instagram? I guess it's hearts, right? I don't, I don't yeah, know. I've never hearts. hearts yep. You Parts I've never even looked at Instagram, so I don't okay. know. Okay. No, that's good. I mean, I, there's nothing wrong with having social media. That's not my point. But mm -hmm. my, my point is that back in 1999, people were, were looking at this, at least movie makers were looking at, at the trend that seemed to be developing at the time uh, and, you know, being kind of concerned about that. And 20, 21 years later, is, is, am I right about the math on that? But roughly 21 years later, uh, some of the things that people were afraid about are actually happening as it pertains to people being more involved in their iPhones and their uh, internet and their social media than they are about actually um, uh, doing what Lisa's doing uh, this evening, going and being with family face-to-face -face and actually um, being engaged uh, in person. Um, that That's kind of going to the wayside right now. Uh, the Matrix didn't really talk about that in particular, but uh, just kind of setting the stage for uh, what was going around, uh, what was going mm -hmm. on back then. Um, mm -hmm. Also, another interesting thing, in the movie itself, uh, when they're telling the story, of what happened to real civilization, they used the year of the movie to say that was the peak of human existence, 1999, uh, in the movie, was the peak of human existence before things went downhill. Now, I'll leave it to everyone to decide whether there's some truth in that or not. Uh, in, in the idea of Technology is supposed to help our lives. What, what they tell us is technology actually aids to our existence. Um, if you think it doesn't, if you think it's more of a detriment to society, for instance, social media, uh, changing uh, communities, changing the idea of community uh, or not. Um, what do you guys think about that? Do you think that technology actually helps, uh, helps bring us closer to each other? Or do you think it uh, separates us and divides us? Well, I'll say I grew up uh, on the technology wave. I've wrote it my whole life. I got it in, in on the industry right at the right time. Right. I was born right at the right time. I've kind of surfed that wave, if you will, ever mm -hmm. since. And when I was when I originally got into it, it was very academic, scientific, uh, done for good things. It wasn't. And then around two thousand. Is I is, is right when when I started getting embarrassed, part, part partially embarrassed about being in technology because it it got really cheapened. It really cheapened it, uh, where it was all about you know th that's where social media started to come into play and just yeah. different dumb things that I was embarrassed to be associated with. Um, but now I I never had anything to do with it. For me, it was an art. It was a science, and I still is. Right. Uh, and, and I don't get into a lot of that other stuff that's uh, you know that, uh, that that the world typically uses it for. So, yes, I think for the most part, like anything, it's a tool and it can be used for good or evil. Um, I think a lot of people use it for stupid, worthless things. Yeah. Um, in fact, I, you, could, you could do a science experiment. Like I, I'm on – I'm well, I'm pretty much off of Facebook now, but I, I, every once in a while I'll pop in there and I'll, I'll post something profound or valuable, spiritually valuable, no, no, no likes whatsoever. And right. then, I'll post up, then I'll post something frivolous and, 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 and silly – uh, and it gets, you know, you know, all, all, all everyone I might, uh, that I'm friends with will like it, you know, it's like, so, um, I, oh yeah. So for me, I, I, yeah, definitely. I think it's, it, it's, uh, for most people, it's a detriment, but for me, I, it's still, uh, a tool that I use. In fact, I, I, I attribute much of my Excel accelerated learning of God's word with, with the, the, te uh, electronic tools that I have, you know, I can look up a verse immediately, do cross references, 
yeah. you know, look at Strong's concordance. I don't have to pull books around. I can do it all in one screen, do comparisons. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. And I, I, for people who use it that way, um, I, you know, just like anything in life, it, it's got uh, pros and cons. So, um, that's what I would say where, where I'm at with it. Yeah, it definitely has gotten worse. I think it will get worse in terms of exploitation for evil um, or just senseless mm -hmm. things. Like, you know, especially pornography has actually dr driven a lot of technology. Gaming and, and pornography has driven much of the uh, innovation, if you will. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, it, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And so, but 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 the things that have come from that, there can be good if you're looking for it. And if uh, you can definitely use them to your advantage, which I, I try to do. So. Mm -hmm. Ben, you're on fire tonight with your that that was uh, very good <laughs> feedback. Thank you so much. Oh, I could go on all about technology. It's been my whole life. So, well, no, and and you brought up some. I want to ask everyone else first, but then I want to go back to some of the points that you made uh, about it it uh, being used for good or bad because I agree with that uh, very much. Uh, what about you, Sister Lisa? Well, I have seen the. I guess the double edge effect of it, yeah. like Brother Ben was saying, it it would appear that for the most part, technology is benign. You know, mm -hmm. it's neither good nor evil. Right. It can be used for either. But I'm still not a hundred about that. <laughs> still not a hundred about that because I'm certainly certainly the Bible does talk about how there are going to be the men that devise like wicked imaginations and i think some of that does have to do mm -hmm. with technology but i can also see how it could be used for, <laughs> for good mm -hmm. uh i've also seen the effects from when i was growing up com uh, com when we didn't have all this technology we didn't have the internet i remember when people thought it was mind-blowing when pac-man came out you know or atari uh so I mean, I look back at that stuff now and I kind of laugh at, at how basic it was, but they had to start basic to introduce For it to real. us to have the concepts to be able to build yeah. to drop these other things on us later, which they yeah. may have even had since the 40s. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, you know, because people are going back demonstrating now how they can see certain. There's what they have, I guess they call it some type of noise within photographs or the metadata, whether or not a photograph has been photoshopped. And they're finding out a lot of this stuff going back into the 40s and even maybe a little earlier was photoshopped. Well, how could you photoshop it unless there was Photoshop? Right. So right. <laughs> uh, this is, you know, we know they're like 100 years possibly ahead of us. So it, it, we don't even know. That's just what we've been told. Yeah. It could be 500 years. We don't know, yeah. but they can't lay it on us all at once. I remember seeing a um, a broadcast about a woman who had been in a coma for like 50 years. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, it's a good thing she was around at the time she was around before they started all this euthanasia stuff. Praise God. But she came out of the coma and her children, when they, she had entered the coma, were were like toddlers and now they were adults imagine they're in their their 50s and they she had never seen a television before they said they could not show her er things because she would be sh it was too much for her system so they had to show her different things in technology and drips and drafts now mind you i'm cognizant i'm seeing this on television so i'm not 100 percent certain if this is even true but they that. showed her <laughs> you did I know. I still love that. Tell I. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. They, they had, they handed her, you know, the little two inch TVs they used to have. Nobody yeah. even uses those anymore. Hardly. Right. And they showed it to her and she was just amazed. She was like, what yeah. TV that small? Because she had never seen anything like that for us. It was like commonplace. It was like no big deal. But Absolutely. I remember when we used to have to take 10 minutes to get on the internet, you know, the, you had to set it up and dial a number and had to call and it made this horrendous noise. And, it, yeah. you know, you yeah. were finally connected and it only took you 30 minutes to send an email. Yeah. <laughs> so, and Incredible. I must just send it because you had to dial up to get on it. Yeah. But now it's like this, this dystopian world they're creating for us. Uh, I, f I was sitting today and then I'm going to um, give you, give you back the microphone. No, you're good. You're good. Uh, I was sitting in the car when it was coming to, to, we have a family day every month, ever since my dad 
passed away a few years ago. We made a pact as a family that we were going to draw closer to one another and we were going to spend one day a month where we would get together, fellowship, eat, talk about the goodness of God and just love on one another. OK, so we, yeah. we try to do this every month. We're not always all able to make it, but it always goes forward. We even did it during the lockdown. OK, so uh, we're 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 getting together today. And I was thinking about we were laughing and talking, but we stopped to pick up some food for the family day because we were having some burritos and everybody will chip in on like what to bring. So mine was the cheese and sour cream and my mom brought the dessert. So right. she runs into Smart and Final, which is like a um, what do they call those stores? You know, where you go get the the. They have the jumbo size stuff because it's for restaurants. I yeah, can't call what they call those. Box, box yeah. Store. Oh, okay. All right. Warehouse? I wasn't sure that was the right term. Like, where, uh, yeah. Thank you. Grocery warehouse type thing. Yeah. And so she goes in and they have a sign before you go in. Uh, masks are required. Okay. And I'm irritated yeah. and I'm furious about this stuff. It just, uh, okay. I'm like, uh. I said, well, you know what, Mom? I'm glad you're going in there dealing with that mess to me because, see, I'm not going to do it. And every place that I would have to go, it would be a fight. And I don't mean a literal physical fight. I'm talking about yeah, yeah. the battle you have to do with the person coming over telling you you have to wear it or you have to leave. And then you have to stand there and assert your rights. And then you have to ask, go get the manager and go through all that stuff. So that's designed to wear us down so that it's just easier to go forget it. I'll just put on the mask. Mm -hmm. But I was thinking, I see all these people coming up with these masks and they look at me and I can't tell the expression on their face. They don't have an expression because they're they're covered up to their nose. Some of them almost up to their eyeballs with these signs. I don't know if they're happy. I don't know if they're mad. I don't know if they're sad. They go up to the this area where they have these spray bottles now so they can spray. We don't know if it's clear water or it's a chemical. They spraying it on the cart. and Everybody's spraying it down and they're wiping it down before they put the child in it and they're wiping it down before they touch it and I'm like Lord is this really the world that I'm going to have to live in until you yep. come yep. and I'm yep. thinking for these children with the six feet apart in hula hoops to keep them separated and I'm like oh my god so okay uh, brother uh <laughs> Brother Cripps, so yeah, it's bothering me because I, as as you see in one of my memes, this is not normal. And I keep telling my family, please, don't y'all call this normal. It is the new abnormal. And you need to keep saying, every time they go, well, this is the new normal. You said, nope, this is the new abnormal because ain't nothing normal about this. I know what normal is and yep. this ain't it. Nope. Nope. But, they, but people that are asleep can't see it. They, they, mm. they can't see that this is being crafted. I like the term you used, and I'm paraphrasing, but the, the world they created for us or the dystopia they created, I think, is the way you said it. Mm. Uh, because that's true. They are creating a world, and they have a plan uh, for what they want to do and reasons why all this is happening. They've been planning this for a long time, and people refuse to see it. Um, thank you so much, uh, uh, Lisa, for your thoughts. Uh, I guess, uh, Angel, do you uh, have a comment on this? Uh, about uh, technology and uh, computers and social media? Uh, she said she was being preoccupied. She has a oh, uh, baby, yeah, baby issue for the next five minutes. So No problem. No problem. Okay. Baby so, pass for Sister Angel. And by the way, people are talking in chat. They're talking about uh, various subjects, but uh, it's on fire. I mean, just how many people seem to... Uh, to at least know some truth and uh, are willing to discuss it. I, I love this this platform that's released. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love it. Um, okay, I do so too, brother. Oh, thank you. So one of the things that I studied, I studied um, uh, psychology and sociology in in, uh, in overpriced, uh, ridiculous uh, college. Uh, again, wasn't awake, and I suppose if I were awake, I and had it to over again. Um, I actually might still have gone. I just would have done it in a different way, and my focus would have been even even more on uh, some things uh, that I wasn't as concerned about back then. Uh, but one of the things I studied was in in sociology was community, um, and this does tie back in. I, I promise to go go back around to the matrix. But um, if you go back to like the 1800s, communities 
were very much more a part of society and, and m- way more important than they are today. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and uh, for instance, with the family back then, it, it was possible because of the way things were that a child born in 1800 would live in a household with both his parents, mm-hmm. his grandparents, uh, brothers and sisters. There may have even been some cousins or, or maybe they lived in an area where family was close by. Uh, this is this is my belief that that's the way God intended it. Um, not necessarily for all to live in the same house, but communities to be tight knit, and uh, uh, also back then, whether people believe it or not, the belief in God. Uh, they may not have had, all had the right gospel, but the belief in God was way more pervasive back then. Uh, more mm-hmm. people were at least likely to uh, say that they're Christians. Than, than today. Still happens mm-hmm. today, don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. But back then, um, people were, were seemed to be more interested in biblical things. Um, mm-hmm. I don't I don't think it's it's a coincidence that uh, all these years later, not only has community been pretty much eradicated. I'm not saying there are no communities anymore, but it isn't like it used to be. And also with their attack on the family, that isn't like it is uh, used to be either. So they didn't just start on the attack on the family. They started like breaking the family apart by um, uh, uh, women's rights and uh, mm-hmm. making it uh, making that a, a division between a husband and a wife. And mm-hmm. then with uh, same sex marriages, that also uh, played into it a little bit, in my opinion. Um, and then the division uh, between the races. Obviously, I believe that that uh, played a big part as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's always been a, a, a factor, obviously, even back then when I'm the golden age, you know, the 1950s when, you know, two cars in every garage and a white picket fence and the lie that they told us about the American dream. Uh, <laughs> back then, that that was talked about all the time and every commercial you saw, they represented, you know, Chevrolet and apple pie and all these things mm-hmm. and set up this ideal. Um, and it hasn't changed, but it was a lie back then, and it, it's it's deteriorated now. The whole idea of an American dream, where if you if you work hard, and you you know stay in line, and pay your taxes, and and be a, be a good person, um, that you'll be successful. Mm-hmm. Uh, so these are all uh, these are all uh, lies perpetuated by the the people that that run the world. Um, so community. Is uh, has deteriorated. Um, uh, this was so interesting to me when I studied all this because I I remember being a kid and being more involved in community even when I grew up. Um, it had already mm-hmm. kind of deteriorated back then, but I remember uh, my grandparents lived in a small town, Gladwin, Michigan, and everyone knew my grandpa. Mm-hmm. He would go into a store and said, "Oh, Leo Cripps, how, how you doing?" Um, and I would go with him somewhere and people knew who he was. Now, I think it's probably still like that in some small towns where people kind of know everyone. Uh, mm-hmm. But it just fascinated me as a kid. It fascinated mm-hmm. me that mm-hmm. he would go places and people knew who he was. Now, mm-hmm. uh, obviously, I live in a, a bigger area. Um, and sometimes I run into someone that knows me from, from college or, you know, from, from various places. But it's not like it was for my grandpa when I was a kid where Mm there people were tied up in their communities and technology, I believe technology has uh, been one of the ways that that has changed. Mm -hmm. Um, There's a saying that any tool is a weapon if you hold it right. Mm. And so getting back Mm -hmm. to what Ben said earlier, you know, and what, uh, what sister Lisa said as well, anything, uh, the internet can be used for both good and evil. And remain, Renee made the comment in the chat that uh, you know the the uh, technology itself isn't isn't bad or evil, but it's the um, it's the the minds, the wicked minds of the people that are using the technology uh, that affect the way that the world is. And that would certainly be true. Ben mentioned pornography. That that is a perfect example of a way that technology is used and a way to deteriorate the fabric of America and the morals 
the morals and values of America. Um, back in the 50s, uh, you know, the kind of, uh, even before the 50s, the kind of bathing suits they wore. Women wore mm -hmm. full length, didn't show any skin. It's that ridiculous hurts. to think about swimming in that, uh, mm -hmm. obviously. But the idea was modesty. Now today, oh yeah, yeah, they wouldn't think of of being that modest. Wouldn't think of it anyway. If the people back then saw some of the pictures of of the bathing suits that people wear today, they would be incensed. They yes. they absolutely would not be able to handle it. That's true. So they chip away at the at the morals and values over time, and now mm -hmm. we're at the point where social media technology is being used as social media to keep us divided. And uh, I think uh, Angel had mentioned talking about the riots and stuff, and I'm not necessarily uh, wanting to talk about that. But I, I can just say that because this is going on right now, there mm -hmm. definitely is still a push by the uh, some of the elites or the people that are in charge to cause a civil war. Mm -hmm. the, I believe that's what they want. And so they're, they're trying to keep us divided rather than uh, being... Uh, communities that love each other and uh, and know each other, because if we did that, if instead of allowing race to divide us or politics to divide us or any number of things, we would be able to band together and rise up and make some sort of stand against these ridiculous evil things that the world is trying to do against us and against God. It's it's anti God in my opinion. It's oh, anti-God and, and anti-what he has created man to be. They Thank try you. to get you to react rather than to respond. People respond, animals react. And they want to turn us into animals, which we are not. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Brother Ben. I'm sorry. I don't want to cut you off. No, I was just going to say that that's exactly how the, the subtlety of the enemy, what they do is they first, you know, when there's something controversial, uh, they first... Uh, uh, ask for tolerance or, or demand, have a demand for tolerance. Uh, mm -hmm. and then they, uh, or th it's a, there's a call for tolerance. So tolerate this, this aberrant behavior or whatever it may be. And then mm -hmm. it's a, it's a, uh, it's a demand for acceptance. And mm -hmm. then it turns into forced participation, you know, mm -hmm. uh, like for example, um, certain, uh, uh, parades that occur, gay pride parades, for example, first there was yeah. a call for tolerance. Then there was a demand, a demand for acceptance. Now, mm -hmm. uh, some companies, you know, you, you're expected to go out there and, in uh, march in that parade. Um, so it, it's subtlety. They, and they always ask, Oh, no, we're, oh, we're asking for tolerance. All oh, we're asking for tolerance. Then there's demand for acceptance. And then there's, it, it, it's just, it amps it up, keeps it amping up until it's fully over, it overcomes the society. Agreed. Is Angel yes. back yet, or is she still gone? That was an excellent point, Brother Ben. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I can't see if she's back in the chat yet. You guys will have to tell me. Uh, I only have the one little window in the back room here for the stream. I have no well, she, idea who's in the hangout. Yeah, I understand. She's still muted, so uh, it's unfortunate. Okay. I really wanted to hear her opinion on some of this stuff, too. But uh, you guys are making great points. So uh, did you have uh, something you wanted to add to that? Hey, Jay, say sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. I had to get back to, no problem. Get back to my phone. Uh, no, I'm muted. glad you're back. I'm glad you're back. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. About, yeah, well, yeah, it's, just, it's, been, it's a little bit. Uh, the kids are still up, unfortunately. So uh, uh, it's uh, whenever they take long naps during the day, then I get to look forward to long nights. But um, yes, yeah, some uh, the interesting thing about the word tolerance is, you know, people don't. They've used it. They've they've misappropriated it because the word tolerance. I mean, I don't know. I guess it's supposed to mean something like friendly or positive now, but really, it's it's just basically stomaching something you hate. You know, just just barely getting. You know, you know, basically not violently reacting or or something mm -hmm. like that. Uh, like if you have a tolerance, then your tolerance increases over time, right? So, um, yeah. you know, the more you're exposed to a, a toxic substance, your body can become. Um, you know, grow a tolerance to Good it, point. but it's yes. innately bad for you. <laughs> you know, that's why you have to do that. And, um, you know, uh, yeah, I wanted to, you know, talk about the uh, stuff uh, with, you know, everything that's going on, um, you know, uh, a little bit later, but, you know, I, I okay. totally agree. I mean, it's not, uh, it's not, it, it, technology brought us this entire situation because, yeah. um, 
most of these people that I'm seeing marching, it, you know, in videos, they're young, like really young. Um, yeah. You know, they're like, you know, in their early 20s. And um, uh, all the, the majority of their experience in terms of what they feel they're, you know, they're protesting is, uh, is, 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 is really just uh, through the Internet. And yeah. the, um, mm-hmm. the, uh, uh, the, the, the culture war that's raged on the internet and Twitter probably primarily, mm-hmm. um, because, you know, I, I haven't, uh, you know, I guess there's a riot in Louisville. I, I have, I've been, I, I live, I'm going to Louisville like constantly. That's only an hour away from me. It's, I, I go there more than any other city. Um, and I love Louisville and I love the people of Louisville, Kentucky, and it broke my heart to even hear. I, I won't even look at the headlines. So I don't really want to know because it'll upset me so much. Because I have been all over Louisville. Every time I go there, um, I you know the population of Louisville is that I, from what I can tell is at least fifty percent black. Um, I mean, and everywhere like I'm talking like all the you know um, outskirts, even like the suburbs and stuff. And every time I go there you know i talk to everybody because they're so friendly in louisville everybody's so friendly and i don't care you know what neighborhood i'm in um or you know who it is i've had so many long conversations with just uh, random strangers and most of the time it's black people uh that will that i'll come up and talk to and i haven't you know i don't understand how there could be something like this going on in louisville organically because i I go there for a reason. Everybody's awesome in Louisville and, and people are all the people on black, white, they're, they're really aware of what's going on and they're not, um, you know, they're not uh, sheepish. They're not, uh, uh, I mean, I'm obviously not if this doesn't speak for everybody, but you know, mm-hmm. the people that I usually talk to are probably 25 and over. Right. And I'm guessing that a lot of what's, if there's any kind of people right now, I bet you it's people that are in their late teens and early twenties that are so glued into technology and Twitter and stuff. And they're not basing their, their feelings on really what they've really experienced in real life. They're mm-hmm. ba- uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, cause I, 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 I don't think, I mean, I haven't even heard, I haven't ever heard when one of the, you know, at, at these protests when they're yelling and screaming, I haven't heard anybody share what happened to them. They just start going off of these talking points at these it's these generalized remote concepts and it's all it's all just you know like today when i was watching jason Giffen's stream uh this one guy you know, he was you know probably like in his 30s um yeah i think it's like he's from the caribbean or something he comes up to jason and goodman and him were you know he was, jason was trying to have a conversation with him you know and, and saying you know maybe we should uh step back and really look at the situation rationally uh and the guy uh, didn't really want to have the conversation. He just wanted to to rattle off talking points at Jason and not actually answer any of Jason's questions or address the points Jason was making. And and, and you could tell Jason got under his skin because he kept coming back to him after Jason would get frustrated and walk away. And at the, la- the last time he, he, you know, the last attempt he, he made to talk to Jason, he comes up and he, I swear it's like he was brainstorming, like how he was going to win this argument. And it really was, in- it gave me a lot of insight into the situation what's going on because he comes to Jason, he goes, let me ask you a question. Which one of us is privileged? Like as if that was he, he had just uh, he just uh, shouted scissors and rock paper scissors and scissors cuts paper and he was like no no okay so I, I pulled the privilege card so that's the Trump card like he didn't understand why that didn't work when Jason was like he he chose the foregone conclusion that that Jason had to be like oh you're right I'm I'm the privileged one but Jason was like I don't know you I don't know anything about you <laughs> you might be way better off than me and it's all this stuff that's on the internet like. All these terms, all these concepts that are um, uh, being fueled by uh, bad actors, I believe, on the on the internet, and it's not really about um, real life experience anymore. And all these people that are, 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 and I think really there's a lot of rage built up too about the lockdown and everything. That's one of the things I wanted to talk about, you know, with, uh, uh, when it comes time, you know, to get to me. But uh, okay, cool. I know that the, the internet is definitely. It's giving people, people are basing basically their entire worldview off of stuff that has nothing to do with their actual personal experience anymore. But it's about <laughs> all of the social media interactions and, and what's on social. It's, it's crazy. I don't even know how to put it into a word. Right. No, like their whole life, that's what Satan does. You, their whole life is fiction. Yeah. Whole yes. life, everything they know, everything they believe is fiction. 
Thank you. Exactly. Yeah. So this ties yeah. in. This ties into why I wanted exactly why I wanted to talk to the matrix. You guys have been so great helping me uh, get get to this point. Um, so unless anyone has any more to say about uh, the couple topics that we've talked about so far, I'll go ahead and move on a little bit. Please do. Okay. So in the movie The Matrix, there's a line from uh, Morpheus. Uh, oh, we lost uh, Sister Lisa. She'll be back. Yeah, she'll be back. I wanted to hear this though, but I, I, I can I can bring it back up again, um, especially if we Hopefully talk. Hopefully, she can hear it. She might just be disconnected. That's true. That's a good point, Angel. Angel, I'm 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 glad you're back because I loved your point as well, and uh, I wanted I, I definitely wanted all of us to be able to comment on this stuff. So, um, oh yeah, I, sorry about that. Please. No, no, no. I I was gonna I was gonna follow that up by saying I I, I definitely appreciate you know you having uh, little ones to 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 tend <laughs> to, and that takes first priority. I understand that. I'm I'm just glad you're able to do as much as you are uh, as it pertains to the shows and stuff. Right. Thank um, you guys. Yeah, I'm, I'm just I'm realizing since I'm, I've done like three a week for the past uh, for a little while now, I have to just work around the kids rather than just completely uh, going off in a way and like saying, Joel, you handle it because it's like three days in a row of that and he's on call. So now I'm trying to do a little make it a little bit less of a heavy load because <laughs> yeah. uh, it's quite it's quite a long time. I'm off, you know, we go for a long time. Yeah, uh, especially tonight. So, but yeah, go on, Jason. Thank you, though. Yeah, no problem. Um, okay, so uh, there's a line in the movie. We're, we're going back to the Matrix. Uh, there's a line in the movie where Morpheus uh, is talking to Neo about the state that he's in. This is before he understands everything that's going on. This is a conversation that happened when they're both sitting in this uh, kind of um, uh, Neolithic. Uh, room, you know, they're sitting in chairs and stuff, and Morph is all dressed up in his costume and whatnot, uh, leather and all that. And it's uh, also uh, when he's offered the choice to either uh, take the red pill, which is see the truth, and the blue pill, which is to continue in the illusion of his life. Uh, and Morpheus says the line it in talking, your perfect timing, Lisa. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, great. Um, so the line is Morpheus. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yep. 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 I can hear okay. you. Uh, Morpheus tells Neo that what they've created in the Matrix is a prison for your mind. A prison for your mind. Wow. So biblically speaking, I think this is very true. And we talk about uh, the verse, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, against the rulers of the darkness of the world, and spiritual work in the side places. We've all heard that. Um, I think sometimes some, some believers don't really understand how huge that scripture is and how it should be able to prepare us for the true battle that we have in our minds. This to me is the battlefield. It, also, it, too, okay. uh, Chris, I was just going to add. I, I totally agree with you. I think we, we uh, I've definitely missed, missed. Uh, I underestimated it myself, and I think that's part of the reason why God tells us not to walk by sight and to right. walk by faith, because mm -hmm. Satan is the master of illusion, and it's not just by what you see, but and when God said don't walk by sight, I think He means more than just visual sight, but it's everything you receive from the world, you know. Uh, all the things like we talked about this last night was it, it is that most people real you know reality is in the mind, and um, uh, most people receive their reality from w w what they're given from their culture or from the outside world or you know education or whatever. And then you need to be reprogrammed. You need to, an operating system upgraded, so to speak. Yeah, that's what that's what scripture is. It's a it's if you are spiritually, you are what you eat. And, uh, Seeing that's is that's believing. That's what they say. And yeah, it's not exactly. Yeah, there, there you go. So I'm sorry, Crips. I, I just let uh, the word. No, I'm you. Sorry, we're supposed to let the word transform us. Yes, that okay, Ben. You never have to apologize, especially when you make points like you just did. We yeah. have to be reprogrammed. Uh, you've heard Sister Lisa talk about what television actually is, which they're programming us, and they use other forms of media as well. But the the television since it since its inception 
has been away, and they even put it, it's truth in plain sight, in the terms programs. It seems ridiculous that they would name it that. It seems ridiculous to me that they would name it television, which Lisa has so aptly uh, said many, many times, tell live vision. It's right there in the name. And that's exactly what they do. They're programming us. Um, I used to think it was just to, to have us buy things before I was awake. I just thought, oh, yeah, they have all the advertisements. I'm I sorry, Brother it. Crips. A spy what? Uh, I don't know. Have us buy things. He said have us oh, buy things. Oh, buy things. things. Sorry, okay. Sorry. Yeah. That's okay. Consumerism. Okay. So I, okay. when I started talking about this, I was saying that back in 1999, one of the biggest uh, issues that, at least in some movies, The Truth in Plain Sight, was uh, a concern about how much consuming we're doing as a population. But it's what they want wanted us to do, and I used to think it was just about that. The idea that even in radio, before television was created, in all the radio shows that people used to listen to, they always had ad. We're sponsored by Gillette. We're sponsored by, hmm. you know, some some product that uh, they had to do the commercials before and after and sometimes in the, in the middle. So I used to think that's what it was all about, just consumerism and trying to get us to buy things. And don't get me wrong, it is about that. But mm -hmm. more than that, it is a battlefield for control of our mind. They don't just want us to buy things. They want to craft something so that we believe what they tell us and they've done a great job because with the current situation they're in including the riots with which angel will uh, talk about later um they want us to believe everything we're hearing from the news they want us to be stuck to our televisions and take it all in and in, mm -hmm. of course in the middle of doing that there's going to be commercials all the time to keep us buying things this is not a hard concept to grasp, guys. The idea. Of well, it's weird because, like, they they're 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 fighting. Like right now, they're rioting against basically the establishment. Uh, you know, white like I guess like the white society. They like the white power structure, and also um, just uh, quote unquote the man. Because I mean, the the, the people right. in the crowds are like of both races, of all races. It's the most biracial crowd I've ever seen. Sure. Uh, in any of these riots, uh, which is going to get, we, I don't know how they plan to start a race war unless, you know, uh, I mean, if, if, if half the kids in there in the riots are white, um, it's not, you know, it's not really working out too well if, if they're trying to start a race war. But um, the thing is, uh, they, they don't, don't they think it's weird that if, if the power structure that they're rebelling against right now uh, controls the media. Why is the me why would they be telling on themselves? Why did they, they would ha have any idea about this situation with um, with Mr. Floyd, um, uh, who I, by the way, I just found out is a porn star. Um, uh, they mm -hmm. wouldn't have any idea about it if the if the if the man hadn't told them. So why does the man want to tell on himself like that? Like it, they don't even ask that question. Like right. like. The, the, uh, you know, so you're right. Uh, go on. I just wanted to point that out because it's like you're right. That everybody's just getting it right off the the media, and nobody. I don't understand. It doesn't even make sense. Like why why people aren't questioning. You know, if they if they don't trust the you know don't trust the people that run the media, and they think that there's this huge big you know conspiracy to uh, uh, you know to oppress them coming from. The people they also considered who run the media. Why is the media telling them about all this? Like, why aren't they wondering? Maybe they want us to do this. Yeah. You know, maybe they want us to react this way. Uh, go okay. on, Jason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll 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 get to that. So, um, the the point I'm making it uh, right now is from uh, from the movie. The idea is uh, telling Neo that it's a prison for your mind, and. Um, the matrix absolutely was that. So basically the reality is that you're a battery. You're a battery and they have this thing hooked to the back of your neck and they're they're pumping this nutritional fluid. But uh, when you're in the matrix, in, in your mind, you're eating regular food such as steak. Um, there was even mm -hmm. a scene later that I'll, I'll, I'll get to uh, that kind of underlines that. Uh, but... I think we all agree as believers that the battlefield is in the mind. Now the, the, the goal is souls, but that's right. Uh, but it's in the mind where that happens. And, and, and that's, that 
if you're not a believer, that's, that's your psyche, that's your conscious, uh, the, the way that you think, the way you believe, what you feel, all that is wrapped up into that. If you're a believer, then that's your soul. The soul is what's being changed. Your spirit is already quickened as a believer. Uh, but the, the soul is what's being saved and what's being sanctified. Um, so that's where the battle is. Satan, to a believer, he can't uh, have your soul. The, the battle's already been won. If you're a believer, mm -hmm. God has your soul in his hands. You're, you're mm -hmm. going to, to, to be saved. You're going to get your eternal body. You're going to be with God for eternity. But what he can do is use the devices in the world to stall your uh, ministry, to keep mm -hmm. you uh, asleep and uh, awake as it as it pertains to salvation, but asleep in in terms of Satan's devices and how he uses the mechanisms mechanisms of the world to keep you stagnant, to keep you uh, a, a a term is lukewarm, um, uh, ineffectual. Ineffectual. Thank you, Lisa. Ineffectual. Um, so I think we all agree that that uh, that idea the prison for your mind idea from the movie is, is accurate as it, as it uh, portrays what the Bible makes very, very clear. Um, our bodies are a throwaway. I mean, in, in, in the movie, mm. they're just batteries. They're just being used. Um, these bodies are temporary for us where everything really happens is internally. So what they want to do, if, if, if this matrix world that we live in is a prison for our mind, then that's where everything is done uh, to try to, to keep us, if we're believers, to keep us ineffectual. And if we're not believers, um, uh, just to to maintain the status quo and, and to control us. Uh, Brother yeah. Cripps, if I could interject something here. Sure, that, please do. I'm I see when you were talking, I get what you're saying. The real trophies for the devil mm -hmm. are as many souls as he can get, which is like... Uh, you ever see that bumper sticker that said, he who dies with the most toys wins? I sure did. That ties right into what we're saying about. about uh... <laughs> well, for the devil, the toys are the souls. Yes. And uh, <laughs> for the believer, the Bible said, he who wins souls is why. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. the, the, the object is the souls of men. Yes. And the devil has caused a sleep. Mm -hmm. Through the fall of man, his, his eyes, he became spiritually blinded. Mm -hmm. And it's like he's seek, seeking God in darkness mm -hmm. because no, there was no light in him. Right. <laughs> Once he fell, he had no connection to God. He was disconnected. Yeah. And now, you know, for what, several thousand years before the light of Christ, remember Jesus declared that he was the light of the world. Mm -hmm. And he said, but men won't come to him. Because they love darkness rather. rather than light. Yes. Because if they come to the light, their deeds would be reproved because their deeds are evil. That's why they won't come to him. But mm -hmm. if they do, their deeds will be reproved and then it'll be demonstrated whether or not their deeds are wrought in God because that light is going to expose what those deeds really are. So here, here we have, they're showing us, because while you were talking, I was thinking about, now I don't want to go down another, maybe we'll do a night um uh, uh next week no next week is sister renee the week after on willy wonka and the chocolate factory because there's a whole lot of correlations in that as well when you were talking like the golden you know ticket. key kind of thing yes the yeah. golden ticket that yeah. thing it's the soul of man amen and i was thinking how you were saying that and i was thinking about how we live in the truman show we could do one on that too oh that came Where, around the same time too as well Okay, yeah. where we're in the matrix that they have created, which is they say there's no greater slave than the one who thinks he's free. Oh, oh, oh wow. Yes. So, wow. you know, they train fleas this way, and this is the way they've been doing us forever. Mm -hmm. You put a flea in a jar. They used to train them for these certain shows. You put a flea in the jar and they say the flea, well, he can naturally, he can leap out of that jar. What yeah. you do is you put a lid on the jar. Yeah. And the flea will jump up and keep banging his head, banging his head. <laughs> so yeah. finally he gets tired of banging his head. And he only jumps just as high as the lid without hitting his head. And they yeah. say at that point, you could take the lid off the jar 
And that flea will not jump out of that jar. Right. Because he's been conditioned to only jump so high. And that's what they did to all of us. Program. You will never realize what your true destiny is and what you were meant to be without yes. the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank and you. I'm going to shut up. I'm going to let you continue, brother. No, no. You're, <laughs> uh, this is exactly what I wanted. I wanted uh, you guys to 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 make comments and, and fill this in. And that's exactly what you're doing. I appreciate you all so much. Uh, ben, did you want to comment on anything about the prison of your mind uh, uh, pertaining to this particular part? Sorry. Uh, no, I, I'm hearing everything you're saying. I'm, I'm really interested in what your analysis is of the Matrix, because, again, like when I saw it, I saw it at a very superficial level, and I thought it was just kind of ridiculous. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, mm. But but the, the fact that there's a story being told, I'm much more interested. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm just listening intently. Okay. Angel, what about you? Anything on the prison of your mind and the battlefield being in the mind? Um, yes. Like I feel like, um, in a way it's a, it's a prison for your spirit, but depending on what, but it, when you're saved, it can only be really for your mind, right? you know, because once you, you're saved, but I, I, it is, it's, it's true because, uh, even I, I never really liked the matrix, but when I quote unquote woke up, um, I, I couldn't help but just, I, you know, realize that it, it described exactly how it felt. And this was before I was saved. Right. But mm -hmm. it was still so poignant. And, you know, the way you can see the code, yes. uh, you know, that, that that's exactly what life feels like every day now, ever since then. And yes. um, it, it really is. A, I mean, it's an illusion. It's a, it, there's mm -hmm. something called the simulacrum. And that's yep. what the matrix is based I was, on. I was going to bring that You're going to go there? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. With that. <laughs> no, you go ahead. You, you, no, you no, go no. Ahead. I don't know that very much. I, I don't remember. I studied it a while ago, and I for, forgot most of it. But um, but I do think that um, when I look, when I think about somebody's life, because it's hard for me to even imagine that there are people still, like, you know, especially younger people that are so unaware of, of you know, just basic reality that they're wearing these masks and they're they're just falling for everything left and right and yes um mm. I, I just, it's it's, it's mind-boggling to me but i remember that like my life really was a complete illusion before mm -hmm. even like when i got saved but even two years before that just waking up and realizing mm. that i had not been away i had just been sleepwalking and it, 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 wow. it mm. yes because they because they don't tell you that they're mm -hmm. You know, these like like you said, I thought the deepest conspiracy would have been something about trying to make me buy things. Right. Imagine, imagine, like, and those same <laughs> right. people can't imagine that there would be any deeper conspiracy. So all these powerful people conspire mm. to get you to buy things. You don't think they would conspire to do anything else? Uh, but yeah, uh, that's it's just uh, it's it's really hard to put into words. Just like how illusory life is. Yeah. When you are, when you just take everything at face value and it's all back, it goes all back to the media. It's yeah. all about the media and what the media exposes you to. It's not mm -hmm. about like, you know, real, you know, uh, uh, tangible, uh, <laughs> uh, like everyday life. It's a, you know, what we call IRL now. Um, yeah. It's, it's about the media. It's, a, you know, exactly. television, movies, books, everything you're exposed to. That's where they, they feature the illusion. Okay, so this is perfect well, timing. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Lisa. Oh, no, I was going to say, you, you guys have seen my meme where it says media maintain everyone's delusion in America. Oh, I... Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it rotates through the uh, the clips there. That That is what I perceive the media to be. Absolutely. And however you want to take it, either the delusion in the idea of America or just keep the delusion, mm -hmm. period, for all Americans, either way. Yeah. You grow the culture in the media. <laughs> yep. Get it? You grow the culture Ooh. in the you go yeah. you grow the culture yeah. in the media uh, in the laboratory. Yeah. Absolutely. Culture. Culture. Mm. Absolutely. <laughs> Cultures. Um, so uh, uh, both of you mentioned uh, the idea of illusion. So that brings me, I was gonna mention the thing about the, the, the food. So in the movie, there's a guy that would uh, kind of like a Judas. He was going to portray uh, the the group of people that were trying to set people free. And he's having a conversation with the evil one, or at least a representation of the evil one. And mm -hmm. the evil one is making a deal with him to put him back into the matrix. Now, I right. for one don't know how anyone that is awake could 
willingly go back to sleep. I, I don't know how that's possible, but they're representing mm -hmm. the idea that this guy didn't like the desert of the real. He didn't mm -hmm. like knowing, uh, he, he liked his fake life better. Here's the point. He liked his illusion more than he liked the reality. Once mm -hmm. he knew what the reality was, he remembered uh, how good it was for him when he was under the illusion. So this is the point I want to make. So there's a scene where they're sitting at a table, the evil one and this Judas, this betrayer, and he's explaining to him why he wants to go back in. One of the things he says is uh, he's eating steak while, uh, while they're there. He's eating a piece of steak, and he says, when I look at this piece of steak, I know, and I'm paraphrasing, but I know that it's just nutritional bile. Um, they all have these things at the back of their necks and it, it's pushing nutrition in so they don't die because they're being used as a battery. Their bodies have to have nutrition. So they're being given nutrition, but in the illusion of it, they're eating regular food. That's what I had mentioned. He said, I know this is, this is bile instead of steak, but mm -hmm. to me, it's steak. Mm -hmm. He believes the illusion and wants to go back into the illusion. That's how strong his programming is. Perception is reality. Exactly. So people that are asleep, they like the illusion so much that they're unwilling. If you try to wake them up, they, uh, they, they want so badly to embrace the illusion that they're under because they can't deal with the desert of the real. Mm -hmm. It's not really a desert. It's, it's freedom, freedom in Christ. Well, it, that's why, uh, I agree, uh, Crips, 100%. And I think that's why they're so sloppy with some of their deceptions because they know they don't need to be great. They know Thank that the people you. that are mm. awake, the people who want to know the truth will know the truth. There's, And in fact, that's even a line in uh, the Truman Show where it says, there, you know, if you want, I'm paraphrasing, if you want to know, there's no stopping them. You know, to, if you want, someone <laughs> wants to know the truth, there's no stopping them. But yeah. for people that want to wake up, they don't care. They, they know it's sloppy. They don't care. But because the people eat it because they, they don't want to wake up, you know. They don't. Right. They don't want to know the truth. They don't. They, yeah. They can't handle the truth. <laughs> Satan has blinded. You know, they receive not the love of the truth. Right. Go ahead. Lisa. But you know what? That, I'm sorry. That lie, that line, you can't handle the truth. It's a, it's a two edged sword. Yeah. It's true, but it's also not true, depending on how you get it. For example, this is the truth. And after he was from the dead, he said, Touch me, handle me. For a spirit have not flesh and bone as ye see me have. Amen. So you can handle the truth, but listen, only if you can handle the truth. Mm -hmm. Right. See, God, first, there's people who can't handle the truth of who the Lord Jesus Christ is, so they reject him. And, and this is when you would say you can't handle the truth. Amen. That's a good one. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Uh, no, no, that's a good one. I was gonna say that that's how first John opens his um, epistle where he says those what, what what we heard what we seen what we touched with our own eyes mm -hmm. which we looked upon our hands have handled concerning the word of life Amen. um yes i just yeah. oh, by the way uh, everything you guys are talking about right now are is, is really leading up to something I, i'm going into too so it's really interesting so awesome um, Praise but, God. But, yeah Praise i'll God. take but take your time take your time yeah, no problem. So we're talking about illusion, and I, I'm I'm just making the point that the illusion is more attractive to those that are asleep than than reality, unfortunately. So how it ties into things going on when we look at, and this will tie back in, uh, I think, to what Angel wants to talk about as well. I don't want to go there now, but I'm just going to mention briefly. When people watch the news and they are protesting and they're thinking they're actually protesting something that really happened, mm -hmm. they're they're, they're considering themselves as, as being right, being right. And, and, and even being part of a community for whatever they're, they're fighting against. Um, they're, they're doing the right thing, but the whole thing, is, yeah, the whole thing is being, is based on an illusion, right? It's appealing to their flesh because they don't accept the righteousness of Christ. They don't submit to the righteousness of Christ. So they try to tap their own righteousness by doing these things. You know, they think they're right. Exactly. Yeah. Well, you're and on, that's you're a trap in them. itself. Yeah. Because it's it's the response they want you to give to their dialectic. Wow. Yeah, so right. this illusion is so attractive. The so the illusion is so attractive that it's more attractive to many 
than uh, than than reality and truth. Um, they like their prison. They they enjoy their prison. Um, many of them don't even know it's a prison. But even if you show them, even if you okay, uh, you you mentioned bringing up flat Earth because we're all going to be crazy. But it's just the perfect example. When I discovered, even before I fully believed it, um, I I was excited about the possibility of this being true. And I put on Facebook, big mistake. I put on Facebook, hey guys, I've discovered this thing. I I would love to talk to someone about it. Um, I'm not saying I believe it yet, but mm. there's a possibility that we don't live on a globe, that, that God oh. made the earth flat. And there's, there's verses in the Bible that, that say that. And I'm in the middle of studying it. Does anyone want to study it with me? Does anyone w without I, I, being... I'm with? sorry, Brother Cripps, I have to interrupt you. Oh, sure. Were you wearing your bulletproof vest when you did that? I was not. <laughs> oh, that was a mistake, but go ahead. <laughs> well, bulletproof vest in terms of spirituality, yes. I was protected, protected by the <laughs> spirit, absolutely. But you, you, you did exactly what I hoped that you would do. Is without without you being a prophet, you know what the result was. You absolutely know what the result was. Yes, I um, do. If it were a movie, shots I, fired. Shots fired. <laughs> it was unbelievable. The reaction was crazy. That's ridiculous. How could you believe that? What an archaic thing. They used to believe that when they were ignorant. Um, science proves that that we live on a globe on and on and on it went i i lost some friends just on asking the question wow i can't believe that you would think that i'm unfriending you wow. um, and here's here's the result of that for me when that happened their reactions to me even bringing up the idea cemented for me that it was the truth wow now, now could you elaborate on that mm-hmm because they were reacting so violently, what it said to me is there's truth in it. Otherwise, they wouldn't have reacted so violently. Right. Um, and, and so that spurred me on even more for deeper study and to use his word. Because uh, even Christians, even people that I know are Bible-believing Christians, are, are so wrapped up in the illusion that the world is portrayed to them that they believe science falsely so-called rather than believing the word of God. You know, mm. uh, when I when I wake up to the flat earth, I was resistant to it as well. But I deep down, I knew it was true. So I I, 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 I had to look at it. It's like, yeah, of course it is. And, and that's the thing is that <laughs> uh, truth is, you know, I've always, you either love truth or you hate truth, you know? You either love, and, and who is truth? Christ. I mean, yes. He's truth, truth personified. Right. But... And so that's what it comes down to. They do they Christ they truly too, truly do hate Christ and they don't want to wake yes. up. I mean, think of the case of I mean, I used to get drunk, and one thing I, I one thing I always hated doing being drunk alone. You always want to bring other mm. people you always when I was drunk, I'd always want to get other people drunk with me and so that they could share in the same uh faith that I was in, you know, and this this what these people are. They don't want they they don't want anyone to wake up from their party, so to speak, mm. their their sleepness, their their drunkenness, yeah. spiritual drunkenness. Um, mm. and that's why they ridicule you people. They don't want you saying what you think, and they don't want other people hearing what you say either, because that that'll wake them up, and, and they'll lose. Uh, their party will be over. Thank you. The party will be over. No more good steak. You'll be just in their minds. You'll just be, you'll just be eating this crappy slop in the desert of the real, and it, it's <laughs> that, that in and of itself is a lie as well. I would rather eat crappy slop out of a tin pan and be free. Be free in my body and free in my mind, then eat a fake steak. Now, that's me. Mm. That's me. But there are people that don't want that. So the programming they use have gotten people to this point where they are unwilling. It's not unable. They're unwilling to look at, the, look at this, these things, even when people that they know are fairly intelligent. I have, uh, I have a really close friend who isn't saved, but I've known him since... Uh, I was seven and he was five and I love mm -hmm. this guy very dearly. And he at least is willing to talk to me about spiritual things. But I know that uh, he, he says he believes that there's a God. He's not an atheist necessarily, but as mm -hmm. far as, you know, accepting the gift of salvation, we're not there yet. This is a long con, not a con, but it, it's the long game with him as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. But when I told him uh, about this stuff, about 
you know, discovering these truths. And for me, it wasn't just flat earth. Obviously, if you look at flat earth, then uh, in order to confirm that, you look at all the other things like NASA and the moon landing and all these other things that lead to the, to the conclusion that, yes, the world has been lying to us for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, and he said, I'm having a real issue with this because I know that you're an intelligent person. I've known you your whole life. You have never been a conspiracy theorist. You never brought up anything like this before. And I'm having trouble knowing how we're going to continue to be friends, knowing that you're an intelligent person and you're believing this ridiculousness. <laughs> and I said, you right? I'm sorry. No, no, laugh, laugh. It's funny. <laughs> and I said to him, what you just said to me should be proof to you that there is something to it. If you believe I'm an intelligent person and I'm, I have discovered this stuff and I'm telling you that it's real, you should know that I'm not trying to deceive you. You should know that there's some truth to it. Brother Cripps, that's the same reaction you get when you're the first unbeliever to get saved. It is the same. <laughs> it is the same. <laughs> They're tied okay. into each other because an unbeliever who finds truth is now a truther as it pertains to the gospel. They're yeah, believing yeah. the truth about, about the world that we live in and about spiritual things. The truth That's about right. Jesus Christ, the truth that God wanted to reconcile us back to him as sin entered the world, and he used his son to do it. He sent his son into the world, Emmanuel God with us, to save us all from our sin and to yes. re reunite it, to reconcile us to God. Yes, and, preach, brother. <laughs> and people, people, there are some people that, that want that. There are some people that want to be reconciled with God. And there's other people that don't want to be reconciled with God. They're too attached to the illusion that's being presented by the evil one. Mm -hmm. They're too attached to it. That's why I don't spend a lot of time. People who are, are constantly arguing with, 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 uh, you know, like, like you said, your friend um, who constantly arguing and, and uh, being you know, obstinate about uh, truth. You give them truth and they don't accept it. Right. It, it's a very, it's deeply spiritual. You know, it's not, it's not an intellectual thing. It's a heart matter. And, um, and then I, I, I had that, you know, I, I would constantly try to argue with you intellectually and I realized, yeah, it's not a heart issue, dummy. I'm the dummy. Um, cause it's not, a, I mean, it's not an intellectual issue. It's a heart issue. Right. And that's right. ultimately what, what, you know, the Bible took my heart, cut it, you know, ripped it out of my chest and put a big knife in it. <laughs> and, and I mean, the Bible destroyed me, but it built me back up mm -hmm. too, you know? Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and most people aren't willing to that do that. And it was painful. I'll be honest. It was painful. It is um, painful. yeah, it, it is the most painful thing to try to wake someone up with the gospel and they refuse to look at it. It's, it's not as equally painful about flat earth and about other truths, but it's still, uh, Lisa or sister Lisa was correct that it's the similar reaction. When, when you wake up to Christ, when you become saved, and I've heard the story from so many people. You lose friends. Talk about uh, losing friends right away. And some of them you choose to lose because you don't want to live in the same lifestyle and things mm -hmm. like that. But people that you really love and care for when you become saved, those are the people that you that you don't want to lose friendship with, like the friend that I mentioned. I, I honestly care about him, and I, and I believe I have a, a, a ministry with him to remain friends with him. And he, he's a decent person, you know, so he's not mm -hmm. tempting me to go, you know, to the, 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 the strip you know, club, the, the or strip something club, like that. Or, yeah, <laughs> right? None of that. None of that's an issue. So, right. Um, it, it doesn't affect. It doesn't affect my my lifestyle and and uh, the the way that I live. But, um, that that was a slap in the face to me when I tried to wake people up with truth, and it is similar to trying to wake people up to salvation, because they are tied into each other. When I discovered this. It reignited my relationship with God in a way that I can't even describe. When I realized that not only is the Bible true, it's more true than I originally thought it was. And that I, there were things that I couldn't reconcile in Scripture, but I did believe it over science. But I never looked at it because I, I didn't know that it was even an option for it to be fine. I didn't, I didn't even know that was a thing. Mm -hmm. But when I discovered it, I realized when you discover that the world is lying to you, then what that means, the only, the only place to go intellectually is that the Bible is, is, is more true than anything else that we have. Mm. It, it is more true than anything else that we have. 
it is completely and totally true. And then verses that I used to think were kind of uh, analogies or or uh, uh, a play on uh, on words or or, or I, I'm not thinking of the right word. Anyone help me out with that? Allegorical versus literal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When I discovered that, I had to go back and read the whole thing again. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I, I didn't have a choice. I had to. Perspective I, is everything. And that's exactly what I had to do. And now we're we're continuing to read it over and over again. Uh, and I had read it before, but I didn't read it with the same, honestly, I, I didn't read it with the same vigor that I had when I found out that not only is it true, but a lot of it's literal rather than allegorical. That's right. That's what truth can do for people. When people say, oh, well, flat earth, you know, uh, uh, why, what's the, what, what difference does it make? The difference it makes is if you, if, if you, it's for you. If the battle is in the mind, this is the point I want to make. If the battle is in the mind and your mind is programmed to believe what the world tells you, and that programming is broken by God's word, and you realize that everything in his word not only is true, but it's there as a, as a way to help you survive in captivity, yes. to help you be free, help you not be connected to the matrix, to help you be connected directly to the Holy Spirit and the things of God. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's the escape manual. It's the escape manual that teaches you how to escape the matrix. <laughs> Thank you. That's ultimately, we, we can stop talking about it. That's ultimately the point I wanted to make. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can't stop talking about it because I was wondering if you were going to make one correlation that I noticed the last time I watched the matrix number two. And I think I brought this up in a previous broadcast briefly, how Neo, the main character in in uh, the Matrix One, when he starts to come into the knowledge of himself, yeah, he uh, and who he is and the power that should be within him, mm -hmm. he has his black trench coat, a black t-shirt, and black slacks, yeah, with his black boots and his black snipe glasses, right? Yep. In the second one, it's a different black outfit. You mentioned that, and yeah. and it was bugging me because I couldn't figure out why that outfit looked familiar to me so familiar and then i realized i was like yeah again this is like a steel brother ben's line stupid you were in a catholic school that's what the priests wear yeah so yeah. i i went and looked up vestments black vestments for priests it's mm -hmm. almost identical yeah Absolutely. It blew me away because I think they're grooming people for something correlating to that. And it'll be in their subconscious and they won't even understand why they'll have an affinity for somebody who's wearing that black outfit. But oh, they I, will. Yeah, I completely it's ecumenical. I completely believe that uh, I'm not saying that the uh, Catholic Church is 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 mystery Babylon. Please, I'm not saying that. But they are involved mm -hmm. in the false the being the false prophet part. I don't know who the Antichrist is going to step forward right. from, you know, which faction of right, exactly. Satan's kingdom. But right. I think they are programming us or the public yeah. with these this imagery for a purpose. It's, look, it's not there by accident. Yeah. they. Ch I don't think with these movies, particularly stuff like that, I don't think anything in that movie was an accident. I think it's all correlated. Yes. It's all programmed. It all yep. has a message. They know exactly what it means. We're the ones trying to figure it out. Absolutely. So Ben made my point for me, and I appreciate appreciate that very much. And and I appreciate the time you've allowed me to talk about this. Um, it is, uh, I think, about time for our break. So I'll just make one last statement based on what Ben said. Mm -hmm. The Bible is the only truth in this world. There may be yes. other things, other books, other movies, other, other things that have truth in them. But the Bible is the only source of all truth. And people can say it's been messed with and, you know, they left books out. I agree. They have left books out, but God has made them available for those that want to read them and look at them. They are still available. They're not kept mm -hmm. from. They're available. Mm -hmm. But people can get saved by just the books that were included in his word. They are true. Right. Yes. These are, as uh, I'm paraphrasing what Ben said, but it was very profound. It is the manual. It is the survival manual. That's kind of what I mentioned. What did you say, Ben? It's the escape? Yeah, the escape manual. It is the escape ma manual for this matrix that I believe that we are all born into. Mm. It is. It, it, is it tells you. Yeah. 
It, it is. It tells you the circumstances that you're in and how to get out of it. <laughs> Amen. And Amen. how we get out of it is accepting God's free gift, having a relationship with God, praying with him, meeting other believers that believe the same thing, living for him. That's part of it, but it doesn't make you saved. But it, but it's, it should be the natural progression. It should be the reasonable service that happens to live the way that, that God wants you to live. And to do what it is that God put you in this matrix for. Uh, a lot of people would listen to all this and say, well, what's the point of being born into a prison? Well, the point of being born into a prison, uh, Lisa mentioned it, is he who saves souls is wise. That's the purpose. Our purpose is, is to, to wake people up. Now, the Holy Spirit's the only one that can truly open someone's eyes. But we're his hands and feet. We're his emissaries. We're his ambassadors here in this prison. So look at it literally. If you're in the prison with someone else and you believe and he doesn't and all you have is time and you're hmm. trapped in this prison, what would you do? Hmm. I think that you would you would try to to show him, show him or her the truth of his word. That's what you would do. And I'm guilty of okay. not doing it. I'm not I'm not okay. trying to tell other people something that 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 I'm perfect at. I'm I'm way better than I was doing these broadcasts is Mm -hmm. is part of doing that, is part of trying to show people the gospel and wake people up in some way. Amen. And either the Holy Spirit blesses it or, or he doesn't, but I'm going to try. I feel I have a mandate to do so. Amen. So that's all we can do. We can, we can read his word, rely on his word, have a relationship with him, have a re relationship or community with other believers as we're all in captivity. As we're all in this sea, be not of the world. You know, he doesn't want us to fall in love with the, with the things of this world. Yes. And, and we don't have to. We know that our world is coming. God's world, Jesus' world is coming, and we're part of it. So we can deny the things of this world and not, not search, out, search, search out treasures that moth and rust uh, break apart and thieves break through and steal. Because what we have is coming. So even yeah. though that we're in this 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 prison of sorts, we can still have a ministry. We still still can have a life. We don't have to be part of eating the fake stick. We don't. Amen. That's right. That's all. That's all. I can go on and on about it. But if if if, you. if you are awake and you are a believer and you haven't seen the Matrix, I I would definitely suggest it. It's not too. Uh, if I remember correctly, it's been a long time since I've seen it, but it's not too gory. And the, the first one, there's not, mm -hmm. uh, I don't remember there being any sex scenes or whatever, but if you, if you're concerned about stuff like that, it's, it's fairly benign as it, as it yeah. pertains to that. But there are so many things that are truth in plain sight that a believer can see because the Holy Spirit has your mind open where, where it pertains mm -hmm. to stuff. And if you saw it back then, but you're awake in other ways, in other words, seeing the, the more truth than a lot of uh, people that are alive to salvation, but asleep to the world, the the truth of the world. I definitely strongly suggest you go and watch it again. Ben, that's for you as well. Uh, yeah, I'm going to. I'm going to. Uh, because you'll see so much more because you weren't awake when you saw it the first time. You'll see so much more now, bro. I, I promise you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, like I said, I just saw bad acting and uh, a very. F <laughs> <laughs> I think Keanu Reeves is like one of the worst actors ever, but uh, maybe that's by design. But um, I do want to watch it again. I for that reason alone, because there's messages in there, and it, even if even if it's uh, there, it's done by an evil source, it gives me perspective sometimes, <laughs> or uh, a, a per yeah, a perspective that I didn't otherwise have. It it, it riches just uh, yeah, it just, it just bolsters my faith and. Um, it gives me new perspective on, on the enemy's tactics and things like that. Cause they love to reveal their, yeah. Well, this is, a, you brought up an interesting point. And this is the last thing I'll say, but it doesn't it, as much tie into the matrix, but it, it, okay. So people may not agree with me about this, mm -hmm. but um, the things of this world, the movies and, and things like that. Uh, I've said this before. Movies are truth in plain sight and the media is a, is a complete lie. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're a believer I'm not saying go out and watch, watch the raunchiest movies that you can possibly see, but I do wow. believe that God's message is in everything. They mean it for evil, but God means it for good. You can watch it like the Matrix, and you can find truths that God has has nestled in there 
for those people that believe in him. It, it's true about Blade Runner. It's true about a lot of different movies that I've seen. Um, even the Marvel, Marvel movies. God means it for evil to program people to be ready to battle against Christ. But God means it for something else. And again, I... Yeah, you meant Satan. You said God, but you meant yeah, Satan means it for evil. I did. I did. Thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. The God of this world. How about that? The God of this right. world means, right. it, means it for evil. But uh, the God of the Bible, our God, our Father, means it for something good. Um, I, I believe that because I've seen it in my life. Uh, there are a lot of people that just don't, you know, they, they call everything from, from Hollywood garbage. And in a way, they're right. Um, mm -hmm. But for me to know kind of what's going on and what they're pumping out, that actually helps me to be able to minister uh, to people that are in the world and, and be aware of these things when we talk, when, when they bring up, have you seen such and such? Have you seen this? The other thing is, and I'm just being completely honest, I, I've loved movies since I was a kid. Um, I'd even thought about being an actor. I have actually have a theater uh, performance degree, and mm. I, I I love stage stuff. I've I'm, I've written plays that actually got produced and things like that. So acting, directing, and and uh, uh, writing are talents that God has given me, and uh, I definitely have used them uh, for His kingdom. And I believe that in heaven, in some way, that's going to be my job. That's. <laughs> it, mm. I could be wrong. I, I don't know if there are plays or movies. Maybe not. Have any idea, but um, I believe he gifted me in that way with with uh, mm. certain things. Uh, uh, so I'm going to try to use them as much as I can. Uh, so I appreciate the time you guys uh, gave me. Gave me a lot of time to talk about this. I didn't mind going first, and um, I know we're going to move on to other subjects. Uh, I guess we're going to take a break, Lisa. I don't want to. Yes, we're going to take a brief uh, intermission in just a couple of minutes to give everybody a chance to, on the panel to stretch their legs, grab some water to keep those silver pipes nice and uh, moist <laughs> for nice. the next couple of hours. Okay. Uh, uh, but yes, thank you, Brother Cripps, for that intriguing discussion. I can tell you spent a lot of time thinking about that, Brother, and contemplating that because while you were speaking when you guys were talking about how the Bible is our instruction manual, uh, manual I, I'm sure you heard before that the B-I-B-L-E represents basic instructions before leaving the earth, right? Yeah. <laughs> you guys yeah. have heard that before. I do. Yeah. And, I have, uh, but... Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah it's, it's so uh, true. I told you the, the longer we live, or I should say even for me, just in my personal experience, the longer I live, the more the Bible reads like headline news. Wow. It's amazing. Yep. Yes. Yeah, Jason, brother, I thought you... Uh, Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say, Jason, that was a great breakdown of the movie. I, uh, and it's very interesting. Got me interested to watch it again. And I think it, it might be a good idea to have a, a weekly movie breakdown. You know, <laughs> if you guys mm. seen so many of them. Um, oh my just gosh! If you want me to do that, then I, <laughs> I'd be all for it. I'd be all for it. I would. It would that. be fun. I have yeah. no problem with that. We'll call it Jason's movie corner. <laughs> oh my gosh! You don't know yeah. that that delights my heart. Uh, uh, in yeah. fact, people have mentioned to me that I should be a movie reviewer. You know, from from the aspect of uh, what what uh, godly things or messages I see in the movies. The, the I know exactly what you mean, Jason. I can mm -hmm. see it's crazy, like how I can see God's truth, like in every i don't care what i watch now i don't watch that much uh like i in fact i stopped watching movies to it feels weird to me now like to get immersed in any type of fiction even for a couple hours it feels very strange and disorienting so it's only been like there's only like literally on one hand i can count the amount of things i've actually sat and watched in years um uh like years and years but uh, when I do, it's a, and sometimes I'll just glimpse things too, you know, like something my kids are watching or whatever. And I could see just, I, I see God's truth, you know, hidden in these um, scripts and in the, and, you know, in the plot of these movies. And I, and, I, and I think, I used to think it was all like, it had to be all like Satan, like mocking, like just showing us the truth and, and, and you know, basically it's something he could accuse the world of because he would put it in the, you know, put the truth in the, these films. Like, you know, like I mentioned this vampire show and watching the strain, like it's literally all about supplanting God. It's all about the, the devil's desire to supplant God, even right down to like the micro plot of like the, the lead hero, um, his son gets kidnapped by the man, the master vampire and the master uh, basically uh, raises his son 
to like love him instead of his dad, even though he's like this vile monster and rebel mm-hmm. against his dad. And it's yes. all a metaphor about the Antichrist and about Jesus yes. and about how we all, because because his dad is the hero. Yes. His dad actually is the one guy that he's willing to put it all on the line to, to stop this vampire outbreak, this plague. And the mm-hmm. son is so is so bitter and um and angry. The the master he's like this. Uh, he's he's like a ghoulish monster. He's not like some sexy vampire. And he says it's the destiny of every son to rebel against his father, mm-hmm. right? And 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 I see God's truth in this this like the way that um you know it shows this this uh repeated pattern over and over again almost every like hero's journey type thing it's all antichrist in nature and uh, and they put but it's also if you look at it like in the story you can see it as antichrist or you can see it as um a metaphor for jesus so it's you know what i mean like like a lot of times when you see these hero's journeys or these fictional characters that represent the hero right and they have a hero's journey it's like on the one hand i can't ever decide whether it's harmful or whether it's actually good to help lost people eventually one day understand mm-hmm. what jesus did you know what i mean because they're 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 not you know uh like they should be able to understand you know no he was the hero he was the champion like all those mm-hmm. hero movies you watch like anakin skywalker luke skywalker all that stuff like now understand that, no, that was jesus and they ripped <laughs> they ripped that off from jesus you know he's the one and there's always something about the father you see what i'm saying and well yeah I, it, it, virgin so birth too. yeah there's virgin birth yeah. too and, and i think the reason for that is is that when i started becoming a believer like all thoughts would enter my mind and so satan knows this is going to happen uh is that you know, oh, you, you read the Bible stories. You think, oh, that's such a, a movie cliche, or you know, and and well, yep. uh, dummy, what came first? You know, um, and so I think he exactly. tries to make it familiar and sound uh, like derivative. A, yeah, it's associated with mm. fiction. You know, well, and that's what Young, Carl Young, oh, the collective unconscious archetypes. So that's how I used to explain these things away at first when I would see, you know, any type of like truth about the Bible. I would say, well, no, it's just because it's archetype. It's archetypal uh, archetypal uh, images or archetypal um, 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 figures that we that that repeat over and over again throughout human like literature and film it, it's not it's not it doesn't prove anything it's just that you know the bible has a bunch of archetypal figures too but it's it's the collective unconscious not spiritual truth not spiritual reality but it's the collective unconscious that's how that's how um satan does everything you're right i yeah i totally agree it's 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 basically inoculating you Yes. Well, guys, I just want to make some brief remarks about some things I go, I see going on in the chat. And I really do yeah, like to you. let people just talk. I don't think I have a moderator tonight other than Ben, which he's wearing enough hats as it is. But um, my apologies to other people in the chat. Uh, I'm seeing some things I don't like. And I just want to make a comment. I'm not going to call anybody out. We are about the free expression of ideas as long as someone is not uh, coming in here, stirring up trouble, attacking either the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ or things along that nature. We won't tolerate. We'll we'll ask you to either refrain from stuff like that. Everybody is welcome, but we don't want confusion and people stirring up strife. And I don't want to see somebody attacking somebody because they don't believe in the flat earth. Now, you can share with them information. Mm -hmm. which would be scriptures that say, well, sister or brother, take a look at this. Here are some scriptures if you want to look at them and see to consider that the earth might be flat. But you you should not be attacking someone because they don't believe in the flat earth, because they may not have enough information to have made a decision one way or the other about it. But even if they saw all the information and decided they don't believe any of it, that's their God-given right. And we're not going to do that to one another. It is not a salvific issue. Right. Okay? Everyone who is here, if they're a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, they're welcome. And if they're not peaceable toward us, Mm -hmm. they are welcome. Yes. This is not about infighting. This is not about hatred. This is not about going back and forth, trying to prove you the best keyboard commando. 
That's right. This is about being kind to one another, loving one another. And tonight we're just having a discussion, people. The, the, the format of this broadcast are believers in the Lord Jesus Christ who are having a conversation like over a cup of coffee at a get together mm -hmm. and you to listen in. And at times we'll come to the chat. If you make really good points and you point things out that we think, oh, that's wonderful. Let me share that. Or we think is, is important and relevant to our discussion. We're, we'll stop and acknowledge that. But bickering and infighting and attacking one another is going to be tolerated. Not at all. Thank you. And so to the sister or brother that felt attacked, you have my humble and sincere apologies because that's about. Right. We're not going to do that here. There's enough of that mess on YouTube. We ought to be uh, learned enough in Christ and kind enough because one of our first callings is to love one another. Mm -hmm. to be considerate toward other people's opinions, even if we think they're wrong. Yeah. Hopefully you don't go around taking a wrench and beating your family member upside the head mm -hmm. when you don't agree with something they say. You have to be kind. You have to respond. You try to be persuas persuasive with your arguments, but you don't attack them, not if you love them. Mm -hmm. So please don't do that here because that's not what spirit we're about. We don't want that stuff here. I love all and of you. All that of doesn't your win anybody process. over to flat earth. I mean, that was the biggest reason right. I refused it for the law. Of data. So I didn't want those annoying uh attack dog flat earthers who, who who you know were so boastful and so condescending i never wanted them to be right I, to be right and they I are and i i agree <laughs> yeah i'm angel, so mad that they're right <laughs> angel <laughs> yeah i hated that so much it irritated yes. me, me there's no reason to call people names and stuff because because they don't they don't see it people forget okay. that they once didn't see it either that's exactly. the that's the problem yeah, they, amen. they don't remember when they, you know, it'd be like someone is used to be an unbeliever and they become a believer as them when they didn't believe. I mean, it's just ridiculous. You, yeah. Or, or you become a believer and then you're criticizing unbelievers because they, they have. Right. right. And, and, and people will dig their heels in because mm -hmm. of, of, of how a lot of people behave. I mean, you start boastfully lording over like something that, you know, uh, uh, you, you you're claiming you've been you're, you're smart enough to see what somebody else is i mean that doesn't help that is a lot of people just you know are not going to want to be wrong and that's one of the reasons mm -hmm. that they don't look at it in the first place but then if you if you make it like huge battle of, of, of you know a pissing match basically i mean it's not gonna it's not gonna help anything the only thing you could do is is try to figure out what they're you know for trying to figure out what what you think in general people are are missing about it or, or where that person's getting hung up and, and in a mm -hmm. compassionate and patient way uh, address it or just leave them alone mm -hmm. just yes. stop it's not the gospel it, yeah. it's not no. the gospel and it's not gonna it's <laughs> you know i mean if you're not that dogged over the gospel and somebody not mm -hmm. believing it like i mean i'm sure you probably don't usually attack somebody for not believing the gospel but if you know if they just don't believe it um, mm -hmm. But if you're not that passionate about that, then why get so passionate about the flat earth? Like it, it's going to be used. They will use it one day. They will reveal it one day. It will be revealed mm -hmm. and used to win the trust of the world one day. I, I guarantee mm -hmm. it. I, it's, it's a very convenient card Satan put up his sleeve because would, whoever uh, does prove it to be true will get the trust of the whole world. I, I would. I would say the same. I would say the same thing about someone that is struggling with the flat earth idea that I would say to someone that's an unbeliever, uh, just ask God. Yeah. Just, just ask him it, it, for an unbeliever. I even say this, if you don't believe there's a God, just ask him to, sh to show him to reveal himself to you. Oh, and I would, I would say the same thing to someone that is struggling with the idea of flat earth. Just mm -hmm. ask God, just ask him if, if you're a believer, you believe. And I know that you, that, that many are, in in the chat so just take it to him and say is this something that you want me to look at is this real and he will answer and he you may not he may not want you maybe he's using you for something else and he doesn't even want you to go there maybe it would angel uh, mm -hmm. yeah yes. that is a great point yes. but the only because way it's know. not it's not a salvific issue. It right. may not be what your ministry is going to end up being. You don't have anything to do with that or have necessity of knowing about it. So, yeah, right. it's a side issue. It's just something to muse about. It's not something to attack people over. Right. Yeah. Amen. Exactly.
just take it to God. That's all I ask. Take it to God and ask him. And he'll he'll answer you either way. Amen. Yeah, he literally did me. That's exactly. Yeah. I, I didn't have to go reconsider all the flat Earth videos. I had, I had uh, thumbs down or anything when I when I realized I just got this feeling in my spirit one day, uh, three months after I was saved. I just got this little like, uh oh, because I had already realized I had gone through all these other things that I had to to realize I had been wrong about the ramifications yeah. of the Bible being true. Everything I was wrong literally my entire life. Uh, and uh, outspokenly wrong. <laughs> I was an I was evangelistic about my wrongness. I would try to persuade everybody to my to, mm -hmm. to, to agree with me about everything. And I just realized, mm -hmm. oh no, oh no! What if the flat earthers are right? Uh, and I was like, God, God, was I wrong about that too? Look, it doesn't. And happen. he told me yes, but I was not in arrogance. I didn't why I didn't have any dog in the fight at that point. I just want to know the truth, you know. And that's how I got the answer. It doesn't feel good to to find out that you were wrong about something. That's right. the, it's in our makeup to, to <laughs> feel that it's 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 in our yeah. flesh actually. The the spirit that's been quickened has no reason to be right or wrong except it's exactly it's of the gospel. Well, mm -hmm. I'm, interestingly, I, I in a weird way, I, I might be unique in this regard, but. I like it when I'm wrong because it tells me it, it just makes it more God yes, truer. That you're being so honest. That's being humble. That's yeah. being humble and yep. having humility, which God gives a lot of us, especially when it happens to us and we realize once we realize we were wrong about something, we take a different view about uh, topics that come up with, that are uh, argumentative. Yeah. So yeah. I, I always liked it when I was wrong because again, it just made God truer. <laughs> and then number two, uh, when I read the Bible, I loved reading condemning condemning passages that so that it would rule out any possibility that anyone would ever have of of salvation uh that there was any merit whatsoever <laughs> in anyone i loved it when mm -hmm. god would all those first would say you did this you mm -hmm. did this you did this and then he would list all None these sins it. yeah he would Sorry. list all these sins he would list all these sins and then he would just kind of cap it off like and sinners or everyone unclean so he basically means every mm -hmm. you know no merit whatsoever mm -hmm. uh and even yeah. if you're a coward you know it says the cowards will have the lake of the fire. Their place of the lake of fire. Well, I think we all can. Uh, there's not a single person that hasn't had cowardice. Such, um, or such lie. were some of you. Such right. were some right. of you. Such were some of you. Yeah, exactly. Oh yeah, right, right, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, well, and it since you've been saved, you've never been a coward ever since, ever again. Yeah, so when he says such, such were some of you, he's basically referring that in God's sight that such were some of you. The yeah, old man, exactly. yeah, it's not doesn't mean that you you're not going to continue to do those things uh, deliberately right. or accidentally or you know out of weakness or whatever. Yeah. Also, you just don't yeah. love God enough, Ben. I love God enough to actually <laughs> stop sinning. <laughs> right. Right. Ben, you just want to wallow. You just yeah. want to wallow in your sin. Right. Yeah. Yep. You, you just want to sit on the the. Uh, the heap and cut yourself with uh, <laughs> shards of uh, pottery. Well, on that note, guys, I think this is a good spot for us to take our break. We're going to have a just about a roughly five, a little over five minute intermission so that the, the panel can wet their whistle, stress their legs, and everybody uh, go over their thoughts for the next segment. And Sister Angel, would you like to tell us, uh, sweetie, what your topic is going to be to encourage uh, um everybody to come back and yeah, I guess I'm just, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit more about, I guess, the upheaval going on right now and, okay. uh, and remind the uh, everybody the, the proper perspective and, yeah, what, what, what the Bible mm -hmm. says about these okay. issues and these, the race and whatever it is. I want, I want, um, I just want to, you know, clarify and give people perspective because I think a lot of people can get caught up in their flesh at times mm -hmm. like this. And, um, I, I just think it'd be important to have a, have a reminder that, not, uh, does not give us room to to glory in our flesh, no matter what, uh, no matter, for any reason, race or otherwise. <sighs> okay, good. That's where we're going to pick it up on the other side of the broadcast. So, beloved, I encourage you to come back uh, so we can begin with Sister Angel and talking about this writing is in uh, things that people perceive to be the truth and why they yeah. might not actually be what you perceive right mm.
Praise the Lord, beloved of the Most High God, in the mighty name of King Jesus. Uh, I hope you enjoyed my little jazz selection for the intermission. I found it quite relaxing, and that's why I chose it. I want to give a shout out to Brother Fitz Houston, who allowed the use of his music very graciously. Thank you so much, Brother Fitz. If you guys enjoyed his uh, music or you want to hear more of his music, please check out Brother Fitz. That's F-I-T-Z Houston's channel. Uh, he has some wonderful material. He has some exercise material, get you pumped up. He is a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. He has these um, like morning sermons that he does to just encourage everybody and it's to music and he builds you up in your most holy faith. And then he also does it at sunset. It's, it's wonderful. So uh, go check out Brother Fitz Houston's channel. Now, Sister Angel, are you sure <laughs> mm -hmm. you want to take us into what would seemingly be not I don't think for this panel, um, but for a number of people out there in listening land, it may be a difficult uh, topic to address. Mm. You sure you want to go down well, this road? Sister? I mean, I just, I, I, cause it really, at the end of the day, no matter what anybody, um, like, look, I, I couldn't even watch the video of this arrest and murder. If that's really what, if everything is above board and everything is as they're telling us and nobody's mm. an actor, or you know, like <laughs> a crisis or otherwise, um, then I would I couldn't even watch it because it would upset me so much, and I knew it would upset me, um, and I know that they want it to upset me. Um, I would <laughs> I would have been rioting, all right, if it had been ten years ago. I was like this before it was the cool thing to do. All right, I was one of those mm -hmm. little white SJW kids uh, from like kindergarten. I'm really bad. <laughs> like you have no idea. I, I didn't have a big, uh, like I, I, I tried, I tried to find the archetypal racist white person to rage against, but I could never find mm. one that really fit the bill who really espoused the, 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 the hatred that, I, that, you know, I, I was looking for, I was looking for it around every corner. Uh, I, I would fantasize at night. Uh, when I couldn't get to sleep sometimes, I'd fantasize about going back in time with a machine gun to shoot all the slave owners. I'm not kidding. Like, that was my happy place as a child. Oh, wow. I, it's crazy, okay? And I, 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 nobody at the time was as passionate uh, about these things. Mm. Like, it wasn't, like I said, the cool thing to do. Um, even even black kids that I was friends with were, like, not really that into it. Like, they were just thought it was weird or funny. Like, they they nobody, <laughs> nobody had the eye or I had. Um, and so... I could have easily been manipulated in this way. And it is very hmm. sad, the story that we're being told. It's absolutely, it would be absolutely inexcusable. Um, I find it very suspicious. There's a lot of things that really don't add up <laughs> with the story. It's it's very, um, even just the, the photos that I've seen, because I've seen still photos, it's very odd. It just doesn't look, I don't know. I mean, it, like, really? Like, the guy's just, he's just posing there with his hands in his pockets with his, his, his knee on this man's neck. But it's, I, I've heard hmm. what happens in the video, and it's absolutely just heart-wrenching, and I don't want to even watch it. Because if it is real, I don't want to see that. Um, because it does yeah. anger me very much. And I mm -hmm. have no love for cops, honestly, especially since they've been enforcing this lockdown tyranny in the big cities, mm. at least. Uh, I, you know, I think that they've... <laughs> They've run out of sympathy of, when it comes to like probably the majority of the public. That's the thing that's sad is that I haven't seen really anybody. Um, I'm sure there's some people, but anybody defending the actions of this this uh, alleged police officer, even though his neighbors had no idea he was a cop and thought he was a real estate agent. But um, <laughs> uh, nobody, no, I don't see anybody that disagrees with the outrage. Um, but the thing is, is you know we have to wonder. If, if this is the establishment, you know, that's doing this, the white establishment, whatever you want to call it. I mean, it's really Satan's establishment. <laughs> um, why would they be showing us? I mean, repeatedly showing us this video. And like I said, telling on themselves, unless they intentionally want to stoke uh, the anger and the outrage. Right. But the thing that I see more than anything is that um, right now people are angry uh, and they don't really know what they're angry about. They've just been locked in their houses. I mean, a lot of places is a lot worse than, than where I am, um, where people really weren't allowed to go outside uh, without having to worry at least about being hassled. 
um, you know, unless they had a necessary, like a real reason to do it. I mean, some people really were, uh, you know, sent to their rooms um, uh, and had to stay there. People with basically just grounded the whole American population and the more uh, gullible among us actually you know bought into that and they fell in line and they 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 were told and they've got their little masks on and you notice a lot of these protesters have their little masks on and um (laughs) isn't that interesting Mm -hmm. yeah right Uh, and and, oh sorry just one one thing it's almost as if they did the whole virus thing to to make it possible for them to be able to wear masks Right. Well, and also it's like we did the virus thing and now i wonder is this the transition is this how they they uh, they they transition us out of the virus thing. Now they're doing a new thing, but they had to do something big oh, yeah. to where we forget. Oh yeah, you know, <laughs> not that we would. The people that they knew would see through it. That's one thing. But they needed to give the um, the idiots a reason to forget, an excuse to forget. And so they had to get. And one of the best ways would be to stoke outrage. You know, yes. and um, you know, I, and I think as that, you're what go on. I was going to say, as you're saying, that the agent provocateurs that are the ones, a lot of them that are going out stirring up yep. trouble. I mean, my brother was telling me he saw a clip where this gentleman, I'm going to be nice, uh, was taking a hammer and mm-hmm. busting open the window of AutoZone. Methodically. Oh. Methodically. Yeah. And he was yep. saying, uh, he said, if I was there, he said, first of all, I wouldn't have been there because all that stuff, they either go scoop you up, put you in jail, or you end up dead. And it just ain't the place to be is out there with that mess. He said, but uh, because there are going to be people going out there stirring up trouble in the midst of it, and he said, that man should have been arrested by the crowd. They should have stopped him if they're out there peaceably. Yeah. There were but- some guys, some kids like buzzing around him. Like, hey, what are you doing? What are you doing? So there were right. some kids there doing that, but they didn't stop him. Well, you know, you walking up, you better come as a group and be ready to maybe get smacked because he did have a hammer and he's got on a mask. So if he's willing to bust out windows, you don't know if he's willing to yep. turn on you and, and, and assault you. So, you know, you, right. that's why you run the risk when you're in situations like that. Uh, even though you may not be out there to do evil, there are other people that are out there to do evil. And if they are agent provocateurs, as my mama used to say back in the day, bullets don't know no names. So it's just not a good idea to be out there. But go ahead, sister. sister So that and and see that I think that, um, you know, it's I'm kind of worried about the situation because I do think it's a powder keg because a lot of people now don't have jobs. So they have the time to go out there and protest. They don't have anything to lose. They're uh, they're, they're, what? What'd you say? They're frustrated. Sorry, I just want to interject. Frustrated, yeah, pent up. They they sh- they're they're angry, um, but they're not really sure what they really need to be angry about because a lot of them don't haven't given themselves permission to question uh, the the illusion that they're living under. So so they believe that the whole you know that the, the pandemic is real and all that stuff. But somewhere yeah. deep mm. down, they know that they're being done dirty, and they don't know mm. who to take it out on. But this was the perfect, um, the perfect excuse, right? And they gave us right. something where there's no ambiguity with this. If if uh, if that if none of those people were actors in that video, and you know, the, it, just what was shown in the video, there's no ambiguity. Absolute evil, you know, w- w- is responsible for for kneeling on a man's neck. I mean, they didn't just kneel mm-hmm. on his neck. They, they had him in the car. They took him back out of the car to kneel on his neck. And it was, you know, but see, that's, it's, it's just such that's a weird ridiculous. story. That's the part. Right. That, ridiculous. I don't even know uh, any police officers that I do know. And I know yeah. a couple nope. that are in my family. They would tell you that is not protocol nope. ever. Right. They would not do that. Nobody go, go does ahead. that. Yeah. Kneel right. on the, it was totally bizarre. And then, um, you know, and so I, I, I'm very skeptical about the whole thing to begin with. But the point is, there's a lot of people that, are, you know, are going to take it at face value. And they have, a, you know, a right to be very upset about it. But let's ask ourselves, what are we really going out there tearing uh, cities apart for? Or, or even just yelling and screaming. I mean, I saw the video today with, on Crowdsource the Truth. You know, all these, yeah, it was weird. Um, so it, it was like, uh, like, like easily a 50-50 mix of, of black and white, uh, mostly, like I said, college age people marching down mm. this street, but they have cops walking alongside of them, literally hurting them down the road. And what was weird was, you know, at first it, it looked like a choreograph. Like I was in the, um, 
Macy's Day Parade twice with America Sings. And it looked like a parade. And you, you don't start your, you know, your act until you hit a certain mark in the parade. Right. And that was right. when, like, all the chant, you didn't hear them chanting as they were approaching Jason Goodman with his camera. It was, and even the, the chanting didn't start until they hit a certain point. And then suddenly there's the chanting. And everybody's, you know, in like this line with cops on either side of them like like a line of cops literally herding them like sheep down this mm -hmm. road and they're yelling you know uh, uh well one guy was just screaming at you know suck my mm, over and over at the cops and uh just like a chant mm -hmm. like that was his chant real 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 mature right there but um mm -hmm. then they uh uh were just basically all these chants about cops being pigs and all that stuff um, like, and no good cops, no good cops, as the cops are hurting them down the road. And I just can't believe that that in and of itself, like, they, they don't see what might be wrong with that picture. <laughs> like, right, well, okay, right. they're, they're also hurting you right now. And you're just, mm. you're, you guys are falling in line. You're walking where they direct you. Right. Um, and so, <laughs> um, but, yes. um, like, you know, it's interesting to watch uh, a live video of, of it, um, happening i don't know what it's turned into now because this was like at the very beginning of this weird choreographed march protest type thing i don't know how they get these things started because i remember what i totally mm. i mean i i took the bite the bait with michael brown that was the last time i fell for something like that but i i was trying to start like a protest in my little city uh just, I, i'd never done that before but <laughs> you know and i it's so funny i'll never forget black guy i worked with um he i was like okay sir surely you'll go stand with a sign on the street corner <laughs> with me right he's like what no he's like he, and I, I won't repeat what he said but basically he said uh uh well i'm not gonna say yeah, there's no way to uh class it up but he basically said um mm. uh screw them blanks like he wasn't worried he wasn't identifying with the whole situation he told me i've been arrested many times and every time it was because i was being an uh, a jerk and he's not the word he used he goes and they were always really nice to me the cops he's like i even had uh <laughs> he goes i've had a cops who arrested me repeatedly the same cops um because he was a, uh he was the dishwasher at the restaurant i worked at but he was also a, a, you know a drug dealer um and he <laughs> he was uh uh telling me like how how he appreciated the police because he actually had lots of cops there uh in town in columbus indiana that would look out for him and try not to like they never wanted to give him the worst rap he could get you know judges that would because mm -hmm. you know what he told me he said because i was never he he said it was because he 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 was respectful and he wasn't a jerk when he got arrested he didn't you know uh but and i don't think it's that way with every cop because like plenty of cops have power tripped even on me so but my point is is that he wasn't just um oh well okay so i'm black so i better be angry and outraged and yeah let's go protest he was like mm. no I, i'm an individual and i just i don't really identify with this whole thing and it doesn't resonate with me and i'm you know i don't i don't feel any need to go protest i don't feel outraged and um that's reflects the majority of people i've met in real life so i don't know where all of these other people come from that are willing to go mm -hmm. march in a herd uh with mm -hmm. people they don't know it's like what are you guys actually fighting for because a lot of them i bet don't even know what they believe in you know what do you stand for you only know what you stand against but what are you standing for mm -hmm. and that's what the point of the, with this country they're trying to tear us apart because they know we don't actually know what we stand for anymore we don't mm. actually have a united uh, like we're, we're there, there's not a common there we don't have common values just period just between different uh, uh people like there because the and the deception is that it all comes down to like your race or your tribe in reality we we know as believers there are two kinds of people the lost and the saved and literally there is no you have no as a believer you have no grounds whatsoever to yoke yourself along racial mm -hmm. lines along national lines along any lines whatsoever aside from the body of christ that is your identity those are your people and I, I was thinking exactly. about this. Yeah. And that, and, 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 and I'm worried too, because in this case, you know, uh, I'm sure from what I've seen online, most white people are totally outraged about what, uh, what, about what this cop did, you know, at face value. None of them agree with it. Most, you know, they're, you know, the average white person 
you know, things absolutely detestable. They're not going to make excuses for it. And then to have all of these people angry at them for something that they too think is detestable and wicked, um, that, you know, <laughs> there's no ambiguity. Now, when there's ambiguity, it could, uh, it's almost better, like in a case where maybe the cop actually had a reason, maybe, maybe it wasn't just, you know, um, just outright, you know, evil, uh, unjust, you know, shooting or whatever. Um, but in this case, you know, it is just pure evil and everybody can agree with that. So can you imagine having a huge portion of the country screaming and yelling at you because of your skin color as if you uh, are guilty of what this mm. cop did? And, you know, and saying, no, it's mm -hmm. your evil. You did it. And it's all it's all of you that are the problem. Well, you know, uh -huh. I'm worried that it's going to get to the point where that will actually upset white people enough that they will say, you know what? I've had it. I've had it. You know, I tried, you know, I try, I tried to, to be nice. I tried to say, I'm sorry. I've tried to, you know, well, I don't know what to do. I can't take it back. I can't go back in time and fix everything that other people did. I've just, I've tried to be this way you know, mm -hmm. in my life that I don't agree with what they did. But, you know, if, if that, if they lose patience too, then we could actually see a really bad, um, you know, I, I worry that like in these cities, right, where you have half of the crowd, at least are white kids. But if enough people get like, a, like, say like one of the black or the like, Hispanic protesters start turning on them, you know, mm -hmm. which it could happen. Because I have seen that before where, where, you know, uh, the, uh, a protester in the crowd who was totally there in solidarity was started to get, you know, uh, started, they just started turning on this person because he was white, you know, like you shouldn't even be here, that type of thing. But with these crowds so pent up and so frustrated about the real injustice that was done to them when we were locked in our houses and, and the country, like the economy has been totally collapsed on purpose, um, you know, for so many people. Uh, this is a situation where it's kind of like all bets are off. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because the, they've totally destabilized us with the, with the whole coronavirus thing. Everything up is down, down is up. Now you can drink on the streets because mm. you they don't want you in the bars with your mask off. So now it's okay to right. have alcohol. On the street. Everything is turned upside down. Yeah. So in right. this situation, I do worry that, it's a, that, that a fuse could be lit. That really, I don't believe that it'd ever be an actual race war. Like I said, because <laughs> I, 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 I can imagine a whole lot of, especially younger white people, um, actually being heartbroken if they were, uh, like if, some, if, 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 like say a crowd of black people came at them, like you're the enemy, they would be heart because they don't actually literally don't have a higher cause in life in their mind than racial justice. And, and now they're being, you know, um, attacked as if they're the enemy and they don't have anything else. They don't have any, any greater cause, greater identity. That's literally their entire uh, in their mind, that's their, that is their identity. Is this idea mm -hmm. of, of social justice? And imagine if 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 the tables turn and suddenly the people that they think they're helping and that they're identifying with come at them. I mean, I I don't. I, there's so many people like that my age and younger that I don't see how a race war should ever start because, uh, uh, you know, it would take it would we basically have to rely on a bunch of people in the middle age or something to to start you know, uh, actually having conflict, it would never spread across the country. So that's not really what I'm, I'm not worried about an actual race war, but I'm worried about them destabilizing this enough that they could justify a martial law lockdown. And I don't understand why the protesters who inherently tr distrust the government and hate the president and are attacking the White House, uh, why they aren't worried that, that they've been baited into giving them a reason to do just that, you know, I mean, they, you know, that they, they tried to get past the barricades of the white house last night. They like did battle with the secret service. <laughs> did you guys hear mm -hmm. that? No. Lisa, did you hear that? Yeah. I couldn't know. I did that. not. Yes. They, they, they have these barricades up because of the protests and the barricades are there to protect the protesters because if they get a pass, right. them, they get shot. They <laughs> and they're shoot. Trying that's to right. Yes. Oh, yes. that's the, the sister. Let me interrupt you. I, no, I go have ahead. I, I'm. I want you guys to give because, me feedback now. I mean, it's really open. Okay. Open. Well, yeah. I was. I was talking to my family about this, and, and oh, <clears throat> excuse me, we were. We were saying, you know, I was saying, even if I'm not going to even deal with the fact that this could be a total deep fake 
general adversarial yeah. network creation psyop. Y'all don't understand. Some of you don't understand the technology they have. Thank it you. can yeah. literally trick your mind into seeing something that never transpired. And it looks right. as real as if you witnessed it with your own eyes. You need to look up what I just mentioned. Yeah. Deep fakes mm -hmm. and general adversarial networks. And we don't know how long they've been doing this because they're 100, maybe 200 years ahead of the technology they released to us in drips and drabs. And this stuff, they have had agent provocateurs and agents that they have co-opted, trained, groomed to lead people down the garden path, like the Pied Piper. Mm -hmm. And you don't know that the well, what shall we call them? The C, the I, and the A has their hand up their backside. Okay? Yes. Please, like a puppet. Y'all, it took me a long time to discover this. Now, there's a video. I can't get uh, Ben to play it because I don't have access right now with where I'm at to provide him the link. But I will put the link in the description. Um, you'll have it by in the morning. If you want to come back, because I'm traveling right now. If you want to come back and click on the link. It will be, um, I'm trying to remember what the title is, but it will be about agent provocateurs. And this is a black gentleman from back in the, it was the late fifties or sixties who talks about, or it may have been even early in the net. It talks about being co-opted by the communist party. And he yep. thought the communist party was legit and that they were really trying to do something and they would help black people, et cetera, et cetera. And he got in there and found out it was a bunch of bull and they were stirring stuff up to try to destroy the country. you got to understand that the problem with a revolution is you don't know what you're going to end up with when, yep. when the foundations are destroyed. The Bible says, what shall that the righteous do? Exactly, yeah. The text, it's textbook Marxist um, um, strategy to, right. to rile up minority yes. groups. And and have and here's the thing that that I worry about is that um, I know so at, at the surface you know like a lot of these younger kids they think they're up there they're really amped up they they think it's because it's all about injustice and whatever but what they don't realize is okay so let's say you got your way whatever it is that you want like at the end mm -hmm. of the day what you're saying is you, you you're fighting it's not really for justice but it's because because if you cut it all away and you try to like reason with some of the more passionate ones you know and even like like the pro blacks on twitter at the end of the day what they'll say is no i don't really even care about what's fair or anything i care about what's good for my people that's really mm. it's really not about injustice it's about um this tribalistic like competition this rivalry right mm -hmm. and, and and wanting to like like for a lot of these people because um they don't have a deeper value system because that's been stripped away from everybody in America at this point, especially the younger generation, sadly, even the stronghold, which was the black community, you know, is wavering big time in its Christianity and the younger generations, which is shocking to me, but it's, it's, you know, they finally got these, they finally got the black youth too to, to start turning on God and questioning God. And the thing is, um, if, if, if all that is stripped away and you, and you say, well, okay, let's just be honest. This isn't really about anything other than advancing your own self-interest. And uh, because there's no way to make amends for the past and everything now, what, what, because that's what the Marxists understood is that um, mm -hmm. basically give everybody this bait of like, well, you can get, you can attain more power over this other group by uh, exploiting well because at first they're saying no we just want fairness and you're being unfair and whoever the majority group is if they are even compassionate enough to care whether something's mm -hmm. unfair because see that's the thing is um americans were not like america wasn't kind of on the idea of of white anything it was because there were all these different groups from europe um and other places you know and of course african slaves but the the european groups they didn't identify as white they were they were irish they were german they were british so there wasn't a racial identity uh that was at the most countries have been founded or, or they've really naturally sprung up around you know a a, a racial tribe or a tribe a, an ethnic group right and so this mm -hmm. country was more of an idealistic uh endeavor and it actually had the potential in a way to stand for something greater than self-interest and tribal self-interest, right? And that was the mm -hmm. that was the uh, for you know in the heart of 
I think most Americans, um, that was what we thought like the American dream was, right? And it was a principle. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't a color, it wasn't an ethnicity. Um, but so now everybody that's, that's European has been grouped into this thing called white uh, that doesn't actually have any roots. It doesn't really have a culture because, because white people are not just one thing. They're, they're all they're from all over Europe. So um, but if white people start thinking like consciously thinking, you're right. You know what? If all you care about is, is in advancing the interests of your people and not, you know, and not, not like country, but actually your people, even to the detriment of this country, what if, what if white people start thinking, well, how about we just start thinking that way? How about we actually mm -hmm. out loud start speak, thinking that way, that we're going to do what's best for our people? And I worry about that <laughs> because that, mm -hmm. that's what it would really take. It would really take for, for them to actually stir up major civil unrest. It would take enough white people to actually realize that um, the people yelling at them uh, are, are acting in their self-interest as a tribe. And that if they don't, you know, hurry up and, and start thinking that way too, that they're going to get, you know, that they're basically going to get uh, swept away with this tide of outrage. Um, you, guys, the, uh, you know what I'm talking about? Uh, real quick, mm -hmm. can you guys share my screen while I'm talking right now? Angel, for example. Yes. Uh, it, this this is uh, Victoria Sarton found this. I don't know yeah. if it's true or not. I've been duped by it before. Uh, okay. I, I, mm -hmm. I think this might be legit. Um, I mean, it seems like Simpson might have done it again, yep. as they say. No way. Yep. Uh, yeah, I saw that. I was gonna. I was trying to wait for a break to bring that up. Uh, I'm not yeah, able to really I, type in the chat, but I can, I saw what she she wrote. Ren, you want to go ahead and enlighten everybody what she said? Yeah. Uh, well, it's basically she, again. Uh, Victoria, by the way, on Facebook, she's got an awesome uh, feed. I, I look at it; she's constantly got awesome things going on. But she had uh, posted this uh, picture of a Sim uh, Simpsons cartoon <clears throat> of a police station. Mm burning uh and also uh george apparently floyd uh, uh, someone who strikingly has a striking resemblance to george Flo floyd with a cop on his neck uh it's oh, wow. an episode, episode um it looks legit but uh again i've been duped before but well he, he's way. in a porn video he was like, i i i didn't watch the actual porn part but the intro he was a was like in, was a How did you after. find that out, sister? It uh, was on my feed on your. Oh well, you uh, know, you know, it just well, so happened. No, I'm it was I not. Mean, you know, it was on my feed. Just YouTube. because you're referencing stuff. it didn't mean you went and watched it. I mean, how did <laughs> no, you no, find no, out? It was that, edited. <laughs> Oh, okay. well, yeah, just, no, I did watch, I did watch the, the clip that, that, just to see it was him. He wasn't, uh, he wasn't in the act, it, or it was, it was, it was, you know, uh -huh. the awkward beginning of one where everybody comes into okay. the room and, and it, it's totally awkward. Um, yeah, but he, he called him Floyd the Landlord. That was his porn name. And, mm. um, I find that very odd, like that, I mean, it's coincidental maybe, and it was recent. It wasn't like, a, you know, oh, mm. I don't know how old he was, but, um. But yeah, it was like, you know, uh, it had to been within the past 10 well, years. Well, what's interesting on my Facebook feed, uh, especially against people uh, are people who I know are absolutely asleep. And I've tried to mm -hmm. wake up many times. They were posting, you know, social justice warrior uh, type memes on. And one thing they kept on um, uh, posting, even though they're not believers. Uh, right. They would post pictures of him. He's opposed to a, a, a devout Christian, you know, and they'll, they'll play every angle and try to pull every heart. Oh, yes, in. they will. Uh, oh, I actually yeah. care so much about Christians. So. Yeah, this yeah. is absolutely. I mean, I right, but only if they can exploit it. Yeah. If they can use it for exploitation purposes, honey, they'll have they'll push that button all day long. Because they'll right. they use different groups for victimization purposes, but it's all um, as the left, right. Remember how I talked about you have to have the left and the right to move people down the road. Yep. So yeah. yep. you know you can't have a left foot. Uh, you can't bird. have the body politic, what they call the body politic, move down the road without a left foot and a right foot. Right. <laughs> so exactly. don't we? I don't care about. Democrat, Republican, Libertarian, Green Party. I care about the truth. And these right. parties, these games that they play is all used as a weapon against us to manipulate us into whatever their paradigm or agenda is. And, and, and one it, last and it, thing, oh, real quick. Yeah. William Casey, I believe I have his name right, that was the director of the CIA, he said, we will know that our... Yep mission or agenda is complete when everything the American people believe is false. 
Yep. Now, why did he yep. say when everything, not some everything. things, not most things, not many things, everything they believe is false? Yeah, well, oh, you yes. know, that's the thing. Is Christians are, I, I hope, you know, I, I, I was thinking in terms of like, you know, how this, how this could play out. Well, surely there'd be enough Christians from all sides to to take a stand and and say no we're you know we're we're not going to fight each other we're not going to burn down you know cities or whatever because, because um, right. you know we're the body of Christ but then I thought no because so many of them are apostate like uh, I, I don't mm. care you know that they find whatever justification they need in the Bible to where they ignore the part where it says that you know the the body of Christ is is not to be divided. I mean, because I've seen in comments right. where I get I get these you know people coming at me. People can't stand it when um mm -hmm. you know I use Christianity as the basis uh, as my justification for why um no I'm against like like ethno nationalism at least when it comes to this country um because mm -hmm. it, you know if that were to actually happen uh, uh the body of Christ would be torn asunder. Because That's there's, right. you know, the, uh, and I don't want to be divided from my, from my actual, my only people, which are, you know, fellow believers. So no, in my own self-interest, in the interest of the body of Christ, I stand against white nationalism and, and, and black mm -hmm. nat and all forms of ethnic nationalism in this country. Right. I don't care if other places that have always been, you know, of one ethnicity or whatever, or, or, you know, like, let's say Sweden or, or, uh, or, you know, uh, Italy or whatever, if they want to, you know, Italy for Italians, that's fine. But America has always been a lot more complicated and you would actually have to tear, tear the whole place, you know, the, the country apart um, to, to, to achieve that. And in doing so, and which would be the goal is to tear, tear apart the body of Christ. But the thing is, when you see these outrage mobs, the only thing I can think is it's a practice run for when they rile up the world against the Christians, the actual believers. Uh, right. Satan's pushing all the buttons because these lost people, they don't know what they're really mad about. They don't know what spirit mm. that they stand in and they fight for. Um, and at the end of the day, I mean, look, you can see them uh, just they're they're you know, thrown to and fro with every wind of outrage that comes on the media. Mm -hmm. And they and they go they go for mm -hmm. it because they're empty and they have the spirit of Antichrist, you know, as the, who's just like ruling and reigning over their life as a lost person. I know that for a fact personally. And um, these people, like I said, they don't actually know what they believe in. They don't actually have um, uh, core values, uh, most mm -hmm. of us anymore. And um, I, I really think that uh, it, it won't, it, it's not hard for me to, for me to imagine um, the time when, when Satan drums them up against the real target which is, you know, right. believers, the body of Christ. And, and I want everybody who's a believer, you know, don't fall for these tactics. Don't let, right. you know, white people don't fall for mm -hmm. it. Don't, don't start self -pit oh, pitying yourself because you're not racist and it's not fair. You know, God didn't ever <laughs> give you room to pity yourself. Same with black people. Don't start pitying yourself because it's not fair. And this and that, it's, it, you know, Jesus put up with way more than you ever had to put up with. That goes for all of us. And God doesn't tell you to, you know, that's okay to sit there and navel gaze and sit, feel bad for yourself. That's what the world wants you to do. That's what Satan wants you to do. He's going to play on your flesh. Remember, you have only one identity, and that is in Christ mm. and, and your only family. I mean, literally, you're, yes. you're to stand with the body of Christ over your own family, like your own, you know, mother and father, if it comes yes. down to it. Exactly. So you think that's you're right. supposed to. Yeah. So, I mean, well, what 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 could you possibly have in common with uh, lost people who have your same, you know, the general shade of, of skin that you have? Because you know, it's not even mm -hmm. an exact match, you know. <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> especially in this country, we're all mutts. So, what 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 are you really mad about? Because and, and a lot of people just don't want to let that go, though. They don't want to let that identity go. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is that whatever racial identity, I usually am fighting with white people because they can't stand when I say, because one of the things I get in a lot of arguments about is that uh, uh, people who claim to be Christian, um, but they're, you know, basically uh, falling for this, this race bait that they're, they're handing out to white people now big time, especially on YouTube. Uh, you know, this, this feeling of white victimization now, reverse racism and mm -hmm. um, which they're doing on purpose. They're, they're beating down white mm -hmm. people in the media and really being, completely outrageous and unfair in a lot of the cases where somebody will get called out for, you know, some,
thing, some imp- like perceived slight, you know, that they, 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 they apparently did. And it really wasn't, it's not even rational to, 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 to you know, mm-hmm. uh, uh, tar and feather this person. Um, but they, they're trying to get you to feel like a victim. The victim mentality is poison no matter who consumes it, no matter right. who you know, who, who starts indulging in it. it. It's not, it wasn't good for the black community. It was, it's not going to be good for the white community either, but white people are falling for it now. And um, I argue mm-hmm. with them a lot because um, I, I still stand on the fact that even though they feel like they've been, they've been done wrong or whatever, it doesn't mean that we can, we can uh, deny what the word says, which is that our only identity group is, that, you know, as, as that of the body of Christ. And I even point out that in the old Testament, Miriam was cursed with leprosy for daring to, you know, to question Moses about, um, about his marriage to Zipporah. And, you know, mm-hmm. at first it seems weird because didn't God, you know, uh, I mean, God did say that, you know, the Israelites were not to, to marry, um, you know, other, you know, other people, unbelievers, the, the pagans, the heathens um, um, from other countries. But the thing is, is that was a shadow, a picture of believers and Zipporah would become a saved believer. And God knew that. Which is why he didn't want uh, Miriam, you know, running her mouth about it to Moses. Um, and and when you point that, when I tell them it, all that God ever really cared about, you know, He did not want us to be unequally yoked with the lost, you know. <laughs> Which ironically is what a lot of these ethno nationalists are are actually buying for, is to yoke along mm-hmm. some lines other than the God that you serve. You know, um, oh, so but, and let that's, me stop you there. Let me ask you a question. Mm-hmm. Let me ask you a question. Are you into sports? No, <laughs> no, no. I won't even okay. pretend. <laughs> then, the, then the gentleman, then the gentleman can help me a little bit more with the answer on this one. I, I sorry, believe I can't help you that either. the okay, okay, <laughs> man. You get a pass too. Yeah, boy, brother Chris, are Chris? you into sports? Um, okay. Are you there? So, yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Have you been in times past or whatever? Yeah. Uh, yeah. The 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 point I'm about to make is this. I believe one of the purposes of sports is to maintain within the Americans psyche tribalism. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, yeah. Because there have been riots over who won or who lost games, not only Mm -hmm. here in this country, but we see it in other countries. People go buck wild crazy if uh, one of the biggest uh, sports in, in the world is soccer. Or what they call football. And if they don't like the calls or they think they got cheated, they'll tear a town up. Oh, yeah. So they're conditioning people for tribalism for a reason. But go ahead, sister. Go ahead. Well, and no, basically, that's all. I I just really wanted to remind everybody because I know even even the best of us can get a little frustrated when we when we see um, people just being uh, hypocrites or just, you know, really like 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 not actually stating the truth about their motives um, or why they're you know why they're really doing what they're doing um, like so you know when we see like all the SJWs who are to- they're, they're totally willing to just completely contradict themselves from one thing to another they have no interest in being actually like um, consist ethically consistent um, uh, with, and you know of course like with the whole you know coronavirus situation suddenly they've all forgotten about that. I mean, they might have their masks on, but suddenly it's okay to go out in the streets and all group together and riot when those are the very same people that were, you know, uh, 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 pointing fingers and castigating anybody that questioned the lockdowns or, or said we need to get back to work. But now it's, 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 a, it's a just cause to, to go out and, you know, uh, and, and, and yell in the streets for, you know, all night long. Um, that's, you know, that's more important than this, you know, God, you know, this God forsaken plague that everybody, uh, <laughs> that everybody believes in that's still totally imaginary. And, you know, still, it's still mm. just like, I, I can't, I can't get over the gaslighting that's involved. Um, every time, mm. even now, all these months later, people are, you know, like Tim Poole is watching his video and he's, you know, saying, oh, well, you know, we've had a lot of Americans die and, you know, I'm not saying it's not a serious thing, but I guarantee you he doesn't know anybody that's been sick. 
all these people just acquiescing mm. to the narrative. Like, because even though mm-hmm. they still have not seen it become real in their own life, they're still just going along with it. But we, we you know, it's just, it's maddening now that we see the whole, the whole, now the whole news cycle is switched to the riots and um, nobody cares about social distancing anymore. People are, are getting advice. I know like two federal officers, right? Were, were they shot dead last night or something like that? Yeah. I mean, it's getting really, it's getting pretty bad. Allegedly. And, allegedly <laughs> right no like but see that's all that matters because see if the, there's 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 a, uh, agent provocateurs in the crowd you know at every mm-hmm. you know and i'm sure a lot of hired protesters but they're there i believe to actually get real people to do these things they're right. there they are yes. you know making it okay for them they're the forerunners they're they're Absolutely. they're pioneering for, for the real people mm-hmm. so if even if it's it, you know uh, a fake story if people real people think okay now we're shooting federal officers yes. they, they're going to be open to doing that well now it's open you know like because it, it's become it's normalized now it's it's okay it's safe because other people are doing it even if it never really happened um right but, you know i and it, I, I hopefully i'll just you know it, hopefully it was just like i said a transition thing that they needed to change our, to, you know, to, to give uh, the sheep permission to forget about COVID so that they could go, you know, move on with their agenda, whatever it is, maybe that's over. And um, they just needed something like a palate cleanser, right? Uh, to, 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 to take right. our minds off the, just long enough uh, to, to, but, you know, to where it was okay. You know, it was okay to do because this was more important, right? For a lot of, especially for the young, like liberal minded college kids. But, um, uh, it, if it go, you know, if it gets really bad, I just think the body of Christ. I, I don't hear enough people reminding uh, believers this um, on either side that that you know that there is no there is no greater identity group. And I mean, I, I literally feel no affiliation whatsoever with anybody aside from the body of Christ. I like I don't um, I don't have any loyalty. I'm not patriotic. I mean, that might sound bad, but how could I be? You know, I mean, it, it, we're, we're told very clearly in the Bible uh, right. that this whole world's going to b- burn up, that this is going to burn up. And the only thing that's going to stand, you know, is, is everything that is in Christ, that, you know, we in Christ, um, we're the only thing that <laughs> we have. We're the only thing that have any chance of, of lasting permanence, you know, and everything else is, mm. is, is literally like a bad dream. I was it's all, it's, mm. You were patriotic. I was. Right, yeah, now you guys go on. You guys have the floor. <laughs> God, God and country. Okay, Sister Angel, God, thank God you for that. Mm-hmm. God and country. God first, country second. Before I before I woke up, I was very patriotic and very uh, Republican. Not necessarily. Did the Bible ever tell us to be? I, 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 thought I don't it, think ever in the Bible it says to, to value our country. Right? I, I thought, well, that's a good question, Sister Angel. But I thought it that the motto was God, family, and then country. Did they change that? Oh no, no for I, God and country. For for it, it's God and country, as far as I know. Um, yeah, that's what I've wow. heard. Wow. The Marines, it's God and the core, then the country. Believe it or not, it's it's wow. God first, <laughs> and then the core second. That's weird. Hmm. Mm, it's was the core weird. without the country. But two things I just want to say really quickly uh, about the, the question about sports. I was very much, I didn't like all sports, like like a lot of guys that I know that will watch bowling if it comes on. They'll watch uh, championship tree chopping if that comes on. They'll watch any, any quote-unquote sport that's televised. And I was not like that. Hmm. I liked professional football, college football, hmm. and college basketball. Those, those three, mm-hmm. and also because I grew up with it, tennis. I liked watching tennis because I play tennis, and my, my family plays tennis, and the, it, it's something I enjoy. Um, and also patriotic, especially after 9-11. Now, I don't have mm-hmm. to convince people. Uh, a lot of people that were not patriotic before 9-11, all of a sudden, suddenly, were buying American flag stickers and uh, mm-hmm. N- NYC caps, you know, first responders and, and all that. I and saw how that. did they do that? They made us feel victimized and attacked. Right, by terrorists. Yeah, same, exactly. with the, same yeah. here, same with the situation. And, and conditioned us to worship the first responders. Right, exactly. Okay, and that esteemed was, them, right. 
Yes. And the, well, they're doing that now with the nurses and the doctors mm -hmm. on, on the quote unquote front lines of the, the fake virus. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But, but then you can see how this gets another thing, but you can see how seriously the nurses are taking it when they're dancing around uh, on TikTok. You know, while they have so many dying victims that they're supposed to be taking care of, but yet they have time to do a choreographed dance, several different hospitals with nurses doing a dance, one of them even carrying a dead body. What? Oh my it's goodness. In your face. It's in your face. Oh. Brother Cripps, I got to yeah. stop you. Okay. I, I disagree with you calling it a fake virus. I really do. Because I have come to believe that the virus is the lies. But go ahead, go ahead, continue. Well, well, let me address that. Okay, so I said it wrong. Uh, the virus actually exists. Each one of us actually carries uh, a little bit of the, the virus. The virus has been around through the corona uh, virus. She was being around. facetious, I think, right? Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, I was. Sorry, I'm getting to. I'm I think getting that they, the so virus hard. is the lies they're telling us that's poisoning everybody. But, but oh, go ahead. I, I totally missed it. Okay, I, I get it now. <laughs> I get it now. Um, yeah, so when I wasn't awake, I was patriotic and I did like sports. And what happened, interestingly enough, what happened when God opened my eyes to other truths, it, it didn't happen overnight with sports. But with politics, I was like, oh, my gosh, when I discovered that uh, about the, 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 uh, the shadow government that's in charge and the elites and what they did at 9-11, I, I, that was overnight. I, I was like, oh, my gosh, I followed this thing uh, as far as being a Republican and, and, uh, and all that. I followed this political party. Mm -hmm. And when my eyes were opened, I dropped it immediately. I was like, it's two mm -hmm. sides of the same coin. Makes no difference. Republican, Democrat, <laughs> two sides of the same coin. And they're not even the ones in charge. It's pointless. Yes. Yes. So that happened. Now, with sports, I didn't like all of a sudden hate sports. I just, I was interested in other things all of a sudden. I went back mm -hmm. into the Bible. Uh, uh, not back in, but you know what I mean, studying it even more and back and, and right. went into these rabbit trails of, of, of seeing what other things they've lied to us about. Right. And um, I, I wasn't doing YouTube before this, before I was awake. In 20, mm. 2017, I'm fairly young and, and being awake. Um, I was awake to some things. Like uh, when I mentioned the Matrix, I woke up to certain aspects spiritually uh, back in 1999. Uh, that wasn't when I got saved. I got saved before that. But uh, uh, let's just say that that was the beginning for me of God starting to open my eyes. And it took, it took uh, 17 years for me to be completely awake. And I'm still learning stuff all the time. But it just changed. It changed the dynamic for me of what I was viewing and what I was interested in. And, I, and I'm and i grateful. I can sit down and watch a football game with, with a buddy now. But it uh, it just – and I even still do fantasy because I've been in the same fantasy league with my brother-in-law and a bunch of other guys that I like, and they're, they're some of them are friends of mine. So I just do it for fun now. I'm not, like, like glued to – I okay, this is how bad I was. On Sundays, every Sunday that football was on, the football season, I would get to the bar early. Uh, and it wasn't for the purpose of drinking. It was for the purpose of being able to see all the TVs with all the games on at the same time. Because you can you can get direct TV and have NFL Sunday ticket, but you only got one TV, maybe two in your house. So I wanted to be able to see all the games at once because I had the Fantasy League and I had players on each of the teams a lot of times that I wanted to watch their progress. So that's the way I did it. And I was there early and I stayed until usually didn't stay for the third game, but I stayed until the second game, the four o'clock game was over. I spent all those hours wrapped up in a sport, all those mm. hours. And now wow. my, my hours are spent with different things, things that uplift things that, that uh, teach me more about uh, about scripture, things that teach me more about the lies of this world and, and, and engaged in the truth. And it has changed my life completely. He changed my life completely. He changed my life when I was when I was younger about salvation and then later in life, he changed my life completely about other truths that are important to me. May not be important to everyone, but they're important to me. Mm -hmm.
Mm-hmm. Would you describe that as being refo- refocused by the Lord? Oh, more. Yes, exactly. Um, definitely refocused. <laughs> you know, I, mm-hmm. I, I mean, I had a relationship with him. I have a prayer life and, and uh, I listened to sermons. I never stopped listening to sermons uh, mm-hmm. you know, like on the way to work and on the way back from work and uh, things like that. But I still had one, not even knowing it, I still had one foot in the world. Didn't even realize it. I, I believe the mm-hmm. scriptures say don't love the things in this world, but I didn't mean that right. in football. I did. I mean, it, it doesn't necessarily mean football. It means the the deeper the deeper evil things of this world. I'm not I'm not implying right. you can't love football mm-hmm. and be a believer. Mm-hmm. But the the overall point is, I he showed me that I did believe some things in this world that were put up there to deceive me and program me. So when he woke me up, mm. I didn't want to be programmed anymore. I only want to be programmed mm-hmm. by his word. That's it. Mm. In fact, I pray, program me, God. Program me from your word. Right. See, because his programming doesn't make you a it, well, it makes you a slave. Paul said we're slave to righteousness. I'm fine being a slave to righteousness. I don't care if you call it a slave. I'm a slave to righteousness. I've got no problem with that. Mm-hmm. But I don't want to be a slave mm-hmm. to anything else. Right. Yep, because the Bible lets us know that uh it tells us that the Lord's Yoke is easy and his burden is light. It is so. When you put, right. And when you put the encumbrances of the world upon yourself, mm-hmm. you can't bear them, beloved. They will destroy you. They have destroyed many a person. Uh, and most of us have, um, if we ever got entangled with it in a way that was in any way unnatural or undesired or um, in, inordinate or improper, we had to get unbound because fellowship, the, what fellowship does light have with darkness? You can't do it. So you'll find yourself in this battle and it is the age old battle, one of many, but it is the one that is the spirit warring against the flesh and the flesh warring against the spirit. Yes. And believers, yeah, I've found that there's a certain amount of growth in Christ you cannot achieve until you do that battle. Now, we we all can do this in in varying degrees and in various ways, but if you have an idol that is in your life that um, it, it takes greater place than Christ, you're going to have to slay that dragon. Mm-hmm. Because there ain't going to be two gods on the throne. He ain't going to allow it. For instance, so you, if you're, you're writing about yeah. this, but you've never rioted about some attack on, on the church or rioted about some, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, just a affront against Jesus. Like when they, you know, made that show about him being gay. Uh, this, I guess it's on Netflix. You know, that people, you know, if you haven't rioted about those things, been, and you're writing now about about this situation that should tell you where your real allegiance lies still well that's another thing very good angel good point that brings up another thing even where tv is concerned people used to get upset about garbage on mm-hmm. tv they used to boycott right. uh, companies that did advertising for certain types of shows they used to write into the networks and stuff and and really really remember when Ellen came out? I don't know how old you guys are, but uh, Ellen DeGeneres had a uh, uh, it, it wasn't a good show and I didn't uh, watch mm-hmm. it, but it was on. I know the first one or the second one because she's been on like one. twice. She had oh you heard okay. her her talk show is very popular. No, I'm referring to a sitcom. Yeah, the first of. sitcom she did right. right. And there was controversy because she quote unquote came out. And by the way, when she it, it was so ridiculous. And to me, I was like, that's not even really coming out. She's at an airport in the scene. She's in an airport. And she's just, I'm gay mm-hmm. or whatever. But that was right. the first time anyone had come out on television. Not the first time they depicted any kind of gayness. Right. But it was the first time anyone quote unquote came out as a character on television. And she was doing both. She was coming out as a character and also coming right. out as an individual for the first time. Can I stop you there real quick, Brother Cripps? Of course, of course. When when I was watching that, um, like I said before, I was fully woke. Because it's like you, you get a, awakened from sleep 
there, I guess there's two ways that a person can be awakened. It's staunch where it's like a slap <laughs> and then it's not fun. Or there's the one where you just, you're slowly coming out of it. It's like, huh, what was that? And yeah. then you might go back and sleep for a minute. And you go, huh, what was that? It was that kind of thing. So I was watching Ellen. I'll never forget this. Me and my sister, we, we talked about this. Or for all you English buffs, my sister and I, we were talking because <laughs> <laughs> that that literally would drive some pe people That's crazy true. if I just leave that hanging there. <laughs> but, yeah. uh, so we were talking about it. And we said, look. If she thinks she's fooling somebody, everybody knew she was a lesbian. Yeah. Why does she have to bring it into the programming? And you know what? We stopped watching it after that because she was funny. It was good. But when they brought that in, it became all about that. And yep. we would look at each other. And we said, I ain't trying to be programmed to be that. We left it alone. Right. Right. Go, there go ahead. Go. <laughs> there you go. Um, and uh, remember the show Will and Grace? Yes. Okay, same similar thing. Now, that was one of the first shows they had an openly gay character, uh, a couple, more than one, but one really flamboyantly gay. And I could not watch it. I, I and, uh, In fact, my first uh, wife, we weren't married very long, but my first wife, uh, she really liked the show. And mm -hmm. this is just shows you how ridiculous I was as a man at that time. Just in certain ways. And uh, I uh, forbid her from watching that show. That's how strongly I felt about it. The problem was she, uh, she had a brother that was gay and it, I, I didn't know that uh, mm. until that moment, but she got really upset. And I said, why are you so upset? It's just a TV show. And then she told mm. me that her, her brother was gay. And um, uh, in fact, found out that she, she's an advocate for gay rights. And, and I should, this is a separate conversation, but I should have mm -hmm. not married someone that I didn't know everything about her as you know as far as understanding what her what her views are at that time i thought hey she's a christian on paper that's good enough for me and i paid dearly <laughs> my consequences were dear for making mm. that mistake uh never again the person i'm with the jen now we discussed all this stuff b before we we did anything else we discussed where we stand on certain things and that was important to me. It was important to me because mm. I messed up the first time and I didn't wait on God. I, I stepped in, in front of his plan and uh, he lovingly spanked me because of that. He, mm -hmm. he really did. Mm -hmm. But he, when I say lovingly, I mean that. He, he didn't rub mm -hmm. anything in my face. He didn't need to. Mm -hmm. I knew what I did. It's like when a kid puts their, they know they're not supposed to put their hand in the cookie jar and they do and they get a little slap on the hand. You don't have to explain the kid to explain the kid why he got slapped on the hand. He knows. Right. That's the way that's the way it was for me. But anyway, my mm -hmm. point was that at that time I I was so against seeing that. I didn't want my eyes to see it. And then mm -hmm. over time it became so pervasive that then they came out with a show called Modern Family. And at the beginning, I watched some of that. And my excuse to myself, this was before I was awake, too. Mm -hmm. My excuse to myself was, well, they're gay, but, you know, they're not really putting it in your face. Right. But the thing was, that was at the beginning. Now, they, like putting frogs in, a, in a, a bucket of water and slowly moving the heat up. Toward the end of that series, then they're kissing each other full in the mouth. Mm -hmm. That's how they do it. That's my point. They start out little by little. Ellen comes out first one that comes out on television. You know, not a, not a not a huge deal. It was a huge deal back then, but they had to start out small. And then you get Will and Grace. Wait. Oh, go ahead. Well, didn't they do two Will and Graces though? Didn't they do a remake, like a re-release of they that? Came or back. They brought it back recently. Right. Okay. I, I thought I was losing it for a second. I was like, didn't they rehash oh, that? Okay. You're right. right. It was a popular series even back then. It was a popular series. Mm -hmm. But my point is they didn't just start out with two guys kissing uh, on a on a network TV show. That's no. not how it started. No. Little by little. Right. You if you wanna you you wanna keep the frogs from jumping out of the water, you turn up the uh turn up the heat slowly. The heat. Well yeah. it's funny that everybody look, watched Will look, and Grace look, and part the draw was because they wanted Will and Grace to get together. Well, that's of course, the, it was the, that's it was what we the know. Right, oh, right. It was the yeah. That she yeah. makes turn him straight, kind of thing. And it was always mm -hmm. sad. Like I remember watching. It, I was. It was sad. Like there was a sadness deep down. Like 
and I didn't know why because I didn't think I, it, consciously at the time I was lost. I didn't think there was anything wrong with it. But deep down, it was sad. Like what a waste. Yeah. Mm. You know, that's what it always felt like watching. Like what? What? You know, this man and this woman. They should be together. They're best friends. And it's it's you know it's actually real tragic to see like we've been the, the society has been warped so much that that a situation like that could play out where these, yeah. these just like two people like get along and like love each other but he thinks he's gay he thinks that he's gay he's not he's not god didn't make him that way he's been he's been deceived and he's buying into it and, yeah. and clearly grace was in love with him i think that was like part of the show um yeah. or at least that was whatever we read into the read into it and it's like I, anytime i see that on tv um uh any any characters like that where one loves this the other but the other's gay uh it's like so tragic because that's you know and that's happening in real life too in real life people are are turning down the opportunity to actually have a family and a real marriage because they've been lied to and they, they think that they're that that they are attracted to the same sex this this totally fruitless pointless thing that will never produce children and never really make them truly happy because yeah. it can't, because it's contrary to nature, to their nature, it you know. Can. And I, and I'm not high horsey about it. I, I watch shows where people are. I mean, I, you know, I used to, but I mean, I like say Stranger Things. I mean, there's a lot of ungodly mm. stuff. Well, I mean, you know, I guess Stranger Things is actually pretty, uh, pretty mild. There's not like drug dealing or whatever. But like no, no. people watch shows where all kinds of other sin. Um, you know, so I, I guess you know, but like when it's the the gay thing. The reason that it's it's abhorrent is not because so much that uh, I feel uh, like oh that's the, that's the worst possible sin and they're glorifying it, but it's no I know what they're doing they're normalizing this and what is really sad right. is it's, it's telling other people hey hey d- deprive yourself of the of the joy of having children and a family and live a lie and, and, and hate yourself deep down inside for your entire life and deny God because you think that. Um, that you that you're gay and that means necessarily that you're you're just inherently opposed to the bible because the bible is anti-gay when it's, it's anti-sin you know nobody else mm-hmm. would you know it's just it's like and imagine imagine your whole identity being that you're a liar or you're a thief well, like no i'm a thief. That, <laughs> that's, that's what they've done that's one aspect there's another mm-hmm. darker side to that too mm-hmm. um that not a lot of people talk about and that would be the homosexual manifesto. Yeah, Have you guys that, ever read yes. that? Yes. Okay. Yes, that's absolutely true. Um, yeah, they that, can't that's procreate, so know. they can only recruit. That, and it's 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 pretty dark. You might want to read it so you know the yeah. mindset of some. Not all homosexuals feel this way or think this way. Probably not but most. There <laughs> is what they call the homosexual mafia. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, that's who that applies to. Y'all might want to check that out. You need to know what some of these people think and what they believe. And believe me, Christians, they hate you. I didn't say all homosexuals. I said the homosexual mafia. The ones yeah. who think like the gay manifesto talks about. They hate you. They hate you with a seed and rape, uh, uh, a hatred. And the reason the word rape came out of my mouth, because that's what they talk about in the homosexual manifesto. About what they, they want to do to your children. Yes. Basically, if you get in their way, they will kill you and rape your dead body. That is what is and in And that this. is not, and that is, those are the people that, that, that's the agents of subversion that actively are at war with, um, of, with the body of Christ and with all, uh, with all this godly. Now that is not right. an average gay person. No, obviously. we don't and think that. Gay I'm not saying that. that. <laughs> Most of them that's really, not they what have I'm no, saying. yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. This is, I know, this you is know, a, I know, you know, a that's special forces angel. battalion of the homosexuals. <laughs> right. the homosexual yeah. Special the, the agents really, the, the change agents who are it's trying to destroy. Yes. Because, there are homosexuals that are gay and they just want to live and let live and have love. That's not the one which we're talking about. Okay. Yeah. They're, they're not the ones. We're talking about the ones who are plotting, who hate us, who are working against the Lord. They know what they're doing. I mean, it is an evil demonic agenda. The they average gay person is the sick. victim of those people. Because right. in the manifesto, it talks about basically how they make more of themselves, which is by yes. uh, molesting young people and children. <laughs> Yes. And that's how it happens. And most of your average gay person, that's what happened to them. And they are a victim 
of these people who may have also started out that same way, but they got infected with a spirit, a spirit that, um, that even, it, to the point where they're, they're, they consciously know that they are at war mm. with all that is godly. And, uh, and right. that's not, you know, and, and, and those are the people that uh, 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 have given themselves over to it completely. Mm -hmm. Good points. Good points. Uh, Sister Angel, did you complete your thoughts about how we might be being pulled in by not only this possible racial sire to gin, I'm using that word on purpose, a jinn is a is short for genie, which yeah. is a spirit yeah, to cause people to rise up because the spirits feed on fear. They feed they feed on violence. They feed on runaway anger because the Bible says, "Be angry and sin not." But that's why it yeah. says, "And sin not," because if you're not careful, your yeah. anger can turn into violence, into rage, exactly. and that stuff is. The devil. That stuff is. And there's righteous and, anger where we're yes. angered for a true reason, and it's an, it's an, in the honor of the truth, essentially. But then this right. anger is really this is misguided, misdirected, and these people. One thing I do want to, yeah, two more things. I'll uh, that I'm done. Um, one is uh, I don't know who all these people are that are doing these things because I, like I said, I talk to black people all the time. Most of the people that I talk to when I go out in public, like I said, I usually spend time in Louisville, are black people. Those are the ones that most willing to come talk to strangers and have conversations and so i i i don't see this mentality reflected in the average person at all just like you know just like um but this, here's the thing i i really was there's no way i would have believed that so many people will be wearing masks two months ago i was like people are gonna see through this but then people who are lost can get pulled in where they don't even people who are saved but people who are not really um, um, listening to the Holy Spirit, if they're saved, and those who are lost who don't have the Holy Spirit, even if they seem like they have common sense, they can get pulled in because there's are, there are spirits at play, evil spirits mm -hmm. that 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 you know I really believe get sent forth with these um, with these upheavals that well, people yeah. can be influenced by. But they're still, what I what my point is, Dem demons yeah. are around chaos. I'm sorry, but uh, absolutely, Easter. and. But I don't. I don't think the average uh, black person is is you know is, is in any way. Um, I, I you know I'm, I at least none that I've ever known would actually be going and burning things down right now or or right. you know do it, doing this kind. Of, I've literally never met one. That's not what even when I was do. like that. No, yeah. <laughs> so I, I mean, I've not, like literally never met a single black person that I know that was even as revolutionary as me when I was like that. Like they weren't as mad about it as me, like as, as all upset and, you know, deceived by the media. You know, even Tupac mm. said, he said, um, um, agent, uh, regulate your thoughts. Don't get caught up in the mix because the media is full of dirty tricks. And mm -hmm. that whole song was about, well, you yeah. know, yeah, it's been, you know, people, people know. Um, so don't don't look at the, the television screens or whatever showing us and think that um, like if you're white, don't think that that's all black people, that that's what they mm -hmm. all think of you and that they all want to come and burn your house down. That it's not even yes. most black people, probably not. It's, it's like a very small portion. Mm -hmm. And don't forget that most of them are very young and it's really more. I think it's a generational thing, you know, mm -hmm. uh, like the, the young people who have no direction. And that's why we see right. uh, people of all races marching right now. Because nobody knows well, what they stand for. It's interesting you say that the young people that have no direction. And I want to get to somebody's comment in the comment section too. I need to answer real quick. But uh, it's we were talking about that tonight as, as a family, and we were saying that's the only people out there in them streets. Mm -hmm. Because if you got family, mother, father, sister, exactly. brother, aunt, uncle that's older than you, you know what they're gonna do? They'll pull your coattails and they'll take your butt on that street. And mm -hmm. they'd be like, well, but uh, uh, no, because like I said earlier, bullets don't know no names. You're out there with people who are going to be engaging in lawless, lawlessness, even if it's not you and you don't know what yeah. could happen to you. And this is not the way to do it. So if this person really was slain, OK, there mm -hmm. are proper channels in which to uh, direct your so-called out outrage and uh, a way to handle this. But going out in them streets where something could pop off is not one of them. Lisa, and you want to share you what you saw with the LA riots? Because you saw them and you were there and you had some interesting observations about what you saw. 
Okay, right? I, I will. Let me address yeah. this person real quick because I'll Julianne be Royale said uh, there are plenty of non-gay people who hate Christians and would do the same uh, to their oh, yeah. dead bodies. That's a good point. We're not saying Most it was only homosexuals, but I was, <laughs> well, I don't know, but uh, oh no! Not what the we're saying. Part. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, that's what we're talking about. Rape the dead body. Yeah. That okay, is okay, actually yeah. written. Excuse me. That's actually written in the homosexual manifesto, which is why I pointed it out. Okay, uh, this is their words, not mine. And I said yeah. it was not all gay people. It was this really dark, militant part of it. There, you know, yeah. there's different factions, even among all these. You can't sweep everybody with a broad brush. So we're not saying that about all homosexuals uh, at all. But I did want to point out that it's in the manifesto, which is why I said, please go read it for yourself. So you'll see we're not making this up. We didn't write it. They wrote it. One of their champions of the so-called homosexual agenda wrote this. And you need to go see it you need to know that there's a mindset out there that's like this right. so you're probably, not blindsided yeah, it's spirit. by it it's really right. a spirit yes. that wrote that it's a it's a it's yes. evil spirit oh definitely that. they channeled a spirit for sure yeah and they're, they're they're directing the films and they're writing the lyrics and songs of the top right artists. right yep yeah it's a it's a satanic agenda but you know mm -hmm. he's got various puppets and they present themselves from all avenues of life not just the you know the homosexual they use in black lives matter they use the kkk or the white so-called power group whatever the devil don't care i got a, a meme that i have up he don't care which lie you believe as long as you don't believe in the lord jesus christ he's got to so, give you some false thing to fight for exactly and, and, and to direct that against christians in the end he gives yes. you some false identity because there's only one true identity and only one true thing worth fighting for and, we, yeah. and, our, and the weapons of our warfare are not colonel. Um, but uh, but because it because he knows that there's a hole in everybody that that, that that where the truth should be, where God should be, um, he has to give them something else, some other cause. Yeah. And that's what he's doing. Right. And he's given all the different types of groups, all these different causes, and it's all a lie. Yes. But um, one day they will unite um, under a common cause. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> under the banner of Satan, we are the world. Uh, exactly. I don't know how they're going to pull it all together, but it will be under one banner because the Bible says when they say, when they say, not when we say, when they say peace and safety, sudden destruction will rain down upon them and they will not escape. So, And that's a promise, uh, that diversity promise is something only we have in Christ. That they right. uniting the world of, of lost people that can only be any Christ, but that is what we are supposed mm. to do with the body of Christ. So don't get it twisted, just yes. because this diversity right. thing is being used like a hammer to to destroy a lot of yes. uh, societies around the world right now. Don't get it twisted that that means that the body of Christ should is it, supposed to somehow be divided along cultural or ethnic lines. That somehow that diversity is bad when it comes to the body of Christ, because we know that it will be from people from every every uh, tongue and kindred. Uh, I forget the quote exactly. Exactly. Right. But we know every single Congre person, from, literally every tongue. And yeah, every. Mm -hmm. and imagine how many languages there are. You know, there are so many languages that make your head spin. Um, um, and I believe it's literal. Like literally every, like, you know, everybody who, you know, from every tongue ever, you know, ever in history, there will be at least one representative of that person of that uh, of that language in heaven. Um, and uh, so that so. I, I think that that's important because I've heard a lot of Christians too say it's antichrist to say that, um, like, say multiculturalism is good or or unifying uh, the races mm -hmm. is good. No, see, he's inverted something. It was a promise to those of us in Christ. That is why. That's right. why it draws people because somewhere deep down, even the lost. That's why it drew me because there is something very beautiful about that. About uh, because, mm -hmm. but it's because what what will come one day. Um, you know, in the kingdom of God, when we get to see that beautiful moment where we see people from all over the world, from that, mm. you know, from every different race and and culture and um and and you know even tribes that you know <laughs> we didn't even know existed, people coming um mm. at the foot of Jesus Christ. Right. That is the, that's the draw that Satan preys on now with um Amen. you know a lot of the 
the basically Marxists that he's uh, riling up and he's programmed. Um, sorry, right. I've got to, the, and I no, think that's okay. So with environmentalism, so many different things that he's mm-hmm. used to draw people are actually things that, if you think about it, are promised one day uh, for for you know the children of God, you know, in the kingdom with Him eternally. These things that uh, Satan's trying to promise to us now that we can somehow attain uh, for our own will, you know. In, well, in right. The- it all goes back to law and grace. It's a principle I see at clearest day. It's like grace, you depend on God for the solution. Law, you depend on man for the solution. And yep. that's what they're trying to do. They're trying, yes, to, put the, man. They're trying to put all their fate in their hands. Yes. 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 And like I said, once man. you learn, once you learn that, I for me, that was a big clarity, moment of clarity yes. when I discovered that. Mm-hmm. Like everything, the whole Bible falls into those two categories. The whole world falls into those two categories. Uh, and the whole Bible is well, about man's uh, how what happens if man takes it in his hands or if you were uh, or if god uh, if, if god's under control you know if well, man's like, yeah, always gonna fail right. like like people like against mm. animal cruelty i too am against animal cruelty. yes yeah well everybody i think a lot of people wish we didn't have to eat animals right to, to, to like that we didn't have to that, that but it is really it is necessary for us to be healthy but a lot of people now are taking yeah. that as their cause the cause against eating mm-hmm. meat right well why is that one day the lion will lay down with the lamb you know and and also um mm. or was it was it the wolf i can't confuse those mandela effect people confuse me but um, <laughs> oh, um, it's, it's um the but wolf. the point is is that we're we're promised we're promised uh this peace between all of creation one day but that's only mm-hmm. because god is going to restore creation uh to, right. to that we can never do it ourselves and and that is the antichrist principle is to try to do all of that in mm. god's stead without him and in defiance of him antichrist principle i love that the antichrist principle sister that was good you've talked about inversion and how the the devil inverts things i love that because brother cripps talked about something about how these these landmarks and stuff some of the way these things are laid out yeah. Or like they're an affront to God because yeah. the position is looking God looking down from his throne and seeing their mockery laid Great out. Observation. Yes, that was deep. And here's okay. the other I was wondering when you talked about inversion, this stuff goes way back where they've been doing inversion and we didn't know what they were doing. And now we know why the Lord said, Love not the world. Because we didn't know how deep the witchcraft went. Mm -hmm. We thought what we were seeing was WYSIWYG, which is what you see is what you get. But Mm -hmm. it wasn't WYSIWYG. Okay, Mm -hmm. it was witchcraft. They were doing these Jedi mind tricks on us and we didn't know it. And there are people, literally millions of people who have been horrifically affected by these inversion tactics they have been playing with our minds with forever yep this is this is not new they've been doing this forever in fact with the pandemics and people are gonna uh say that i'm crazy conspiracy theorist but uh even 100 years ago with the spanish flu i did uh, just a even the smallest amount of research and found out that people didn't really get didn't i mean people did get sick from the flu but people died especially the military because they gave them shots and the uh the agent of infection was actually in the shots themselves so many yeah. people died from getting the shots and people that didn't isn't it brilliant shots. how they used that to frame this they, exactly. they, they mm. because it made it plausible that this could happen that that a flu virus like so basically a yep. flu could could mm. actually be could become such a severe problem and then we find out you mm. know even that even that like because that's like an anchor people a reality anchor for people well mm. okay wait is that possible is that plausible well we have the Spanish flu surely that yeah. couldn't have been you know uh, uh you know there couldn't have been something fishy about that that was the old times yep. that was for all the psyops right yeah and <laughs> in psyops. fact. In and fact, it's a real thing. Yeah. In yeah. fact, during the Spanish flu, they did some of the exact same things that they're doing in this in this quote unquote pandemic. Mm-hmm. Wearing of masks, uh, yeah. especially the doctors. Doctors with a you've seen that uh iconic uh well that was earlier, probably that was the 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 hundred years before, probably with the the black plague or 
whatever the one oh, was the, 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 the plague doctors the, the masks yeah, the plague doctors with the masks and stuff yeah so in the spanish flu one they had the masks they had the isolation and the um uh that's not the right word uh quarantine uh, Quarantine. Thank you. I couldn't remember the word. It seems like I should remember that with all the okay. going on. Uh, you should with, have a T-shirt. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> with with the, the mask, the quarantining, and the closing of businesses, all that stuff was exactly the same. This is not a new phenomenon. It is has mm -hmm. happened before, and frankly, with the Black Plague, I mean, there wasn't the same. Uh, the, uh, there wasn't the same production of information back then that there is today. We don't know that that wasn't something. You want to know something really right. interesting about the Black Plague and the Plague Doctors? Well, so part of the um, the legend of quote unquote anti Semitism in, uh, in Europe is that, you know, they, they blamed the Jews for the plague. Well, it's because a lot of the mm. plague doctors were Jewish and they were suspicious of why the Jewish people were not getting sick. And um, and that's actually so that the plague doctor was actually uh, the, the, the mass and everything that, that those were mostly Jews. And and, and, and it was uh, th a lot of uh, people back then suspected that they had literally poisoned the water supply uh, and mm -hmm. that they and that they had um, uh, actually known about it. And that's why they weren't getting sick um, and they were actually mm -hmm. available to treat the sick. Yeah. And so that that's just, I mean, you know, and I don't know if that's true. I don't really know what's true about that whole situation, but it is interesting. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, I know Jordan, uh, what's his name? Jordan Pete, what's it? Jordan Peterson, Jordan B. Peterson, that guy that everybody, mm -hmm. for some reason, like worships. Um, he uh, was wearing a plague doctor uh, costume. Like it was like the Halloween, like last year or the year before mm -hmm. that. I wonder if he, he had a heads up. Uh, yeah. Interesting. Oh, let me ask you, it's, you seem to know quite a bit about this, Brother Chris. Let me ask you a question. I hope I don't stump you. Sure. Didn't these outbreaks, uh, let's, let's stick with the one you said, I think it was the Spanish flu? Spanish flu, yeah. Okay. Don't they occur after, like, tr trauma, like war, and also maybe even famine or something? Uh, yeah, World War One. So, so the Spanish flu happened directly after. In fact, it was still going on at, at, at the beginning of it in 1918, and then the right. effects of it were exactly uh, 1920. So the war was mm. over by then. But the but I mentioned the soldiers. So the soldiers had right. other things to deal with other than just the flu. But when they gave all the soldiers all these shots, they they started dying. Uh, in droves, and then when they came back from the war, they called it shell shock. But I believe, and other people believe that have looked into this, it was because of the some of some of the people didn't die from the shots. Some people, it it caused mental uh, issues and problems. Um, again, there was enough that happened during any war to to cause emotional problems in a person. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. But there's a possibility that some of the sicknesses that the soldiers had when they came back were given to them in a syringe. No doubt about that in my mind. So, yes, to answer, your question, to, yeah, to answer your question, uh, there's always been something that happened uh, before that, that that leads up to it. Yes, because I had mentioned this when the out, well, the pandemic happened. I was warning people that trauma, the fear, will kill you faster than the virus. You've mentioned that. And that trauma, if you experience trauma, a loss of a loved one, uh, uh, physical trauma like an injury, uh, mental trauma like the loss of a job and other things, that there's a list, and I was telling people what, what they have studied. This is studies they have done throughout, let's say, the last 100 years, minimum, to determine what trauma does to the body. Mm -hmm. And that they have determined that based on your score, there's, li there's literally, I forget what the name of the test is. I'll put the link in the description. I'll find a test that you click on, and you print it out. And you can take the test and say, okay, if you've lost your 
a, a, a spouse. That's like 75 points. Okay. If you've lost a job, it's, it's just under that, like maybe around 60 points and you add all of that up and based on the score, they know whether or not, if you've gotten, let's say your score is, um, I'm just throwing something out there because I don't remember the exact numbers, 150 out of 300. They would say that you have, I believe it is a 25% chance, no, it might even be higher than that, of getting sick within the next two years. Mm -hmm. If and, and I'm talking about a serious illness, God mm -hmm. forbid, if you score higher up or closer to 300, and say that you have like a who was that? What was that? Is everything okay? Yes, yeah, I'm outside and something. I think it was oh. my home. I got totally spooked. Oh no. Okay. okay. Sorry, go on. All right. No problem, sister. Uh okay. And then if you score even higher, like uh, around the 300 mark on the points, adding up all those points, that you will get ill within the like a serious illness within the, the next year to two years that based on these points so what i'm trying to point out to you guys is that the the trauma from life's tragedies weighs on your body your mental state your physical state certain amount of stress will deplete for example your b vitamins L literally run you down certain amount of stress will diminish your vitamin d levels oh. and then look how they had all these people telling them to stay inside so you don't get any vitamin D from the sun. Okay. Yeah. To help you get even sicker because uh, I saw a study where it's, they said that vitamin D, D as in David, D3, lowers all causality of death. Now I want you to think about that. All causality of death by 7%. Just taking it. They showed where if a person had during this, this pandemic, if their vitamin D levels were in a normal range, 96% of them recovered. I think, no, 98% of them recovered. It's 98. If they were deficient, meaning they were less than optimum, 88% died. And if they were deficient or, or very low under that, like extremely, like over 90 to per, no, I think it was ninety nine percent. Yeah, ninety nine percent died. I don't have those figures in me. I, I, I in front of me, they're on my computer, and unfortunately, I'm working from my phone tonight. But uh, I'll put a link again, everything I mentioned tonight, in the description so you can see it tomorrow. So you can go see the study, the study this reference. See, I ain't make it up because I want to give you facts, so you know there are options. There's things we can do. This ain't nothing new. How could humanity get here? If this was a new thing, we would have all been wiped out. Yeah. It's not even, lo as Spock would say, it's not logical. So <laughs> how, how come they want us to panic and run in fear and wear all these masks, which could possibly cause hypoxemia and acidosis? And a number of other conditions because you're getting not enough oxygen, oxygen, and possibly breathing in your own bacteria through yep. those masks, rebreathing. Yeah. You know they can actually be more dangerous. I'm say that to make you afraid. I say that so you'll inform yourself and get the facts mm -hmm. and go research it and study for yourself. But there, go ahead, brother Cripps. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to steal any of your thunder. You didn't. You didn't. This is a this is a group effort, in my opinion. I don't think anyone's stealing anyone's thunder. This is fascinating. It always is. It's wonderful. Um, I just wanted to say really quickly that uh, there uh, are you guys from familiar with ODD TV? Yes. Okay. So he <laughs> has recently uh, on May seventh he posted a video that is very informative. Uh, it's called Corona Debunked by Biochemistry. Uh, Jen and I mm. both watched that, and it, it goes into the possibility from, from a doctor's perspective, and there were books written in the 1800s even on this subject, that there, there's no such thing even as a live virus that can be contracted by people. Now, um, it even goes into detail of saying that the, not the Vanderbilts, I can't think of the rich family that was, uh, the, the ones that... Um, 
that do all the uh, Rockefeller uh, Rothschild uh, Ro Rockefeller the Rockefeller group um, w has been in charge of the textbook in public schools for a long time and when they be they got in charge of doing that then that's when all the stuff about the virus started being put in the textbooks but before that people wrote books and talking about this is ridiculous a live virus is uh, there it's there there's no such thing as a live virus um, mm. but yet it's it's so pervasive you know, uh, in this video, it talks about even that, you know, societally speaking, people think that you can actually catch a flu from someone else. And this guy is saying you don't catch a flu. Your body naturally sometimes will pick up a flu. But they did tests mm -hmm. and taking someone that actually had the flu and literally breathing in the other person's face. And they tested mm -hmm. this with several with several different patients and no one caught the flu from in that way. It is not an airborne virus, according to this video. Uh, so mm -hmm. I would strongly suggest anyone, whether you like ODD or or not, this video, he's not even in the video at all. It's uh, a video that he posted uh, with some very compelling information about all this this virus stuff. Um, Brother and, Cripps? Yeah. Could you please email me the link so I can put it in the description for the people to check out? Yeah, I can do that right now, actually, while we're while we're. Oh, talking. that's fine. It can be after the broadcast because I'm going to post all of these references that we've been mentioning in the description for them by tomorrow morning so they can have it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, go ahead. Uh, no, that was it. I just wanted to suggest uh, suggest that video. I tried to post it, but I'm I'm going on my other YouTube right now. I'm mm -hmm. not a moderator, so it, it wouldn't let me. But if, if, if Ben, if you can see that I tried to do that, I don't know if you can approve that. No, or I can't. I can't, but I can probably look it up real quick. Okay. I'll, I think I can find the right one. Yeah, yeah. It's it's just, it's really easy if you go to uh, ODT, oh. ODD TV and you go to the, the videos page, it's Corona Debunked by Biochemistry is the name of the video. And it's from, I believe it's May May twentieth is when it was posted. So that's that's oh, yeah, I did. There you go. That's it. Okay. And I'm looking for your email. There it is. I got it right here because you sent me a video today. So I'm gonna forward forward it from the video that you sent me uh, on the rapture stuff. And I'm going to. Uh... Well, I just, uh, by the powers invested in me, made you a moderator on this channel. Oh, okay. Cool. 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 Okay. I'll, do that. I'll, I'll do that. So you have that now. So you can. Um, oh, Ben just posted it too. Yeah. Thank you so okay, much. Okay. Cool. So, uh, ben, no problem. Ben yep. Okay. Yeah. So well, there it is. If there's nothing more on this subject, everybody said what they wanted to say? Yeah. Okay, great. It was a wonderful discussion. We're getting toward the end of the broadcast. Yeah. So what I wanted to do before we ended was save the best for last. No, nice. no disrespect and intended no. to anybody. No. <laughs> Just uh, having a little fun with words. I thought we could have a little fun since it's so late in the hour and we might somewhat be Punch drunk at this point. <laughs> so oh, some of us to go to Ben. I just uh, he said he had something that he. Was oh, really brother happy. Ben, yeah. you know what? You were so quiet tonight, brother Ben. I forgot all about you. <laughs> My apologies, brother Ben. You got to speak up for yourself back there in the, in the producer's chair. No, I I was listening to what you guys were saying and it was good. Um, I I didn't. I purposely chose it. I the last couple of weeks for me have been really extremely busy, so I haven't had a lot of time to. Prepare mm -hmm. for different things all the all the time. I've been all the time I had. I've been preparing for, for show prep and things like that. So I picked a small topic, um, and okay, and, and I wanted to be respectful for everyone's uh, sleep. <laughs> and so if if we want to postpone it until next week, that's fine. It was a pretty brief segment. It wasn't going to be a continuation of of the Q and on stuff because that's a big topic. And I was so I was going to cover something just a little tidbit, but I, I'd be happy okay. to postpone it until next week if you guys want to. Uh, you guys get no. If, I, if it's just a if it's just a little thing, I'd love to hear it. I told you I'd like to have a a Q segment on here. So Ben is our. We're going to consider him our Q expert because see, I don't have time to go down. <laughs> I don't have time to chase the Q uh, 
information down. I just don't, I really don't even have the interest, but Ben has managed to make it somewhat interesting to me because Ben has a theory. He is convinced. I don't think that's an appropriate word for, for brother Ben here. It, it, let me know if I'm putting words in your mouth, brother, that, that Q is definitely an insider and in some way is uh, affiliated with president Trump. Is, is that correct? Uh, that, yeah, that's absolutely convinced. I, it's, it's, okay. I think that's irrefutable. Um, and I, I'm only interested in that, that he does provide a lot of truth that you're not going to get otherwise. Uh, now, again, I don't, I'm not completely trustful of any man or even mm -hmm. any any man's plans for fixing the woes of this world. I just think it's interesting, and I and I don't I don't trust the direction it's going to into. I think they're they're misguided about their uh, about what they think they can do. But it, it is interesting, if, if nothing else, for a new source. Uh, so that's why I think it's interesting that we, you know, if you guys are interested in talking about it, I'm interested in sharing what I so, know about it. So one of the quick questions, just for a clarification, you are not saying that you think that Q is a genius and that everything that Q says is like new revelation from God and that we should follow it. You're just saying you believe this person is an insider in some way they do because of the type of information that they're divulging. They've got to be somewhere around near or on the inside concerning president Trump. So you think it's legit as far as the sourcing, you're not saying you're in agreement with the agenda. Correct. Well said. Okay. And uh, okay. by the way, uh, I, again, I wasn't planning on covering it this week much, but if you guys want, I'd be happy to do it like, every time we do a, a weekly, you know, spend five minutes on what the latest uh, things yes. that I think are interesting. Just like I'd be interested yes. in what, uh, a breakdown of uh, movies every week or whatever, you know. Uh, it's oh, right. Fun. Okay. Well, okay. Bring us up to speed. Okay. Well, now I, I'm not going to cover Q a whole lot tonight. I, I, I'm just going to cover another topic that I thought was interesting. But um, so here we go. Um, let me share my screen too so everyone can see for a moment. Uh, Okay, so I'm sharing my screen right now, um, and let me uh, also change. So uh, again, I'm sharing my screen right now, and um, the here, here's like a Q drop recently from this week. He tells you right up front that the virus is a hoax. For example, he say he'll say, and again, it's, it, it, you can disagree with his motive and everything else, and I don't agree with the motive, and I, I, you know, I think it's misguided, whatever. But the the, the truth he drops, I think, is irrefutable. Uh, I, and so, mm. one thing he mentions, for example, is the U.S. USA total population is 328 million. COVID deaths, mm -hmm. supposedly, and again, he talks about how the, all the COVID deaths are being, all the pneumonia and flu deaths are way down, almost non-existent. And yet they're mm -hmm. all being accounted as COVID deaths. He basically says, yeah. And so he, he's totally exposing that. And he's saying basically, okay, 328 million people in the U.S., 100,000 uh, people in the U.S. are uh, are supposedly uh, projected to die based on the lockdown. But Japan has 126 million, very condensed on an island. They've only had 850 deaths, and they have no lockdown. And again, what, what he's saying basically is this whole COVID thing is basically a last ditch effort for the deep state to stay in control because they want to do mail in balloting. Um, they want to do mail in ballots, um, and so that they can uh, rob the vote essentially. So, mm -hmm. uh, also too recently, another recent post I talked about George Soros go you got George Soros Soros not escaping justice supposedly. Well, that we'll, we'll see. Time time will tell. Um, but one of the other things too more recently is. Uh, he talks about the Insurrection Act of 1807 and basically that the state and local governments can't keep up with their unrest. And he posted a YouTube video of cops. Uh, it's a Twitter link to cops getting uh, overcome by crowd. Their cops are getting beaten down. And he's basically saying, hey, we're, we're on the basically saying to them, we're on the ready to bring in that send in the National Guard. So you could you could see some martial law being imposed here. Um, yeah, Minneapolis, especially. Yeah. So anyways, that's not what I wanted to cover anyways. Um, the real thing I want to cover is uh, real quick. Again, I, this is I'm doing this uh, by the seat of my pants. Um, but I would say, uh, you know, one thing I, I mentioned this earlier, too, that I, I it just became so crystal clear to me, not only in the Bible, mm -hmm. but in reality, is that God, you could deal with God in two different programs, two ac different economies of working with God. You either receive him at through uh, on the basis of faith, grace through faith, and receive mercy and all his blessings, or you you uh, 
you uh, interact with him based on the economy of law. And, uh, uh, you know, grace always gives freely and expects nothing in return. But the law always is an exchange. You do this, I'll do this for you. If you if you don't do this, then I'm going to do then I'm going to do this to you. So there's blessings based on obedience and cursing based on mm -hmm. uh, disobedience. And mm -hmm. because of our fallen flesh, we only ever get the cursings because uh, we don't do we can't do the the we can't meet the requirements for righteousness. Mm -hmm. And so in that sense, the the law t t from t the relationship man has with the law, it's a thief. That's why Christ is coming as a thief of the night to unbelievers yes. because he's going to take from them uh, what they thought they had, their riches, um, which is the law. And, you know, one thing that um, Christ said, too, that I think uh, is missed. I, I just it, set, it just really set uh, me reeling is that one thing he said to his disciples was that in Luke 16, 8, was that he said, so the master commended, it's, this is a parable. He says, so the master commended the unjust steward because he had dealt sh shrewdly. And he, says, he said to his disciples, for the sons of this world are more shrewd in their generation than the sons of light. So he's saying basically, hey, you, you, you guys, the people of the world, they're more shrewd and crafty uh, about, about what, what they do with their knowledge than what, you, what the sons of, 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 of light do, you know. Um, and so and I, I started to think about that is that, yeah, you know, evil is cunning and it's shrewd and it knows about the law. And so God, I believe God rules the fallen world. You know, he rules people and he rules the follow, this fallen world through laws, not only physical laws, mm -hmm. but spiritual laws. And then we also know the, the law of Moses as well. So God's authority, the way he rules the unfallen, unruly world is through law. Yeah. Um, and, and so, for example, I mentioned before, when you think about the law, it's always bu buying and selling. It's, a, it's an exchange. You do this, I do this. And that's why you hear in, in Scripture that Satan it was traffic, trafficked in souls. And that's why Christ comes mm -hmm. as the thief in the night. Um, mm -hmm. But also, um, the, you know, J Jesus said the unbelieving Jews, uh, he said to them, you are of your father the devil. And again, that's not talking about physical seed. That's, he's basically saying you're reflecting the spiritual character of the first person in the Bible that reflected that that um, that character. So in the, Satan was the first person. Whenever, right. says, whenever God said, the Bible says you are the son of, it means you're reflecting that person's character. And the character you're mm -hmm. reflecting is the first person in the Bible that did that thing. So he said that you you are of your father, the devil, because he wanted to murder, and and he, Satan was the first murderer essentially, because he he was the murderer of of uh, of man, right? So, mm -hmm. um, he said to them that uh, that you are your father, the devil, and um, and, and it's like you know, so it's like father, like father, like son, and so is it any wonder? Just to me, this is a profound spiritual evidence of the of the uh, truthfulness of scripture. Well, okay, so the Jews were steeped. They were under the law. They were steeped in law all their lives, and they mm -hmm. knew how to exploit the law. They they bent, they twisted the law uh, to meet so that they could, thought that they could keep it. And plus, they would twist the law to put under people, uh, people under them, uh, which he called. Jesus said that your disciples essentially are twice the son of hell because not only are they trying to keep the law, but you're not. It's not even a, a perfect law. It's a, it's an in, iniquitous law because you twisted it to your own. Uh, so you could, so you could suit yourself. Well, is it any coincidence? Again, buying and selling is it any coincidence that the, that certain Jewish people in the world are the most crafty and cunning with money? So we see that we see the most the richest people in the world are Jewish people because they're they're crafty. They understand these 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 laws. Okay, and and so I wanted to share something. I mean, I, I say all that to preface something here is that I'm going to share some things here that are spiritual truths. So you may say, Ben, why are you getting into this occultic stuff? Because what I'm saying is it's, it's not occultic. It's 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 tr spiritual truth. It's creation. I think it's truth that God used to to, to um, uh, author creation. But the the evil side, they know about that law too, but they should exploit it and, and twist it. But but what I'm sharing is is it's, 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 it's in and of itself, it's not evil, good or evil. It's just how just like we talked about computers earlier, it can be used for good or, or, or evil purposes. So, um, so there's a lot of things in the Bible that are polemics. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with the idea of polemic, but a polemic is a basically, um, 
it's a uh, it's a refutation. Um, and lots like, for example, people call, call the book of Galatians a Paul's polemic against law keeping. He's trying to say to them, "Hey, are you so foolish? You're gonna try to you're gonna try to." Uh, uh, live your spiritual life through the law when everything, all the success you had and all the joy you had was initially through the spirit. Are you, tr- are you starting out in spirit now going back to law? So it's a polemic. He's making fun of it basically. Um, and the, another thing, uh, and the Bible is replete with these polemics. So uh, not, and there, it goes both ways. The evil uh, tries to uh, put a polemic on believers and believers and God puts a, so evil uh, mocks good and good mocks evil. Um, so like, for example, the uh, Egyptian plagues, each of those plagues was, uh, basically, uh, a plummet on each of the Egyptian gods. So each of the plagues, right. uh, basically refuted each of those Egyptian gods. Um, and also to another plummet would be like second Peter, for example, second Peter, um, you know, he opens up that epistle and says, uh, Hey, to, to, because God give you, because God's given you this great, such great promises, um, that through these promises and the knowledge of God, you can escape the corruption of the world. And because of these great promises, this is how you should conduct yourself. And if you and by with these promises, you can overcome evil in the sin nature, and and you could partake in the divine nature. That's his whole whole premise of Second Peter. But he says, hey, and, and, and but the, and he also says, hey, there's false teachers. However, and it's, instead of their promises. Future, they're going to promise you liberty now, and, and it's going to—they're uh, going to try to get you to indulge into, into sexual corruption, which will you know defile the flesh. And instead of partaking in the divine nature, their their teaching is going to lead you or, or lead you to the uh, to partaking of the beast nature. And that's why it ends it with uh, you know the the, the sow uh, having been washed it returns to the mire, or the dog who. Uh, uh, who vomited up its sickness, basically went back to eat it again. Um, again, I, I think uh, I'm convinced that those were warnings to born again believers and to, and to being fooled by false teaching. Um, so that, that's, that's another area of a polemic. And I think what we're seeing here in first John and John 21 is a polemic. Um, yeah, and this is something I, I, I recently came across and this is not exclusively, you know, I'm not saying this is my idea. This is just stuff I'm, I'm expounding on that I found. But uh, in, in John 21, take, take a look at this. I think it's pretty cool. So I'm going to read the first part of John 21. It says, after these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And in this way, he showed himself. Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana of Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and the two others of his disciples were together. Peter Simon said to him, I am going fishing. So fishing, keep that in mind. They said to him, we are going with you also. They went out and immediately got into the boat. So there's a boat. And that night they caught nothing. So they caught nothing when they went fishing. But when the morning had come, had now come, Jesus stood on the shore Yet the disciples did not know it was Jesus. Then Jesus said to them, children, have you any food? They answered him, no. And and he said to them, cast your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. So keep that uh, that in mind, the right side. So they cast, they cast out a net. And now they were able to draw. And and, and, oh, and now they were not able to draw it in because the multitude of the fish. So they, they caught a multitude of fish based on Jesus' instructions about casting their nets on the right-hand side. Therefore, the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. Now, when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he had removed it, and plunged into the sea. But the other disciples came in the little boat, for they were not far from land, but about 200 cubits, dragging the net with fish. Then as soon as they had come to the land, come to land, they saw a fire of coals there and fish laid on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish, which you have just caught. Simon Peter went up and dragged the net to the land full of large fish, 153. So it's really curious. Why, why mention that number 153? It stands out like a sore thumb. So I thought it was curious. Okay. 153. What's the significance of that? Okay, so we're going to continue reading here. So Simon Peter went up and dragged the net to to land, full of large fish, 153. And although there were so many, the net was not broken. Jesus said to them, come to eat breakfast. Um, Okay, so that's that's the basis of that, what I want to preface this with. Well, 
Um, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with the concept of a Vesica Pisces. It's a very uh, cult thing, and apparently, uh, I mean, it's not a cult mm -hmm. thing. I think it's a, it's a spiritual truth, uh, a truth of, of creation. In fact, you see the Vesica Pisces in a lot of variations of it. So from the Vesica Pisces, you get things like the Fibonacci sequence. Yeah. Um, you get yeah, you get the Fibonacci sequence. Uh, what else do you get? I, I oh, you get the golden ratio. There's all kinds of things. Uh, in fact. Pythagoras, a lot of his theorems were based on uh, that fundamental truth. It's just something he observed in creation. Um, so you see the, the Vesica Pisces here. Um, you can re read more about it. But um, let me go here. Oh, we got one second. I don't want to. Okay. So if you go to Vesica Pisces, what you see here is. Can you guys see my screen, by the way? I can. Okay. Um, the. 153, I see right away. Right, right, right. So basically, what well, a pipe is you have two intersecting circles, but the, the the center the 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 center of it is it's in the mid center. So the, where they cross is in the mid center of each circle. And if you measure that out, it's it's a it's a it's a it's a ratio. You get 265 and 153. So I believe right there you get 153. Well, look at this Vesica Pisces. Does that not look like a boat to you? A boat. Yeah, and then yeah. on the right hand side, you have the net being drawn and on the right hand side we know jesus is on the right hand side of the father and so he they're casting mm. their net basically in his lot and so they, from that getting that lot uh you know casting their net with jesus they get much uh uh fruitfulness uh, um so i i thought that was interesting um and, and also, I think this may be a stretch i just want to add this because this is kind of exciting if you look at the bottom of where the two circles intersect and look at the whole uh median it looks yep. like the the fish uh, the fish side. Yes, yes, I was going to show you that. Yeah, I agree. Oh, yep. sorry. <laughs> okay, no, no, sorry. Yeah, that, that's very cool. Uh, I thought that was really neat. And so, um, and by the way, Vesca Pisces meet it's Latin for the phrase. It's a Latin phrase meaning vessel of fish. Um, let me just see here. Just a couple points I want to make sure I didn't. Uh, I want. I want to make sure I touch. Um, fascinating so far so okay uh let's look at here oh here's another uh, so the, the pyramids and um i could go into this too this is i just when i saw this like a wall because i know this is something that alistair crawley was big into but it's basically the sphinx in front of the uh pyramid um and basically the pyramid i think is a, is a really a kind of a picture of lucifer's light um and i could go into that another time but there you see these this these various uh formulas and variations of the Vesca Pisces in in the the, the ancients knew about this. It, they call it sacred geometry. Um, so we saw that. Uh, oh, the the Masonic square and compass has Vesca Pisces built into it, basically. Um, and so they they know about that as well. There's all kinds of interesting patterns you'll see if you study that. But again, I think ultimately, oh, like you said, Crips. I get, I thought I had a picture of this. Maybe I don't. Let me see. Um, yeah, there, yeah, so there, let me go through a little more again. Oh, Solomon's Temple was based off these formulas as well. Um, there's all kinds of very interesting things about it, but I don't think that story of 153 fish was coincidental. The imagery it just locks in, into place. Um, and there's again, the, the, the cult, of course, knows about these rules, these laws of creation, I think, and they know how to exploit them for evil. Uh, just like I said, the Jews know the law and they exploit, you know, they exploit that barter buying and trading there. They, 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 you, I don't think it's any coincidence that the, 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 the richest people in the world are Jewish. Um, right. uh, here's right. Here's the Jesus fish. Like you said, uh, and I don't think that's any coincidence either. And so I think God adds those Easter eggs into his creation for us to find, yep. of course, the cult uh, twists it and wants you to put it into it, you know, put it in, into misdirection into a, uh, into you know so they can, uh, again the cult exploits it in other ways um so just very interesting i thought um and I so agree. that's all i would really kind of leave you guys with um and i i think it's more to talk about but I, again i didn't have a whole lot this week so i wanted to um well, there's the vatican and there's the washington monument right right Probably. look at that right it's still, Look at that. Yeah, I think, and again, I, there's again, I think it's obvious that, that the Vesca Pisces can also be seen as a uh, 
female genitalia, and obviously the obelisk is the it's it's very uh, phallic. My God, yeah, yeah, my very, God. very very phallic. Yep. Yep. And and I, I haven't put it all together yet. I haven't put all these things together yet. I'm just laying out some breadcrumbs because I'm sure. That's, oh, that's great. I'm convinced. Yeah, I'm convinced. All these mm -hmm. things that one day are all we're gonna go. Oh, I see how it all ties in. I've yep. got definitely you know mm -hmm. gotten puzzle pieces, um, but it, it helps you understand the enemy's plans. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> Oh, Anywho. and I saw briefly. Okay, so you have the symbols from different companies. There's a lot to be found in those too. Oh yes. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. Symbols, symbols. Symbols from companies. Yeah, maybe one night we can uh, do a, a segment on that and how all of these, what they call them, interlock interlocking partnerships, and how Public there's like supposedly yeah. right, but there's like these corporations where basically all of them interlock going all the way up the pyramid and there's like seven of them that run it all people have done all these flow charts and well, <laughs> amazing I, that I, show I, that they all interlock well I, for example there's a picture of alistair crowley and he's got a picture of an egyptian headdress on and he's putting his head he mm -hmm. puts his hands on his cheeks okay yeah. we, we talk about sphinx being code for sphincter he's got his yep. hands on yep. his cheeks and there's a phallic symbol going up to his to his head, basically making a foul symbol up to his head, and I think that's that he's wearing Egyptian, and he's got that little uh, light uh, eye, all sig eye. I think it's Satan's uh, false light of enlightenment, and it goes back to ancient Egypt. Yeah. Egypt. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. It it's uh, yeah, we you know it's well, uh, explains uh, the homosexual yeah. agenda. Essentially. Yeah, exactly. And you know why? Mm -hmm. It also too. I think it too. What's you know, homosexuality? It's in vain. It's it, that's all about Satan. Satan does everything in vain. Or he wants us to do everything in vain, just like you know. But the, about the you can't, you know, homosexual habits, you can't. They can't pr produce life, so it's and done it's in vain. Version. Yeah, yeah. It's inversion uh, as well. Exactly. Yeah. You're basically spilling your seed in a bottomless pit. pit. Um, oh, oh, gross. But yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, that's how they think. You know, if, you know. One day I kind of thought, like, I, I kind of had. I go. I wonder if that's Satan. I yeah. wonder if Satan is. That, is that... Sorry, guys. Okay. I saw one day, like I bet you, Satan is is like the uh, uh like a, a spoiled <laughs> little playground school kid who's got the most depraved mind and the stupidest silly jokes. And and I and I when I start when that came to me, I realized, oh yeah, mm. every, everyone that's into that is is into that, <laughs> you know. Um, that's a good mm. point. I mean, the, the vile jokes that people right. tell, the, just the childish, the yeah, just Bible childish. Makes it clear that we're not to engage in those in that language. And I'm not just talking about swearing. God invented language. I'm not just talking about swearing. I'm talking about the vile jokes that people tell. Right. Right. Yeah. It's just. It's yeah, crazy. we. I think we got that. Yeah. Be because they're sliding a lot of that stuff into television more and more. That there's no joke ever. I don't care who you are. That is appropriate ever to sexualize a child. There's nothing funny about it. Amen. Nothing. Amen. And they're sliding in jokes about the sexualization of children. Yeah. I mean, look at the beauty, the, the child beauty pageants. Are you kidding me? And that's not right. even jokes. I'm just, I'm tying that in what mm -hmm. you're saying. Mm -hmm. They're yeah. parading children on a stage and, oh, it's so cute. She's acting like a woman and she's, she's, She's dressing up and she's got makeup on and, and she's doing her little hits and, and all that stuff. Gross. Gross. Right. It absolutely is wrong in every way. I don't care what anyone says. Uh, yes. it, it's They're doing it in plain sight and passing it off as cutesy cutesy. And it right. is, uh, well, I guarantee you that pedophiles out there are watching that and they're getting charged mm -hmm. off on that. On that. No oh, yeah. doubt about it. They're trying to normalize it. It's, yep. it's first, they, first they, like you said, call for tolerance, then demand for acceptance, and then for participation. Mm -hmm. Your kids must be be in these parades right. too, or, or it's less kids dress up dresses opposite sex day at school. Kids, you know, uh, right? You can predict with it. You can predict how, you know, it how how you generate. Yes, and then they use it. They use all of it as part of their system. For either categorizing and labeling and oh, yeah. making their little list and checking it twice to see who's divergent. 
Yep. Uh, and who pushes back? All of that's yep. all a part of it. Yep. The the cross dressing thing's been done for years in movies and TV shows, and it's funny. Bosom buddies. Okay, so you got Tom Hanks, one of the major heavy hitters, uh, in in yep. uh, in the system. Okay. Mm-hmm. And his first first televised show that he was part of was Bosom Buddies, where they dressed up like mm-hmm. women to try to save money on on college or whatever. Um, uh, t- movies, popular movies, some like it hot with some of the biggest stars at the time. Mm-hmm. They had to dress up like women to yes, blah blah blah. It's it's been there for a long time. It's not a new thing, but they again they turn it up slowly. They can't just hit you with everything. But if they pass it off as, hey, this is funny, guys dressed up like women. This is just a joke, guys. Come on, it's just a joke. Flip they're, Wilson. They're normalizing it. All the way back, he was a man in drag on TV. Mm-hmm. All of it's meant first, like like Ben said, you know, they'll get you to laugh at it. You had Three's Company with John Ritter, where he played a uh, gay guy, a uh, gay man yeah, with right. two so called beautiful. Um, like a blonde bombshell and then the, the other roommate and, and you know, how he would, he was faking so-called being gay, but getting, he was turned on by them, Mm -hmm. you know? So they had this whole, almost like what they call double entendre type stuff where they're messing with your mind both ways. Double, triple, Uh, quadruple on that. Right. Uh, Like a a threesome kind of thing. All of that was, all of that was incorporated in that. And just going, They've been doing it <laughs> ad nauseum forever. And and I was researching something about when I was discovering uh, that they had done two versions of the Ten Commandments. One of the things that they did in these movies, they started with biblical movies because they knew that America had a high Christian uh, populace. And like I said, even if they weren't what we would call uh, saved by grace individuals, they believed the Bible was God's word. They believed in, in family and God and country. <laughs> and so they had to tear this type of stuff down, this social um, structure. And what they did was they made movies that were biblical, biblically centered. In other words, they took characters from the Bible and they would tell you about Samson and Delilah. But they would highly sexualize it and they'd get away with doing stuff because it was a biblical film and this was their agenda. So when people, they couldn't look, they say, well, we think this is over the top the way you depict, but it's in the Bible. (laughs) So people would back down because they didn't want to speak against the Bible. And they said, well, that's true. It is in the Bible. Wow. And and this yes this I read an article about this this was a tactic that they used to break down the family the social mores and all that little by little and that's why they started with all those biblical films that started right around in the 30 the the, the late 20s early 30s and 40s so that people would allow and acquiesce yeah. to the evil they saw because they were biblical films and it was in the bible yeah. Yeah, the whole uh, uh, sexual innuendo around the golden calf. Exactly. In the Ten Commandments movie, for instance. I was a kid when I saw that. I, I was like, ooh, well, oh, they're dancing around pro- provocatively. And, oh, you know, I can watch this. I was exactly. a kid. I mean, it, I was really a kid because when it came on TV, they they, they brought it on every year around uh, around the same time. Oh, well, that was a uh, kid. Uh, you know, this, is a, this is kind of a common but the, uh, this is no accident either. National Geographic and the and the naked, uh, right? You know, na- <laughs> yes, I remember that the magazines with the topless women that usually were um in Africa or whatever. Yeah. And so because it was considered like documentary in yes. its in its in its uh, content, yes. you you didn't have to worry about picking it up at a newsstand. Nobody nope. would bother you. Yep. And so boys would run to go see that. Yep. I remember that happening when they I was it in my private uh, young... school in the library. They had the yeah. National Geographics in there, and I did that. I did that. I admit it. Right. I mean, it wasn't just me. We laughed at it. it oh, wasn't, yes. It wasn't really no, everybody yeah. did it. Everybody was looking and astonished. They like, they allowed this in magazine. I remember my friends going, they they just have it all out. No, we was like, 
huh? <laughs> they, in, and it, in, it's okay. Um, my uh, <laughs> they they did it in magazine mag brazier uh, uh brazier and panties right. and J C Penny and Sears right. catalog. They did it. In oh there. yeah. But yes. uh, before we move off the subject, you were you uh, brought something up in my mind uh, when you were talking about Three's Company. Um, that was actually a show that my grandparents, uh, my mom's parents, uh, let us watch when we go there and spend summers there. They had no idea they they weren't they weren't aware of, uh, of even what it is. They just thought it was comedy and they liked to watch it, so they let us watch it with them. And I remembered the song. So mm -hmm. I pulled up the lyrics real quick, and I want to make mm. a point. Do you mind if I read the lyrics from the theme? No, please go right ahead. Okay, I'm not going to sing it. I could sing it because I remember it, but <laughs> I'm just going to read it. Um, Come and knock on our door. We've been waiting for you. Where the kisses are hers and hers and his, Three's Company too. Come and dance on our floor. Take a step that is new. We're a, we're a lovable space that needs your face. Three's Company 2. You'll mm. see that life is a ball again. Laughter is calling for you down at our rendezvous. Three's Company 2. Mm. Wow. That, that to me, reading it now as an adult, I didn't understand it as a kid. I just, again, I thought it was just a, a funny comedy. I love John Ritter. I thought he, his Pratt Falls and stuff reminded me of Dick Van Dyke. Very similar and and the way that their bodies move and falling over ottomans and couches and stuff like that. I just thought that was funny. Yeah, I grew up on that that show. I, had, I got to watch it, too. I remember watching it in first and third, like first, second, third, fourth grade. I, yeah, yeah, I grew up on that I show. I was young. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And it was risque, too. You know, right. the, uh, we're going down. What was the name of the bar uh, that they went to? Oh. Yeah. Uh, it's on the tip of my brain, but they had a bar that they would always go down to, and there was, was another. Was it Sandy's Tavern or Sandy's? No. No. Uh, okay. Uh, or Jack's Bistro. <laughs> oh well, that uh, later, yeah, he he opened a restaurant or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, the Regal were, Beagle, the Regal Beagle. Regal, thank you. Yes. Thank okay. You. Okay. Regal Beagle. And uh, one of Jack's friends was a real womanizer. He was always into some some scam or something to get get women, and they would go down the Regal Beagle and and uh, try to check out girls. Um, but watching the show as a kid, I didn't notice any of that. Uh, but it was very risque. It really, really was very mm -hmm. risque back then. Didn't even didn't even know it. But that stuff was programmed. In my brain at an sure. early age. Yep. They're trying to program us. Mm -hmm. No doubt about it. Three is companies. Uh, yep. You know, the whole just, just subtle destruction and attack very subtly because yeah. they don't want too much pushback yeah. on the family. Yeah. I've said let's this before in one other broadcast, and then go ahead, go ahead. I just said, let's do threesomes. It's fun. It, this is all about right. fun, guys, the threesome. That's what that's about. Kisses are her. And, her right. Mm. It, was, <laughs> it was in the title. Yep. I mean, in the title. subtly, it was right there in the title. Yep. Uh, it was out in the open. Christians who had eyes to see were speaking out against the stuff, were raging against it. But everybody's like, oh, well, it's not that bad. But see, I have a um, a, a meme that I have, uh, I think it's in the rotation, that says, if I, if not, I'll, I'll be adding it next week, that uh, the only thing, this is a partial uh, quote from that, that the devil needs, he doesn't need uh, resistance, he doesn't need any type of struggle, all he needs is acquiescence. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what many, and I'm not going to blame everybody, in the church has done. Compromise, acquiescence, mm -hmm. gave Satan place. Yeah. And look where we are today. Fast forward to today. They've been doing it in drips and drabs mm -hmm. since the inception of television. Television was not made for your enjoyment. It was, but it wasn't. That's a mm -hmm. part of the capture. It has to be enjoyable. Otherwise... You wouldn't do it. Listen. So they, I, I, oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> no, finish, okay. and then I got to add something real quick. Okay. So the, that's that's the whole like carrot and the stick thing. 
Well, it gave you the carrot, but the stick is going to be ours and we're going to beat you with eventually. <laughs> but go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Now, for these, for these TV shows, initially, they would not show a married couple sleeping in the same bed. That's right. I love Lucy. Ricky and Lucy, they had separate beds. They had yes. separate beds. The first, you know what the first TV show that showed a married couple sleeping in the same bed? The Brady Bunch. <sighs> Oh, okay. The Brady Bunch. And ironically enough, the actor who played uh, Mr. Brady was gay in real life. Of course, that was Hosh right. Hosh until later. He died. Right. Supposedly, supposedly from AIDS. Right. Uh, but he did die. Okay. So that right. was that was when it changed in uh, 68, 1968. As far as I know, I, someone might prove me wrong. But as far as I know, uh, that was talked about as being uh, as being the the enlightenment time, where people were okay to see a married a quote unquote fictional married couple to to be in the same bed, and they had lots of scenes where the kids would come up and they were in bed, you know, read the newspaper or whatever, get ready to say good night, and there the two of them were in bed. But yeah, they would not mm -hmm. show the, the uh, Dick you, Van Dyke show and I Love Lucy popular shows that right. started out in black and white, things like that. And uh, shows before that, earlier than that, uh, I can't think of the one that had um, Patty Duke as a child actress mm -hmm. in it. I can't think of the name of it. But they never showed the married couple at all in bed, in, in separate bed, bed right. or, or otherwise. That was a black Yeah, and white. Leave It to Beaver. Oh, yeah, they never showed them in bed. Mr. Mm. and Mrs. Cleaver cut Mr. and Mrs. Cleaver. If they did show somebody in bed, it would be like he's at home sick and she was not in the bed with him. You know, she's taking care of him. Yep. It wasn't, you know, it's yeah. set what they call sexual situations. Yeah. See, leave it to Beaver back then. They were perpetuating the thing that was popular in the culture at the time, which is the man worked and the woman was in the kitchen and, and wore a dress and high heels every day. Right. That right. was what but they were know, pushing back then. Something I want to go back to point out about the Brady Bunch that always bothered me. And I I didn't realize until I was much older. The the shortness of the dresses for the little girls. Oh, wow. And, and a lot of these movies, okay, and a lot yeah. like Shirley Temple. That Don't used to start. always bother me. I didn't know why, and I didn't really say it, but I always thought, why is her dress so short? I'm sorry. There is a rabbit hole involved there, guys. They're, they're with Shirley. Oh, Temple. I know that now. You but then it. I had no idea. My sister and I watched them all. All the, they, they played them on Saturday on, on, on TV, the Shirley Temple movies. I've seen them all. There's not a single one I didn't see. <laughs> I grew up with those. Shannon and I used to dance. My sister and I used to dance around in, in, in the living room and, you know, copy her little dances, you know. Mm -hmm. Animal crackers in my soup, you know, and all, all the little, little cutesy uh, songs that she sang. But yeah. it is gross as an adult. And you go back and look at those. Shirley Temple kissing some, some adult. Grown man. Mother on the mouth and sing yes. as if it's a romance. Yes. Wow. The, the child romancing some full grown man. And so yeah, there's the a bunch of stuff knowing yeah. what I know about Hollywood now I can't watch anymore. Yeah. At all. There there uh, this is gross and I hope there's no kids listening at at, at this hour uh to to this broadcast. But there's one dance, one particular dance where it's on a boat and I forget the name of it. But uh, literally, the the provocative dance, she's rubbing up against his crotch. And it's subtle, mm -hmm. but the way that he's leaning back, it, it's, it, it is um, simulating, simulating things, if you have eyes to see. What subtle what like Joe, Joe Biden? <laughs> Joe Biden doesn't simulate anything. He comes out and gropes. And on no, no, Straight as out. As he, yeah. But yeah, I got the inference there, brother. Okay. Uh, that's all. That's it, all yeah. yeah, no, I was talking about uh brother Ben. We get it with the the Joe Biden reference. It well, that's why they call him creepy Joe. But yeah. Uh they're put they put it right in your face uh what they relish and what they mm -hmm. 
do and what's a part of their lifestyles and <coughs> oh my goodness uh i know it, it gets it gets dark it gets ugly it gets deep to consider these things that's why you know i started to realize when we when we talked about and we'll just we'll get to the fun thing next week we're gonna close out the broadcast on on this topic because it's, I think it's a little late. And what I have was was kind of gonna have to make your brain work anyway. And okay. I don't want y'all to blow a gasket on that. So we'll start the broadcast off with it next week, and that brings people back. Awesome. But um, when I was thinking about this stuff about I don't know four or five years ago, I was watching something, and I'm not gonna throw the show under the bus because I don't even want nobody to go watch it. <laughs> it may not be watching. It's assault on you. Your psyche anyway, but I was watching it and I said, Lord, why am I watching this show? I wouldn't have these people for friends. It's one of them reality shows, right? I wouldn't have these people for friends in real life. So why am I giving them an hour of my life watching TV? Yeah. Because their 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 conduct, not that I'm a snob or anything like that. It's just that you know, as a believer, there are certain things you can't fellowship with. Yeah, And when you see that people are into certain lifestyles and or death styles, mm -hmm. you don't fellowship with them. I didn't say you don't say hello. I don't say you don't talk about the weather or how was your trip, but you're not in circles where you're sitting there having coffee and tea and talking and laughing and joking and having parties and all that stuff. You can't. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I stopped watching it. And then there was other stuff. I started like criminal minds and all of the law and order junk and because they were introducing absolute demonic evil dark wickedness i mean some of the law and orders particularly special victims unit yeah. talks about the most filthy nasty disgusting degrading things you ever heard in your life yep. and they do it on purpose and they call it entertainment or they'll say it's based on a true story. My, yeah, I don't believe it. They are interjecting just like the Bible said when Jesus said that as in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the son of man. Mm -hmm. Will you go back and look the Bible references many things. One of the things that I focused on, was only evil continual. The yeah. thoughts were only evil continual. Right. And even as, as bad as men are today, we still, thankfully, Lord, have not reached only evil right. continual. People right. are still taking care of their families. They're still working their jobs. They're still loving their husbands. They're still loving their wives. But could you imagine? I don't want you to. Only evil continually. And that's what that television <laughs> in these last days is projecting it's programming us it's yes getting us ready all these things that they're hinting around like the alien deception and all that stuff they're getting us ready all the movies are truth in plain sight preparing us for what is going to happen it's programming right. us uh uh to be ready for and what not only the image is, of the beast mm -hmm. and not only are people eating it they're quote unquote binging on it you know they yes. can't get, can't get yes. it in fast enough Oh, go ahead, Ben. Well, Binging. Yes. That's a part that's eating, that's feasting, and that in fact that's gorging. It's like saying right. gorging, binging on something. What when I You're first heard when I first heard somebody ahead. binge watching, it's like, how can you say that and not be feel ashamed, you know? It, it, mm. it may be one thing if you're binge watching something like a scientific program or something about mm -hmm. God, or, you know, but people first said to me, I, yeah, I binge watched like oh, Yeah, binge okay. watch the chosen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I, mean, I was like, why? There was no shame in that. It's like, don't you feel you feel ashamed? Like when I was a kid, I don't know. I, I always felt ashamed to be, yeah. Hey, I had nothing better to do all all day except live in someone else's reality on, on a on a. Yes. Well, they, 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 they've desensitized us, and I'm including myself. Right. How much of our life? What do they say when they they do those statistics and they say you spend a third of your life in bed? Right. Which yeah. that's one thing we might need to consider. Maybe we sleeping a little bit too much because you are they, that's wow. life you can't get back. Okay. Yeah. Then yeah. the other, then the other is, uh, you spend the average person spends. I remember when they used to say about two hours a day watching TV. What yeah. is it now? Six, six, five or six. The average is about six hours. Last time I uh, saw something on it. 
That's but a part time it's job. That. Since binge watching <laughs> is okay, it's more than that. The word binge has turned from right. something that was bad about drinking to mm-hmm. something that is good about watching programming. Yeah. And people are excited about it. I've done it. I've, I've, I've quote unquote binge watched certain shows. For me, it's more right. like I want to get it. Get because it up why? Before. You got hooked. <laughs> I've done it too. I, I got it too. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But look at the language. I got hooked. Right. <laughs> so right. it's a hook. You know, the hook is what you do to catch a fish. Yeah. Got hooked, catch a fish, get it, get it, get it done with as quick as possible. Right. Uh, breaking. I mean, they, 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 they're straight telling us it. It. Oh, 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 yes. That's another good example of how they they take these cops, cop shows, and uh, validate them being dark and wicked and yeah, evil and excusing it. Yeah, they're trying to catch them. It's under the guise of the good guys versus bad guys. That's the guys. But you gave a good example in Criminal Minds. That show got so... I used to watch it, I'll be honest. Mm-hmm. Watch mm-hmm. It. And then toward the end, it got so dark, I couldn't watch it anymore. I they, yes, Their desensitization of me ended. It literally ended. I was like, okay, I'm yep. not, it, it it it's it it's way too. Well, well, can you guys give me like a slight hint of what what like what how bad it got? Like what were they? Well, when okay, so oh yeah, please do, brother Cripps. So when one <laughs> of the one of the good characters in the show was starting to the the, the storyline, and correct me if I'm wrong, Ben, but the storyline became that he had some of these tendencies himself, and he started to 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 be tempted, right quote. To start doing some of the stuff. It's like, oh, well, he's seen so much that it's in his head and you can't get it out of his head. And the actor actually uh, left the show. But in the in the show, he was taking time off to to kind of get away from his urges and stuff. Yeah. Right. That in was, other words, he was becoming the thing he despised. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. And that's when I that's when I was like. It, it, every show that they had then from that point on, it, it, I just couldn't, I just couldn't do it anymore. I should have quit long before that. So let me admit that publicly. Mm-hmm. I, I should have mm-hmm. never quote unquote gotten hooked on a show like that, but I did. I, I'm just as susceptible. This is before I was awake, but I'm just as susceptible in my humanness, in my flesh to being hooked by something in the world as anyone else. Oh, yeah, well, brother, too. they don't start with the darkest stuff first, though. No. See, they know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Because when that program first started, it wasn't that dark. Mm-hmm. They had really good writing, really good backstories to the characters mm-hmm. that they developed. And you get attachment to them and you have your favorite characters. Oh, they know what they're doing. And they pull you in mm-hmm. and then they start slipping in the, the darkness, the, yep. the really dark demonic and evil stuff and yeah. they they pull you into it oh wow and they titillate you with it and that listen that is to for people who are unregenerated especially pull you into something because if a person god forbid got s- sexual excitement from the 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 torture and the rape and and, and the evil stuff that they were showing that's what they're trying to pull people into. Mm-hmm. And I personally believe that when uh, I'm going to shift the topic just a little bit, when they get their stars on the walk of fame, that that is the devil's reward. Notice they get pentagrams, mm-hmm. five-pointed star. Oh, yeah. That's their reward for a job well done according to Satan's tally of how many souls they deceived that dropped into hell. I can't prove it. But I think that's what that is. Uh, I think you're making a strong. You don't have to prove it. I think at least you're making a strong argument. Hmm. That's also a strong the, argument in my mind. Based yeah, on, because you know it's not at the beginning of their career. They don't instantly get a star. They work for that star for years. Many of them years and years, and some of them get awarded one posthumously. Mm-hmm. So true. true. Yeah, <laughs> there is something to that, and I think there's also something to that red carpet. Why are they always walking on the red carpet? I personally think that's a mockery to the Lord, blaspheming the shed blood of Jesus, but I can't prove it. Mm. Yeah, trampling, trampling over it. Yes. 
Well, it's also a, a, a brother man symbol for ascendance. The color red is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's ascendance. They use colors just as much as symbols. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Brother man. They, they communicate in a million different ways that we didn't know about. I had a, a, a good friend of mine. She said, Lisa, why? We grew up. We listened to music. We loved music. Yeah. Yeah. Why none of these songs don't make any sense? They don't make sense anymore because they're not talking to you. Right. She said, what you mean? <laughs> so I've been trying to wake her to stop listening, but she mostly listens to a lot of the old stuff from like the 60s, uh, the, the doo-wop type stuff and the, and the love song. She's into that. But sometimes she'll turn to the modern stuff and listen to the radio. And she go, I don't understand what they're saying. What are they saying? I said, they're not talking to you. It's like I said, like when Elton John wrote that song, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. Mm -hmm. That song didn't make no sense. He's singing about the devil. There's a whole lot of songs that are like that. I said, you don't understand. They're speaking in what's called witchcraft language. Yeah. They have like 3,000 words or more, and they're communicating. Just like when you have a CB radio, there's a certain lingo that they use. The cops have codes. Yeah. Yeah. That they call out <laughs> on the radio. Yeah. Uh, this is uh one you've seen this in the movies. One eighty seven, yeah. murder, death, kill. Yeah. So <laughs> they know what. Look at the media. If it bleeds, it leads. You know they 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 know what they're doing. This ain't no accident. Programming again. Exactly. The same word because that's what it is. They're programming. It is. Words. It is. Yep. Your mind turns things over that's why you'll hear something you want to i give you proof that songs have witchcraft in them you'll be in a store department store supermarket one of those places and they playing a song that you'll believe it. you don't want to hear the song you don't care nothing about the song the lyrics might be demonic and you know it and if you spend any time in that store sometimes they'll play that song two or three times before you get out of the store it happens. You might be in a store 30 or 45 minutes, and in the rotation, they will have played that song three times. And before you get out of that store, you'll be humming it. And then you can't get it out of your head for the next two or three yep, days. Yep, yep, yep. They and call they, that an earworm. Yeah, they get you twice, too. <laughs> Hear this. They get you twice, too, because when you're young, it's rock and roll radio. And then as you get older... When you're walking around a department store or, or something like a doctor's office, then it's switched over to what they call Muzak. And you hear Led Zeppelin songs in Muzak. Mm -hmm. They just mm -hmm. change it change it up so that when you're older, it still brings the lyrics to mind. As an, old, as, as an adult, as someone that's older and has calmed down, you're not your former rock and roll self, but they're still giving you the programming. Right. They're calling up oh, that yeah. memory of when you were into rock and roll. And even though you're not now, now they just give it back to you. It's regurgitated in a different way. So it's calmer, it's smoother, but it's still doing the same thing it did back then. Come on back to us. Yeah. We we still love you. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, oh, that brings back why you had fun times when you were younger and you were playing that stuff and listening to it. They mm -hmm. trying to pull you back into it, hook you back into it. Yeah. And do you think it's any coincidence that some of the quote unquote best bands ever, uh, mm -hmm. had, they had the best music, got the most play and were the most popular? Ballads and love songs, right. Some of the biggest rock, uh, heavy one? metal bands had some of the best love songs. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like hair rock. Uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Hair the rock. hair bands from back in the 80s. They do a they, ballad. They, you know. People are yes. bending over themselves crazy. Like, oh, this is awesome. Right. And so did you run out and buy the album? You know, it, so here's the thing. It was some of that stuff is really, really well done music. And then I'm yes, Christian music. That is bubblegum crap. Right. It's bubblegum crap. I, and I used to say that as a believer, I would choose to listen to secular stuff because they don't even try with Christian music. They don't even try. Mm -hmm. it, but mm -hmm. I understand it now that some of the Christian labels were owned by the same people that own the right. secular. I understand that That's now. That's right. 
But yes. back then, I couldn't even listen to it. I had people saying, oh, you listen to praise and worship? I said, heck no, I don't listen. No, no it's, it's horrible. I'm not going to do that to my ears. It's it's a bunch of crap. For Christian music, I found back then, the best artists were the ones who were what I called independent. Yes. They didn't even go on the circuit, the public circuit. They went privately to churches and sang their music. Yep. And their their lyrics would be amazing. Yeah. But because it wasn't like you saying bubblegum. <laughs> it's it's there it's horrible. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. You're right. Well, though. guys, do you know? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, just one more thing. When I got mm -hmm. older, uh I I I was when the in, in with the advent of the internet, I was actually able to find some independent Christian artists that were doing good stuff that that sounded right. as good if not better than the mainstream secular stuff. They're out there. That's right. But you couldn't find them. If it wasn't played on the radio back then, you had mm -hmm. no idea it was out there. No idea. That's right. The only way I found out about certain people was because they had what I called the the church circuit. <laughs> they they would appear at a church and because they were so outstanding that pastor or ministers would recommend them to another church. And then that church would give them a call and say, Hey, can you come uh, sing and do praise and worship here? And then they would go and they would get invited literally from church to church around the country. They, and then maybe once they had enough uh, knowledge from the people word in the church, mouth. in other words, right. Word of mouth, they could put an album out. Uh, a lot of them ended up producing their own stuff and having their, you know, finding like one small Christian label. Back then, there were still some left. Yeah, that's true. And they get the, they get it out, and it 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 might do what. But what was interesting, what was fascinating about Christian music, was if you were a a Christian artist, your stuff, unlike the stuff in the world, which it did have a um, oldies but goodies type thing that it would slide to. Mm -hmm. Christian music was timeless because you kept having people that was getting born again and then they find out about these people and they, they'd be buying the stuff. They, the albums would never stop selling mm -hmm. because it wasn't based on, uh, at the time anyway, how things sounded. Right. It was a conviction and how people were being led by the spirit. So there's a lot of good old Christian songs you can go back and listen to and you'll still love them as much as you did then because it ain't about the music. It was about the words. The mm -hmm. power of Christian music is in the words. And because they were writing good lyrics loaded with scripture, correct, doctrinally correct. Mm -hmm. You weren't getting some weird doctrine. And it lifts your spirit. People that are Christian, they don't care nothing about, oh, it's 25 years old. Not then they didn't. Right. Now, I don't, I don't know how people feel now because I don't follow that stuff like, like I used to. Right. Because after I got burned by somebody, I'm just going to leave nameless because we go down that road will be another hour. Uh, <laughs> in Christian music, I I, I just kind of walked away from it after that. Hmm? Lauren Dangle. Say? No. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, the one that used to be married to uh, Gary Chapman that's now married to Vince Gill. <laughs> oh, I know that. Yeah, yeah. We're we'll talking about that another night. I got in trouble for the video I posted no on problem. that. So. No problem. I, I can wait. I've actually seen that she, person in concert a couple times because I went to. I Fair have too. Tuesday, yes. And they brought and, all kinds of, uh, uh, Christian artists to uh, to mm -hmm. uh, PTL. Yes, so, and now they're hugged up with the Catholic Church pushing ecumenicalism. Yes, they are. I saw that, <laughs> sister. I, I, I saw that very thing. Thank you for confirming. I'm not making it up. No, and people not. didn't understand when I put that video up. I really should have called it the, the person's name and then an exercise in discernment <laughs> because Ooh. people thought I was attacking a personality, which I was not. Mm -hmm. I was exposing the leaven that they had injected <laughs> throughout their career. Yeah, uh, and it was a soft, what I call a soft, slow seduction away from Christ. Mm -hmm. But anyway, yeah. thank you so much, uh, brothers and sisters in Christ out there in the chat, and any other visitors. Thank you for stopping by. 
Uh, I really appreciate all of you that hung with us. You are definitely some night owls out there like me. I stay up until the wee hours too because it's it's quiet and you can really get, it seems like you can get a little bit more done and it's quiet and it's similar. I just love this being a time that I'm learning, believe it or not, because it's quiet and I don't have as many distractions. Yeah. But thank you guys for joining us this evening. I hope you did enjoy the broadcast. We covered a lot of different topics. I'm going to have a ton of links up there for you uh, tomorrow uh, referencing the things that we discussed so you can go see that we're not making it up and you can check it out for yourself and decide what you think about it because what we're just having is a conversation. So, uh, bro Brother Cripps, would you like to say uh, good evening to everybody? Oh, sure. Or actually, I, I keep doing that. I meant good morning. Yeah, good morning. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, yeah, thanks for letting me be a part of it again, uh, Sister Lisa. I really appreciate it. I'm really enjoying myself uh, being on these uh, broadcasts, and um, I, I really look forward to it. And I, you know, I do other other broadcasts and things, but right now, this is this is one of my favorites. Don't tell anybody. Nobody listens this late at night. They're, they're not going to hear that. This is one of my favorites. Um, and the reason being, you know, I like the Bible studies and all that. Don't get me wrong. That that's where the meat is for sure. Um, but talking about these uh, subjects that that we're discussing, they're not unimportant. That's the thing people need to understand. We right. are talking about biblical stuff. It, it, it's not separate from the Bible. I, I think the whole point is, like you said, it's like coffee time. You know, we're having a conversation, and yes, we are. But the topic is always Jesus Christ. The topic is always the gospel. Everything is related to that. That's why we're here. Right. Uh, right. But we're tying it into things that are happening in the world, and I think it's completely beneficial. It's it's yes. beneficial, and and obviously people keep coming back, and people a lot of a lot of the people in the chat they stay with us, and it's over, it's four in the morning here where I am. Yes, yeah. Yes. So so there are people that stay with it. I certainly am staying with it. And uh, I took a nap today, so <laughs> I, I'm, you I'm got that, the, that vitamin nap, huh? Yeah, I sure did. <laughs> Praise the Lord, Brother Cripps. Thank you so much again. Yeah, uh, Brother Ben, I'm not sure because um, Sister Angel, she got her baby pass. So yeah. <laughs> now what I said was baby pass. She gets a baby pass because she has four little ones. So she never has to make a... Uh, apologies or anything when she has to take care of her babies babies come first and we all understand that so if she doesn't make it back to say good evening understand that's where sister angel uh, disappeared to she didn't get mad and storm off the broadcast yeah. <laughs> about something uh right. brother ben would you like to say good night to everyone in the chat please uh yes um you know if this is a regular show we're going on for almost five hours I, I, i'm a little afraid to know what a marathon looks like <laughs> <laughs> we, should do a, we should do a broadcast lock-in like in the old days yeah no it's, it's been fun um yeah so uh, yeah it was, it was a good time um I, one thing that uh, angel wanted us to uh what she wanted to ask is that we pray for her her friend Lindsay, who had a baby yes. a premature baby that's very premature and um it's already in the works Yep, and so uh, keep keep pre keep her in your prayers. Both also Angel too, so she doesn't worry too much that the burden of of uh, of that friendship doesn't it, it, that it's eased. Her burden is eased. Um, yes. So um, that's all I have. Uh, sorry, I'm fading fast. <laughs> Getting pretty right. here. Okay. Well, now I'm gonna put one of you on the spot because I want to know which one of you would like to give the clear gospel and. In just a couple of minutes here at the end of the broadcast. Uh, I'll do it, and I won't even take a couple of minutes. Christ alone, through faith alone, with nothing added. Praise the Lord, Brother Cripps. That was a nice synopsis. I appreciate that, and very succinct. And you if can you look can at... More, I can do more. But that... No, 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 you're good. First Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. How the Jesus Christ died for our sins, was crucified, buried, and rose again on the third day. Beloved, it's all about Jesus. He paid for your sin. He loved you. Mm -hmm. And he does not want humanity to go to hell. That's why he came down here and suffered a miserable, horrible, torturous death to deliver you from the clutches of Satan. It's the truth. And the, the biggest deception of all is to hold men in darkness till they draw their last breath and Satan can drag them into hell. Mm -hmm. So 
please understand. We know that this is what we're we're all believers in the Lord Jesus Christ here. We ain't hiding nothing. Look at the channel name. And and we're just having a discussion about current events and what we see and what we surmise and what the Lord has revealed to us and given us insight on and some things we're just pondering. We're having a conversation and that's why I want to encourage everybody to please always try to exhibit the love of Christ because even though you might be thinking you hitting people's scripture and defending the Bible and all that stuff, the letter of the word is not the spirit of the word and you always want to be doing that with the right spirit in mind because I, le I leave the, the comments up in the chat so when the chat is over People can read through it. I let it restream. And just remember, <laughs> you put that out there. So, you know, you don't want to be misunderstood. Let us always try to do things not only decently in order, but in the spirit of love, because that's what our Lord would have us operate in. And on that note, thank you again, beloved, for coming out. I really appreciate it. We'll see you next week right here, 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 p.m. Eastern on Late Night with Lisa and Friends, where my guest is going to be Sister Renee Rowland, and the topic is going to be women in ministry and what she has discovered from her study on, on the issue and whether or not women have the right, according to the scripture, to be pastors or prophets, evangelists or apostles or teachers. And we're going to discuss that next week. So please come back and let's hear what Sister Renee has to say on that issue. Have a good wonderful morning and blessings in the mighty name of King Jesus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up.